Welcome back, COD fans. Football is done, and it's Sunday in the CDL, and we've got three more matches coming your way. First up, Vegas Legion rolls out their new lineup against the LA Gorillas. We'll see if the controversial roster move pays off as both teams try to claw their way out of the bottom of the standings. Next, Rocker face off against the reigning Major One champions, Toronto Ultra. Will we see any more Minnesota magic, or will the boys from up north put them in their place? Pass is the pass. F that champ sh y'all. We back. And finally, it's our monster matchup. Optic Texas looking to make a big statement today. Will the LA Thieves' new roster be able to take down the green wall? Buckle up for that one. It's going to be spicy. It all starts right now on the Call of Duty League. All players everywhere. Close left. Slammed! Absolutely slammed! Can you? Oh! Oh! We are in for one hell of a season. Good morning, gamers! Boston able to get the job done against Carolina. You don't drop a seam. He always gets revenge against his former teams. Oh, yeah. There's always going to be that follow-up tweet after a game that a team takes part in that says, hey, guess what, Sonso? You dropped this as it went live last night. Boston Breach seeming to reap the, reap the fruits of their labor with their new philosopher change. Yeah, I mean, Boston, they just look comfortable. This is the roster that I feel like a lot of people expect to come into the season. A lot of consistency in the respawns, and that's what Asim brought. Some pops, off, some pop-offs in the control, and you can see the energy. It's so electric, man. It's contagious. Just their third match win, but a great start here to the major two qualifiers. This is day three of the qualifiers. Welcome back to the headquarters. MLG Pucket, we got the Alley Cat. We got the Nameless here on the desk, and today we close out the weekend with three more matches. Alley, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to maybe a a little bit more competition today. I feel like we've had a couple of bops so far this weekend, and I want to see these standings shake up. Let's take a look at our numbers right now, where all of our 12 seeds lie. And remember, only the top eight play at the World Championships at the end of the year. That is the big picture. If we're looking at a little bit of a microscope, what storylines are you keeping track of? Yeah, I just feel like we have a top-heavy league at this point. I'm waiting. I feel like we need one more great team. Who is that going to be? Will it be Minnesota Rocker? Will it be Surge? Or will it be LAG or Boston? We'll find out in this stage who's going to step up to the plate. Kind of crazy. Toronto with nearly 100 points more than fifth place. The number one seed is starting to distance themselves from the rest of the pack, and they put a wall up on the Miami Heretics. Welcome to the CDL, Eric Boom. Scrap pulls out the rival nine, and it looks like Toronto may have even gotten better since winning in Boston. Which is insane to think about because they were already looking unhuman throughout the entire weekend, except for when they went up against the Atlanta phase, our second seed in the online standing. So for Toronto Ultra, definitely putting the league on watch that they're somehow getting better with this new patch. Yeah, people still trying to figure out Toronto Ultra. You saw it in that matchup, right? Like Toronto Ultra, they're just super good at search. They figured it out throughout the major. When we talked to Envoy about it, he was like, hey, listen, like our situationals are on point. Something clicked. And, you know, in today's matchup, they're going up against a top four team from the last major. They're going up against the Minnesota Rocker, who they've already played. But there were some close maps. Look at that control and you look at that hard point, could have definitely went the other way. Absolutely, and we should remember that this was in a winner's bracket. Minnesota shocking everyone in that opening round. Toronto coming out on top of a 3-0 on land. How do you think things shake up for Minnesota today, though, online, Alec? I would Kat? say that's going to be my only worry when it comes to Minnesota Rockers. We saw what they were capable of on land at Major 1, but when it comes to the online qualifiers, they didn't have as much luck. Is Lynn's the best player on this team? I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. He's just been so consistent. You remember that run early on when nobody was talking about the Minnesota Rocker? They uh -huh. were just getting clapped. Well, Lynn said, no, no, no. We're not going to have a season like that. We're a better team than that. And he started to turn up. It started with his performance. And then the rest of the guys sort of rallied behind him. We saw some bigger performances from Vivid. And then on land, when big wake and accuracy started to perform, then you saw what this team could be. So for the Minnesota Rocker, I mean, they're pretty solid across all the game modes. They have ice in their veins. They can clutch up at the end like we saw 
saw in that LAG match what they were capable of in the tough moments they're able to get out the mud. And it seems that the Minnesota fandom is growing with their success as well. They're killing it on social media. Lynn's letting everyone know he's got the biggest baguette in the CDL. <laughs> he's got some numbers to back it up as well, Allie. He does, and what shocks me actually is that search and destroy, Katie. This was definitely where he truly shined at Major 1 because before that, he was their respawn player. He was their explosive player when it came to that hard point and control. So to see him get better at land, specifically in search and destroy, spells good things for Minnesota Rockers. Toronto and Minnesota, neither team's making team changes. They're keeping the same roster that you saw in Boston. But for LA Thieves, you're switching out half of the lineup. You saw some frustration kicking in here for Ghosty. Unable to get the victories he's looking for alongside Joe Deceives and Cammy. He and Afro decide to make some moves here, bringing in a brand new redhead. Yeah, I mean, well, Ghosties has to be one of those younger IGLs, right? He got put into a tough spot when it came to Update Texas, having to lead teams of players that have accomplished and been around much longer than he has. So to be on a team like LA Thieves and have so much inconsistency, I enjoy the call that they made to make this roster change earlier rather than later. Who it's for? Nasty comes in first as Nayar. Now, he's not going to be this explosive player. He's just going to provide consistency. He was on the London Royal Ravens last year, and that's what he provided. He provided high kills. He provided that consistency, and now they add in Krep for that explosivity. And Nameless, I got to ask, will these additions put them in contention with Optic? Like, what are your goals right now as LA Thieves facing off against a top three seed in your first matchup with the new lineup? Yeah, so I think the LA Thieves camp, right, they, they saw what happened with the last roster. and like, okay, we have some things that we are good at, right? Like control, number one defensive team in control. They literally dominate there. And then when you talk about their SD, it hasn't been terrible. It was just hard points. So you make a two-man change and you bring in two players who have a very high ceiling. Nasty and Kremp. Both of them individually are very talented. And you can see they have a very tough strength of schedule. Starting off with Optic Texas. Headed into this matchup, Dave versus Goliath. Totally. But there is opportunity there, especially in those SDs. You're playing one, two, three, and five. Currently is Minnesota seed. A second hardest strength of schedule amongst all of our teams going into major two and you're starting things off against a squad that really caught a lot of momentum on land in Boston. Optic had the fans going wild. Pred, Shotzi, the whole crew getting on their feet as they went all the way to a top three finish. Yeah, this is another team that made a roster changes at the very beginning of the season, adding in Pred and Kenny and it was the big question of how is this going to roll? Well, we saw it at major one with the top three finish for Optic Texas. Obviously falling a little bit short of maybe what the fans or the organization would have hoped for, but they are a solid team and to open up qualifiers against the LA Thieves, they're job right now is to try and catch up to Atlanta who are almost 50 points ahead of them when it comes to seeding right now. Yeah, I think Optic and Respawn this game are unbelievable, right? They put teams in the blender. Big differential. I think they're second right behind Toronto Ultra. It's just the search and destroy. All the individuals, fantastic. You know, it feels like they play a little bit around Pred and it has been working. We've seen Dashy soaking up hill time. Great recipe there. The S&D though, they have to get better. I'm talking post-plant situations. They're dead last. Defense, they can't win after they get the first blood and they're not even getting the first bloods that often. So that is the game mode that they need to focus on throughout this entire qualifier. Chat, let me know who you're most excited to watch because we got six teams coming your way here on Sunday. It all begins with Vegas Legion versus LAG. Minnesota takes on Toronto at 430, and we close it out with your Monster Energy matchup. LA Thieves, Optic, Texas, rivalry. The Agents, this is the CDL. Uh Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator. Now available in-game in the Call of Duty Store. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Check out all the awesome in-game rewards you can earn for free just by watching the Call of Duty League. What's on tap this weekend? An all-new lineup including a weapon blueprint, emblem, calling card stickers, and XP tokens. Just link your YouTube account now to start earning.
honest, my palms are starting to sweat because I am in the predictions lead and I want to change my prediction after seeing that Vegas video. Legion, nothing to lose today. You got a lot to gain and they're trying to make some desperate plays bringing in a new fourth. You might say nothing to lose, but we got to talk about the fact that they bring in Gio for Sandy, right? And for Vegas Legion, uh, this raises some flags for me because Sandy was one of their better search and destroy players where they don't really have a game mode locked up like the rest of these top teams. So for Gio, there's a lot on his shoulders to have to fill those shoes that Sandy's left behind. Now, Ant, everyone talks about the numbers, but you pointed out that this might be more of a structural change for the team. 100%. I think that's what they're hoping for, right? Like, uh, you know, I was talking about it yesterday when we were going over all the roster changes. Sandy's team's last two years have not been good at control, and it's held them back in a lot of series. We're talking reverse sweeps coming in a lot of the time so for geo coming into this roster i think what they're hoping for is like everybody to be more comfortable for everybody to perform better not just an individual thing right so that's why the stats here when you look at geo's page it doesn't matter his team got second at the event he's clearly doing something right and that's what they're hoping for bringing some good comms filling in the right role and now purge is going to be on that smg so things will change yeah, definitely. And again, like I said, Sandy was one of their S&D players, but it did say Gio had a 1.24 at the Boston Open, so it's not that he's uncomfortable in that game mode. Again, for Vegas Legion, it's just about locking up something, right? When they come to the rest of the league, they're in bottom just about everywhere. They're in bottom in respawn, they're bottom in search and destroy, and if anything, they have the talent, right? It's just about all putting it on the same page. Now, Nameless, I have to be honest, in the green room, we put a microscope on Purge. He was making terrible moves, and then he had a phenomenal game. He's making a different role appearance today what do you want to see from him yeah man i think with purge like they just got put in the blender he had a very tough series but in that in the next series after that like for his lg he played great i loved what he was doing so bringing in geo i'm just hoping that his team plays a little bit more pace at times but what i mean by that is together playing okay. together in these maps and making some better plays but also for the monster energy pregame they have to improve the control i said it once sandy seems to have been good there neither has this roster bringing in geo hopefully that changes Four and 18 on attack. You get that first attack win, you got a whole new momentum change. And of course, can Rio help this squad? Will the rival nine be a if buff you to this squad? Told me this before the map, the the roster change. I would have said yes. I feel like Sandy would have an incredible time on that. Nero would have an incredible time. He still possibly will. Again, I think it's just a question of what the pacing of this team is going to look like now, and what Geo adds that maybe they were missing. Attach just finished his 100 push-ups. He's ready to go for Vegas <laughs> Legion. Let's talk about their opposition because LAG has been a squad with some bright lights and then, well, some low moments to their gameplay. Recently, though, I've been impressed. Fame seems to be a great all-around player. Phenomenal communication. Assault Gunny was back when he looked at him in Boston. And Diamond Con may be the most under-talked about player in the league right now if you're looking at his numbers. When I talk about LAG, it's more so a lot of times when they put themselves in these spots to lock in series, it's because of off of an individual player. If somebody starts going off. Like one of my favorite stats right now is LAG is number three in open Google win rates. That means that first blood. The only reason they're there is because Fame has the most opening duels won in the league at 31. So this is not a yeah. solid SD team. It's just these individual players are able to kind of drag them through some time. And to piggyback on top of that, they're third in opening duel rate. Guess what? They're ninth in converting. So they <laughs> They have to yes. get better in the mid in the middle of these rounds making those adjustments because they're doing a lot of the little things right and then also for the monster energy pregame have to find a go-to snd map 4 and 10 28.6 percent win rate 2 and 7 on invasion and karachi so they have to figure out invasion which we have in this series one and four on that map so that is going to be a big one to focus on and when it comes to LAG, they can't hold this. They have 67% hold percentage. It's 11th overall in the league. What's interesting about this is their second in break. So again, the talent is there. The gunny is there. It's just the fundamentals are severely lacking, as well as possibly the team cap. You have to think it's just a matter of time before yeah. you lock in those positions and those holds start to secure you big chunks at times. We're going to see them in action for games one and four on hard point as we take a look at your best of five series for this showdown. Karachi, Invasion, High Rise Control, Rio, and then we're going to close thing out with a second High Rise. Not too often we see that map in there twice. Yeah, you know, looking at this map set, I think LAG are pretty happy with it. You know, maps one and three, they're extremely comfortable on. They've obviously been working on their search and destroy. For Las Vegas, it's a brand new roster. We're going to see Rio for the first time with Outstanding, which is interesting because he's a great SMG. And then that High Rise Game 5, 0-0. Oh oh, Las Vegas has never played it, so it'll be interesting if we go the distance. All right, it's time to get our predictions in, brought to you by Scott. Get your scuff controllers and get your predictions in the chat right now.
right now because if you want to look good, you should probably say the purple team. LAG has the stronger ARs today. They get the win 3-1. I think LD might have the stronger in-game camo for me, to be honest, but I'm going to go with LAG in the series. All right. I'm going LAG as well. I think they take it. All purple here on the desk. The fans, show me another LAG hood. There you have it, LA. The favorites for this one and your casters to bring you all of the action. We have the beautiful Jeremy Stud and his best friend, Isle Shift. We are best friends, you know? God, God, hey. So glad that's really transmitted on broadcast. Yeah, Shift and Study here with you guys. And I think we kind of had very similar sentiments about how the respawns were going to go for LAG. I think the yeah. big question mark here for this Gorilla Squad is, can they prove that they're going to be a top six team maybe for the future of this stage in particular? And I feel like what they showed at least a little bit throughout stage one. They were fighting with some of the top teams in all the respawns. It was just simply the search and destroy. They are one of the rosters who I was expected to potentially make a change, but they decided not to. So they must be really confident in the foundation of everything that they built together already. Now with the game changing, we got new spawns, we got new hills, we got a whole lot of new stuff, but they have the same roster. So it's all about building upon that. And I feel like with them being good at respawn, or at least decent at respawn, only thing you gotta fix is search and destroy and definitely be putting and working on the back end. Yeah, I think that just on top of that, for LAG, this map series set is going to feel very comfortable for oh, yeah. them. You oh, know, yeah. three times in a row they've played Karachi, the last five games they've played Invasion Surge. So you really, I think if you're LAG, you're looking at this matchup saying, we should 3-0 here. We're on the yeah. other side. This is kind of a spotlighted moment to see, will Geo bring a new flavor to Vegas? Or will there be maybe a different role swap up where Purge can kind of find some more comfortability as we jump on into Rubble? And I think the best touch on it perfectly. It's not about getting up the, the best talented player. Sure, it's about sure. building a more structured gameplay with a player like Geo now running that second AR. Purge now moving to that second submachine gun. They just sort of have more structure to their gameplay. They're great on rotations, but when it comes down to that hold percentage, that's where they struggle. So hopefully with this roster, setups are a lot better. Well, it's a solid start for Vegas, but as we transition off the second set of lives here for the Gorillas, they do break back through, so we'll have a tie game. Looking over towards the P2 setup, though, Vegas do have some support, a lot of focus towards Purge, who made this route happen right off his initial spawn, and the follow-up is really good for Vegas on top of that, so they do miss out on the scrap, but this is going to be a really solid setup for them going into two. Oh, yeah, this is perfect, because if Purge is going to play like that with an SMG, Alan, the entire time you were telling me you've never seen this guy run an SMG all throughout challenges last year, so this is basically a brand new role, but if you're getting a two-piece right off the rip of the game you're rotating with about 30 seconds left setting your teammates up for success at the next hill already a great start for the young man but as we get into the p2 already 15 seconds uncontested leg trying to find a way in stopping con starting it off and fame does actually sneak through back alley so he's in a spot to contest this dead silence allowing him to get forward stun comes through geo first couple of shots will land but it's purge who finishes things off so okay how about this for vegas tested on their first setup but they provide the kills needed to lock things down and usually the gorillas they find a lot of success on breaking hills it's one of the best teams that we have in the game but the gorillas I mean, but vegas setup right there was just too strong now you're forcing the gorillas to hit that rotation after a full 60 hole from vegas legion but they already have two players in a position purge again off the rotation in a crucial spot to win his team this hill. You know, it's really funny because when we look at this Vegas squad, I think in particular off the respawn, you kind of think that their tempo was a little mismanaged going through the first stage and during the first qualifiers into the major, but this is already so much focus on rotation. Oh, 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 oh. is beaming. Six and one start with the rival in hand and Vegas win the rotation from two to three. And now they have everything cut off. If you are the gorilla, someone has to find an opening. You have Assault dropping down from top three. Can he find a time on the purge? Yes, he does. So already finds an opening through the chicken coop side. But you have to win his next set of fights. And Assault said, I'm going to get it done myself. He takes down three. Domicon there for the trade. Finally, you get Vegas Legion out of the time. But you have to get in it now. And there's still a lot of players contesting it. Bro, Purge is beaming. Coming yeah. out of side of tools, able to find himself one plus damage to assist the other. I, I, yeah, you mentioned it on P2, but it looked like LAG were on the precipice of finding a successful break here again at three. And it's the new man up, Geo, followed up by the new role in Purge that kind of locked things down, only allowing the back 10 seconds. This has been a flawless start from Vegas. Yeah, this is exactly what you're looking for. Already playing against a nice team in LA Gorillas who love to play some great respawns. They don't really do the fundamentals when it comes to the rotating but you are shutting down their best category and that's stopping their breaking. And so far, that's been LAG playing from the back for the entire time. But Assault all the way behind White Truck. This is going to be the new P4 for people who just started tuning in today. But it's going to be all loud scattered. Spawns in towards the back for the Gorillas. Spawns toward the middle of the map for Vegas. This one is usually very, very scrappy. 
Yeah, Natural does have a natural pitch set up off of a split spot. Finds one, gets away, keeps his life. Geo tracks him down. Little red dot chase works out. And then Nero follows up behind. So again, the timing for this for Vegas. What? What? I, have we ever seen this type of control from Vegas? Not just on the rotations, not just on their holes, but providing a sick break here on the fourth hill. And now there's only 20 seconds left and you already have players off the rotation. Right now, Vegas Legion are just a step ahead of the game. Final 20 is going to be theirs, but the Soul Man is going to be purged. Those a couple of shots down, position now known, but can he stay alive long enough? No, he does not. So this should be the opportunity where the Gorillas can get themselves back into the game with a great hold here. Kind of need it, if we're being honest with one another. Yeah. I mean, you put a full 60 on the board and all of the magic that's happened in this first rotation gets completely mitigated by LAG. Vegas taking their time, clearing out the backside of the third hard point, now finding some success, moving their way forward. But Gio, who is setting up for a pinch, does get taken down and the threat has been alerted that, yep, Vegas is all hitting from the front. Yeah, Vegas all hitting from the front, but now Gio, again, off spawn. Gonna need a player to potentially set up this pinch. But so far, this has been a great hole from the Gorillas. They read the player Huge. goal for the pitch. They're controlling the spawns as well. They're finding all the right kills at the right time. And now they're able to flip as well. So currently down by only 50 points. They walk away with this final 25. It'll be a 30-point game. But here comes Vegas. They are in. The trades are there. And Nero is going to try to walk away with this final 20. Yeah, nice little high-low setup there from Vegas with the spawns over towards P2 side. They eventually take care of the members nearby at red, and then it's an easy follow-up. So what looked to be nearly the precipice of that full 60 we were talking about being fulfilled by LAG, it does not quite amount to that. So we've got double up the score now as we rotate back over to one. Kills on rotation still looking good for Vegas. And I mean, rotationally, we never looked at this Vegas team to play with this type of tempo. And, and it does feel like this double sub setup for Vegas is working out wonderfully for them. Oh, it's working perfectly because one of the SMGs is contesting the old time every time. And then they're winning the gunfights off the rotation and a man down advantage because you're thinking about it, the gorillas are rotating with about 20, 25 seconds. They should be, an, that should be enough time for them to set up properly, watch all the cuts, but the, every single time Vegas Legion are getting the right kills and they are transitioning to lead to breaks. Now with only 25 seconds left on the P1, they're still a step ahead. You can contest towards the P1 side because you're on the preferred side going in towards the cafe. It's got to be purged, though. The guy that's going to probably rotate, but no, he's going to contest here with his team. And that's exactly like you framed up because look at number seven on the minimap. It's already rotating over for Nero. Yep. So it's, again, that same idea. One SMG will hit the old time, make life miserable for LAG and rotation while the other just takes the quick route. And, I mean, it seems to be kind of a symphony of success right now for these guys. Flat out, there's still numbers here for Vegas. Kills for Nero. Oh, oh my goodness. What a double. The finish from Attach is good. And we'll jump into a listen with Legion to see how they're feeling. Don't die. Don't die, Decal. They're looking, they looking for Astro. Yeah. I'm team shot on the car. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm not dead. Astro top fire. Astro top fire. Yeah. You're going to like. Yeah, yeah. I'm shooting. Right. I'm shooting. Astro still top, still top fire. Astro still top fire. I jump up. Vinny, 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 Vinny. Astro. Abacos, Abacos, Abacos. 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 One shot. Look at my left. Vinny, Vinny. Backed out. I'm in front. I'm in front. He's going to attack you left on you. One shot, then. Nice, good job. Nice, nice. Nice. Yo, we're up hello. Take our yeah, fucking yeah. time on this break. Yo, Make yo, sure yo, once in the middle, once in the middle. Guarantee this time. Guarantee this time. Just take our fucking time, bro. I'm going in right here. I'm going in right here. Let's go right. 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 Come, come right. 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 Yeah. Nice, yeah, nice, nice. Nice. I'm gonna hit through. I'm gonna do the mid slide. Okay, I'm going drunk. I'm gonna go drunk. And the magic just keeps coming here, Jamie. This is a team that was 11th in rotation, 10th in holds for Vegas, and still they're making this look like it's been their playground all year long. It's been structured, man. It's been structured. You can even hear it in the listening right there. Everyone's trying to set up the play. You're splitting pushes. And even when you're splitting the pushes, you're having the other players slow, slow on the other side of the map, playing for that first kill to potentially open up a pinch. Right now, Vegas Legion are not making any mistakes, but this is where LA Gorillas, so far, 30, 25 uncontested seconds. They are pushed out towards the mid map. They are making layers for Vegas Legion to make it very difficult for them to find a way on in. And even though they're currently down 100, you can never count out the Gorillas because they can flip that switch instantly. Ooh, and speaking of assault on three has cleared all threats from the front of this hard point as Trio looking to rotate catches Nero up high so there is a chance to possibly string these two hard points together for LAG fame does get cut over through mid map so this whole hit has to come from bridge side and Vegas are already set up over towards the old P4 inside a fountain looking to kind of finesse and make life hard for LAG on the rotation over yeah LAG just have to hold strong on this on this side of the map hold down your bridge hold down top three just make sure you read this player going on the D pitch is actually Ooh. attached. So 
A one on one between him and Dominic kind of potentially find a break, but it's still a finesse in towards the fountain. Back and forth in the kill feed. Finally, LAG stand on top in those fights. But all the spawns for Vegas Legion are going to be through the middle of the map. How much do they decide to contest this before they call that rotation over towards Junk? As Shrill does get caught over towards the backside at ladder. Nero caught. Oh, and in the same breath, he gets caught on the ladder as well. Just, I don't think he was intending to try to go up. He just kind of jumped and got caught on the ladder. And uh -oh. so that may have led to an opportunity for Vegas to neutralize this scrap time. It just comes down to how much of this does Geo want to stick around for? Because, I mean, let's be candid. If you get this last 15 seconds, it puts you right on the doorstep of winning this game. But you don't want to be shorthanded on rotation over towards Junkyard either. Yeah, they're already shorthanded, though. They know that. Vegas Legion know that, that at least two players are at that old point. It's a 3v2 off the rotation. Let's try to make our way in. And that's around these Shaq's area. As the Gorillas have made this a 50-point game, but these next set of gunfights are going to tell us how it's all going to be. <laughs> Attached with two from the top, but here comes Fame on the pinch. Gets too easily. There was a third down low. That was cleaned up by Estriel. Fame gets a read. read. The fourth, and it's a four-man feed. LAG comfortably stepped foot in towards Junk. Trophy systems at the ready. Vegas largely trying to hit this from the front, and this is a lot of time that they're going to have to concede if they decide not to give this a true go. And honestly, with Geo playing on a long pitch, they're not going to have numbers to try to break this hill unless the kills come through quickly. Finally, a chance for Vegas to break. Yeah, Geo finds one on the pinch purge through the front end, attached with the final two. Two. That leads to the break, but Vegas Legion, they cannot win it here. They're going to be one second short. So if you are the Gorillas, have this one player in Estrio. Do his best he can to potentially contest this. No, he falls. So basically going to put themselves 249. One second away from closing out this game. The Gorillas have to be picture perfect from here on out. Oh, good read here from Geo taking care of Assault and then immediately snaps up towards Fame. Diamond Con last one left will eventually neutralize, but Vegas with those eliminations will win rotation. Just need three seconds of time. The only one who can contest would be Fame, and he's able to clear out the hard point, get in for a contest, but it's short-lived, and Vegas with the huge lead that they amassed throughout the first rotation and a half will walk their way to a map one win. And that was just textbook hardcore right there from Vegas Legion. We're talking about Purge never running in SMG all throughout his last year of challenges. Comes in and at a whole different role, but he knows. What I have to do is put myself in good positions with the SMG. All right, I get two. Let me hit an early rotation over make the game easier for my team. I think that's what Vegas Legion were doing in the entirety of the game. Always contesting the old, but always staying ahead of the game and having multiple players off that rotation. That was just a well-structured hard point. I know it wasn't the best performance from Geo, but 17 and 21, 3,200 Jameis. That guy was rotating, finding opening kills, finding pinch kills. So right there, Vegas Legion was just playing hard point to win the game. Everything rotation-wise, they were ahead of the game. Breaks when they needed them, they got them. But great holds as well. That was the biggest yeah. thing. Getting the holds, that was where they needed to show difference and they do a dividend in that map number one. Yeah, I, I love it. I think just from a tempo standpoint, I mean, you pointed out perfectly, Jay, when it came down to, hey, you kind of had a passing of the baton between the two SMGs. All right, I'm going to go new. You finesse old. Make life as hard as possible. And yeah. it looked like for LAG, they were completely caught off guard by it. Like we talked about, maybe the rotation and their hold percentages weren't great, but they weren't able to really even set up what has been kind of their bread and butter which has been off of their breaks largely yeah. because vegas felt like they were all over the map and you can just hear it in their listenings as well because they they knew exactly what was going on they knew where the pinch was coming them from they knew exactly what they needed to cut they get the first set of kills everything is gravy and that's the thing with vegas legion at least with their last roster there was always a couple openings that would lead to them not getting a good hold percentage or yeah. getting good time off of the hill but with this squad everything was basically cut even that smg's going on pitches early off the rotation usually with the last squad it was all about attach hitting that early spot and trying to set up his team but well structured well well played in this map number one for vegas legion to now put themselves up 1-0 and you're going into a search and destroy where you have already beaten this team yeah and i don't want to talk like, you know really count our chickens before they hatch here but i think there's some excitement leading towards a potential map four if vegas run three subs or if oh, they yeah. just keep running this two two I, I was legitimately blown away by what we were seeing tempo wise from those two so we'll let you guys marinate on that for a little bit while we take a look at the game flow and it is that stretch really between rotations of hills i mean double up the points going from four to five sure small moment there for gorillas but it's just that gap was just way too large for them to finally make a comeback happen yeah, it's like the gun started getting a little more hot for the Gorillas. I'm pretty sure Estrio didn't have the best start, but started to turn up in the later half of that game. But now you just got to put that one behind you. And now you got to show what you have been working on in Search and Destroy, more specifically on Invasion. This is their sure. most played S&D, but for some reason they lose it a majority of the times due to their attacking grounds. You're 6-20 overall. You find a lot of opening first bloods. You've heard the yep. best touch on it. It's usually on the back of Fame, who's the number one first blood guy so far in the season. 
but you don't do anything with it. You wait till about 20 seconds left to try to work an objective. Every single time you do that, teams read you perfectly, throw a couple nades, and shut down that push. So if you are LAG, let's just be a little quicker this time around. And it's really bizarre because we were kind of looking at the statistics when we saw the map set come up and, you know, it kind of caught me by surprise. On every other search and destroy map, they're getting the bomb planted in nearly half the rounds. Yeah. Where you compare it to Invasion, they're only getting it right around a third of the time. It's It just does feel very bizarre that you're finding that much success converting, or at least not converting, but finding first bloods, but not turning it into a more successful opportunity to win rounds by getting the bomb down, playing a odd man situation in your post plan. So it, I definitely think that a lot of it does come down to the timing, the tempo, yeah. um, and just the decision-making that they want to do, especially on the offensive half when they do find a first blood. It's just like you got to set it early. Like if you're going to yeah, decide yeah. to switch the tempo, you have to start off with it being quick so that you can make those adjustments and slow it down to the later half of the game. But when you start off slow, teams start to take advantage of that. They start to read exactly what you do. Push out towards broken. Push out towards cat play. Play aggressive for that first blood because they know you guys are playing nice and slow in your attacking rounds. Let's sure. just switch up the tempo. And I feel like for them, going up against this Vegas squad now after the roster changes, they don't really have to worry about a player in Standy because Standy was their bread and butter S&D guy on a map like Invasion. He was single-handedly shutting down that A-push every single time, changing up his corners around Cafe, sitting out towards the cars, blowing them up with his own nades, just so he can have that proper positioning. So I feel like if you are the Gorillas, you do have that advantage, especially with Famer sure. on your roster, who's been doing it all with that SMG. The only question that kind of exists outside of the numbers is how much of a mental game will there be here? Because this was the matchup that saw Vegas exit from Boston, but they did play this map and it was a very decided 6-1 result in favor of Legion. So we'll see if that maybe plays a bit of an effect. I think especially you kind of look back towards that, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of disasters that happened for LAG on this map around the bomb yeah. in particular. Granted, that was against Atlanta, but still is one of those situations that lives in your head a little bit. So we'll see what kind of unfolds this time around after the break and seeing if there will be, like you mentioned, some success here for LAG when it comes to actually fulfilling a quick round offensively. Here we go into the search and destroy. 2-2 two -two split right off the roof for the Gorillas. They're actually playing a super aggressive without having any trophy systems or anything. So if you are Vegas Legion, you call out cross, you throw a couple frags, you potentially open up at the first blood, but Gio's already invested his. He does have a stun. Uh, Steven's just trying to take control of the middle of the map. They're just playing fan foe, but LG oh. are not getting anything until Fame takes down a couple shots from Cafe. But the entire setup comes up empty, essentially, for LAG. The threat now known by Vegas, so they will reposition accordingly, just making sure that that old P1 position is at least safe in some regard to eventually convert onto some sort of a push through. And actually it's gonna be a straight hit in towards mid tank. This little high low setup between Assault and Fame is gonna have absolutely no idea that this hits on the way. And I love this play right here from Vegas because they know we can't contest in towards cafe. They have to be in that positioning, but do you want to play through this timing over towards the bomb? Wow. Two players from the Gorillas push through the mannequin. The task gets the read, so free A plant plan is going to go down. They also find the first blood, make it the next two, and it's now instantly a 1v4 for Fame. He gets shut down. What a great first round for Vegas Legion. Keep in mind, this is a new roster. Those are one of those strategies <laughs> that had to develop over time, and yeah. they got that done with ease in round number one. If, that, if you were to go backwards and just start the round over from the 45-second mark, it was one of those situations that Vegas is trying to push through, but at the same time that LAG is trying to push through, and we almost played that map, or that round rather, from opposite sides of the map yeah. for a moment. Very bizarre, I think, uh, happenings across the timings, but yeah, like you mentioned, I think a lot of that is just simply down to the fact that Vegas get a really solid read on, if not both, at least one player playing over towards Lobby, and they completely isolate perfectly. Yeah, that was just a great first round right there from Vegas Legion, but now they have to respond on the defense. Gorillas going to what they know best, nice and slow on the attacking side. <laughs> As two players are working up through Cafe, the other two watching the B push through and one holding down the Cafe area. But here we go. Finally, some aggression in towards Cafe. They're getting all the info that they need, but once they turn this door, the attacks have to be hitting to get some more. Yeah. Stun off the door. Does that connect on Nero? It does. Shakes off the most of it, but okay. does not find any kills. Estru follows up through mid tank. Kid a second. So that'll be enough for the plant and a 4v2 post plant situation for LAG on A. 4v2 bomb down. Left up to Geo to attach a new AR duo. Geo gets sniffed out. Fame with the second on the round. Now it's attached left in the 1v4. Makes it a 1v3. Still 35 seconds left. You can never count this guy out of a clutch, but LAG, they shut that one down and respond with an attacking round. Another beautifully played round. Like both yep. of these squads right off the rip, playing for the info that they're given. 
Yeah, and that right was there. No one in cafe. You throw, your, you throw your stun out the door. You get the info. You get the first blood. And then yeah. everyone is collectively at the same positioning. So once that first gun fights those down, Estrio challenges mid tank. They find the second. It's just in sync right now from the gorillas. Tied at one. Yeah, very straightforward approach, and yeah. I, I love the call. Maybe some of that kind of aided by the fact that there was that scene of shots landing over towards that B cross the tractor. So, hey, let's take at worst a 4v3 on the A side of the map. I, I could be a call there. LAG, though, much more decisive, and I think that's the biggest thing as Geo looked like he took a lot more damage than he did. Nades exploding all around him, still stays healthy. Purge trying to force himself into a 1v1, and then, well, it's just an easy escape with some finesse here from fame so everything stays solid at a 4v4 yeah that's good work right there from fame like got some really really bad cod timing there back turn he closes the door and is able to go to the opposite side of finesse with his life and now you're forced to vegas legion to reposition themselves out of cafe he spots them on the crossover towards dvd and that's already 40 seconds knocked off of the game clock there is trophy systems to work with this time around so it's looking like estriel is gonna have his hands full at this b site Three-man stack moving forward in towards the B site. Like you mentioned, Estriel on his own, but will have a bit of assistance on this cross through Dark from DC. Shots come through, though. Now Vegas will be alert that, yep, okay, there's more defensive pressure here than just the one player at Tractor. Urge. Yeah, and he's trying to get all the way around the back. He does get shots to Fable, doesn't finish the kill. So again, now Vegas are a little bit stuck, and there's not a lot of time here, Jay. And they're isoing Purge as well. Unfortunately, he's not able to get the kill. That leads to Assault finding the first blood. And with only 20 seconds left, they can't commit to B. Diamond Khan in the perfect cutoff positioning. Geo left it a 1v4, and the Gorillas hold strong on that defense. <laughs> Vegas Legion had everything. Like, Purge pushes up through the right street. Unfortunately, once he doesn't get that first kill... And his teammates start to wrap back for him. They isolate him when there was only 30 seconds left. Vegas Legion, no, we can't go B. We have to try to go back towards A. But the Gorillas read that perfectly. Four up, four down. Very clean round for the Gorillas to go up 2-1. And fame, uh, we can take by maybe two of his nine lives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was too. a mess in that round. Yeah. <laughs> He is out there moving, but how different that round could have been and a multitude of different timings if fame does drop. Not to be though. So 2-1 goes the count. LAG back to the offense and a very similar break off here for Vegas. This opening hit down B street with Purge getting over towards mid tank. The only thing that's different this time is that attach will be there to assist them. No one defensively watching over the top of the water side at A. Yeah, this is just a spread map setup to make sure no one is gonna be aggressive anywhere in the positioning so once they get that info now it's slowly start our right, time to start working up towards the site they're going back to the a, a push all reliable got a stuns but nothing's going to connect because this time vegas legion are going to be playing it super deep from courtyard first line of defense is going to be purged through mid tank just going to play his timing here and you could definitely tell estriel is very weary about making any play outside of dvd here smoke will come through see if that kind of baits out this vegas defense a touch in fact, it actually allows Fame to cross while Diamond Con converts on first blood over towards this tank side. So once again, LAG, again, the decision making so much quicker. Bomb gets planted. 4v3. We oh. go again, and Estriel shuts down Nero from securing a trade. Last attempt, would you think, have to come from Attach. He does at least clear some space out. It's still difficult 3v2. Yeah, still a difficult 3v2 with only 30 seconds left. Attach what? trying to go for the chow. He actually wins it. But that's Diamond Con instantly there for the trade. They know that attaches one shot and he's going to be the player on site. But we got to make sure we have at least someone looking over it. 20 seconds left. I don't know if the salt shouldered and saw it, oh but Tash working on the ace. Now the 1v1 with Assault sees him through the window. MCW out, but Assault will save the round. Holy smokes, though. That shot and kill from Attach over mid tank, you thought. Hold on a second. Nearly gives himself a chance at the 1v2, but doesn't quite finish off the final shot needed onto Assault. You could just never count that guy out of a clutch round in Search and Destroy. Just went insane gunfight after insane gunfight through the middle of the map. Makes it a 1v1 with only 14 seconds left. By the time he turns that corner, there's only 11. He spots Assault. Assault throws a shoulder and knows that as long as I die on this side of the map and force him close towards this fire tank, we guarantee the round. He also finds the kill as well. So that's now three in a row for the Gorillas. A lot quicker, a lot better decision-making on their attacking rounds have led to this scoreline. But now it's Vegas Legion on the attack. Yeah. Still Estria, the sole man over towards B. And this feels like kind of a stock setup for Vegas. We saw them do this a lot over the course of the last couple of weeks, where Attach will just play Rogue over towards A. 
See how frisky he can get down Waterside Street. The rest of the team focused hard over towards making this play over towards the B site. Very similar setup on the same foot, though, for LAG. You've got Diamond Cross or Fame now watching the cross to help out Estriel inside the site, and we're kind of in the same footing we were the last time LAG found themselves on defense. Now, Fame potentially is going to gain all the information that his teammates are giving us. We try to go for it. Wow. He actually what finds the timing. Estriel with the first blood onto Nero. Then let's drop the bomb. Purge has to pick it up, but it's already a 3v4. They're playing off of the info of what attacks can give them. Pushing up the left street while Geo finds that kill. They can potentially plant this bomb at A. Do they know, though, that Assault is still lingering over towards DVD Alley? He could foil this entire rotation from Geo, but like you already called, Vegas. Clear oh my! Jose and Geo absolutely obliterates Assault. Diamond Con able to trade one back, so we'll get a pretty even 2v2. 33 seconds on the clock, and we're going to have individual 1v1s here. I mean, Estro can't rotate yet. He has to find this kill over towards Geo, not able to find it. So now it's just down to Connor and a very tough 1v2. Shoulders being thrown. Not interested is Purge of giving him anything more. Geo over the top, just making sure he hasn't committed towards the bomb. And as Diamond Con kind of forfeits his life over, he will not have a chance to play for the defuse. And it's Geo with two insane eliminations on the B side of the map to help Vegas get around. If he found that final kill, I'm pretty sure he picked up the ace on the round. That was just great play yeah, right good call. Geo. He gets the first kill, at least finds the trade, makes it a 3v3, and then allows his teammates to rotate that bomb back over towards the A site. As we take a replay look at the <laughs> snap onto a soul. Keep in mind, that's a world champion. Finds the second onto Estria. Know that that guy is usually the one that plays over towards the B site. Just played it super patient. He finds three kills and towards Broken. Rat packs towards the middle tank and finds the final. That's the way you want to get it done for Vegas Legion to stop the bleeding. Huge round as well. Not being down 4-1. Massive. But on top of that, the ability to kind of manipulate the mind games about LAG trying to get aggressive. That could come into play next time through as we get back over to another LAG offense, which means another very slow opening, kind of feeling things out a little bit. The only difference is that Vegas are kind of double stacked here over towards old P1 with assistance from Attach. So call it what it is. Three members are here, but as Nero drops, now Attach's role becomes a little bit more menacing as he's got to watch everything at once. Yeah, Vegas leads are trying to change their defensive setup. That's two successful eight plans for the Gorillas when they slowly work their way up to Cafe. So they try to double stack it, but Nero not in a great position. Leads to the first blood. Now the Gorilla's in the man advantage with 43 seconds left. They just have to make a decision. Diamond Con is already watching the push through the B. Let's commit over towards A. Let's trade for these trades and try to get this bomb down. Purge is going to make a play forward, yeah. though. The timing. Oh, my goodness. Gets the first. Doesn't expect the second. Catches oh. a sound cube, but fame. At least able to provide the trade needed. So numbers still good for LAG, but the next man up is attached, and we already know what he can do in 1v2s. Checks the bomb, finds the kill. That puts pressure on LAG now with the clock. Attached, still finessing, wanted it with the pistol, but individual 1v1s are both earned and eliminated by LAG to take the round. That's now three attacking rounds in a row. That time they don't get it done with the bomb plan, but just the strategy, the teamwork on full display again. Taking positionings. By setting up crossfires, they find their first put onto Nera, and I thought Purge was in a great position. Once he gets that first kill, he just doesn't read the second onto fame. And up close and personal, wins that gunfight with that MCW. And then even in the final 15 seconds, both players won their one-on-ones. To see yeah, the yeah. attacking round. So, Gorilla's now up 4-2. Back on the defensive side. If you are Vegas Legion, you have Nero's currently sitting at 0 5. He's just playing some yep. bad timing so far. Let's hit a little bit aggressive towards Cafe. Set the sky for at least one. Bomb carrier and smoke player. Fame once again up top of the balcony. And he does find Purge down up top. Oh, let's say down low, but it's up top still for him. <laughs> a little mantle of play coming through as Nero will provide again another early trade. So we'll stay 3v3, but all things kind of stay level here. Not a lot of ground gained on either side. The good thing for Vegas Legion is that you gain the info that you shut down their playmaker. Wow. Unfortunately, the smoke doesn't cover Geo and Diamond Gun takes down his teammate, but now it's all left up to attach. And a 1v2 scenario, Bomb's going to be down over towards that A site. So Buddy system on the opposite side for the Gorillas. They're just slowly pushing their way up through that B point. Just going to allow this Bomb plant to go down and wait for the clutch. Both players stacked up for LAG. Attach. He's seen one. Does he get in for one? The second sure does. Wants the gunfight. Diamond Con will give it to him. 4 HP is what Attach survives with. And now he knows. The only play really available is to try to make his way through mid-map, which good expectation that Diamond Con's watching the cross. And he 
not going to play for the bomb. He's going to play for the kills. Finds what? Diamond Con cleanly. I mean, is there a situation attached doesn't feel comfortable in? Collects the bomb. One and a half seconds. Enough time for him to get the plant off. Estrell trying to play for the exit. Little pop up from... Oh, Tetch nearly to take the final 1v2. But Estrell just a little too healthy. And that'll put LAG on five. Oh, man. That one got scary, though. Like, if you are the gorillas, it's only 20 seconds left. You know that attack positioning is now known. He just shot Diamond Con with a couple bullets through the middle of the tank. If I'm Estrell, I'm jumping out. I'm making sure that even if my teammate dies, I'm in a position to trade. But he stayed in his top treehouse too long. Jumps out eventually as the bomb gets planted, but wins the crucial one-on-one -on -one to put his team now at game point. Got a little bit more scary. You got to play a little better in the teamwork aspect. A little better duo work right there <laughs> out of Gorillas to make that a little bit safer. And I'm not going to lie. If Attach maybe doesn't get shot with those first two as he tries to finesse over the top of the bomb site, Shoot that's... Like <laughs> yeah. That's a 1v1 that I think Attach would be happy to take any day of the week. But regardless, 5-2 now. The gap, a convincing differential here. Vegas needing something. And they're going to throw a monkey wrench into the system. Look at this hit. Three members pushing up Bialy. But once again, LAG playing back. Estro gets the sound cue off the door. Plus the follow-up nade. And it's LAG in an early 4v3. They do the same exact thing they've been going on every single attacking round. Just spreading the map, making sure no one's going to be aggressive. And this time, Purge tries to be the aggressor. Gets picked apart. They also spot attach as well. A couple shots going down. He's able to walk away with his light, but should be a free uh, bomb plan. Also, a team kill comes in from GL. 3v2 now. Yeah, tough situation. Vegas kind of stacked on top of each other. Diamond Con deals with Geo's threat immediately. Last one left alive is attach. Finds the first 1v1 with the salt, but no, he's hit up too hard. And LAG will finish off the final kill and put a very convincing search in the minds of not just us, but I think the rest of the league. And we talked about their invasion search. It's been their most rehearsed map in SD. Just hasn't really found the results they want. And I think you walk away from that one as an LAG fan saying that's a little more like it. That's definitely a lot more like it. We're talking about 6 and 20 on their attacking rounds on invasion. They now improved that to 10 and 20, winning four in a row by just a simple setup. You spread the map, you make sure no one's aggressive, but then the game plan after that. Okay, we have DVD, we have Cafe. Now we can use our attacks to work out towards the A-bomb and then also set up crossfires and instant chows through the middle map because of what Vegas Legion were not showing. They, their setup was really weak. Like no one was playing mid tank. They were just watching the mid cross from middle courtyard. But once yeah. that player gets smoked out, he's cut off now. Now we can slide up to the tank, take that position and get the first one on a bomb. And every single time it was methodical from the gorillas on their attack rounds to close out this SD 6-2 we were asking for improvements in this most specifically and they were on full display in that map number two now they tie the series up at one going into a higher rise control you couldn't feel any more confident if you are the gorillas yeah absolutely the case and i think maybe without the exception of that first rotation of hard points i think lag's yeah. gonna be feeling pretty comfortable in this series at the moment kind of at large because not only do you have your bread and butter control coming up you're also playing the worst control team in the league yeah. so <laughs> not good news all over the place but I think for Vegas, you're looking to evaluate what the roll swap will look like for Purge, which in the first respawn was good. And then in the follow-up, will Geo assist this Vegas team in becoming a better control squad? Those are the questions. We'll give you the answers when we come back at the end of this break. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League.
Welcome back, friends and family. It's Sunday here at the Call of Duty League, and we've got a good one on our hands. LAG Vegas locked into what was a really entertaining first two maps, but looking to the control, this is where things get really interesting because oh, yeah. I think we're looking at this matchup from two different perspectives. For LAG, it's time to prove what the ceiling may be for this team overall, what the potential is. Whereas on the other side for Vegas, this is about can this roster move provide you some success just generally, especially with this control, J. Yeah, because control for them has achieved them well. So far, two and seven on the season, and more specifically on this map in high rise, they are one and three. And the biggest thing that they struggle with is gaining segments on their attacking round. They're currently one and eight on the attacking side, which is one of the worst that we have in the league. But they also don't get any segments to go with it, and that's due to the fact that they are not keeping up with the slang. But if map one is going to tell us anything, game out, the game plan is going to be to slow it down, just make it easier for your teammates. So hopefully they come up with that on full display here. Yep. Unfortunate opening propane kill from fame to assault as Vegas will actually kind of use that as an opportunity for Purge to step forward. Again, the timing and tempo. If you were to look at Purge from a month ago to what he's doing now, it looks like a totally different player. He's not sitting back. He's trying to get aggressive. This time cut down by Fame, who turns that into a nice opening double to make up for the team kill on Assault. And with that, LAG's defense will hold strong. Yeah, they're holding strong so far. Now the next on defense, they have to take down his attacks. Who's currently holding down top helipad. The rest of his team is coming off spawn behind him. But so far, that's 35 seconds. Make it 40. Knocked off of that game clock and no seconds to show for it. You had the positioning, but you have to find a couple kills to get on that point. Finally, they're able to stop the game clock, but no kills going in their favor. And it's already yeah. two. They get three dead. Last person on the point is narrow. He gets shut down. Now you're forced to hit the reset. I love that from LAG as well. Just kind of a small moment. I think a lot of people would look at that and say, hey, he's on the zone. We got to go make sure we chell that guy. But this is all about finding the kills around the zone first. Let that exactly. guy stay on the zone and then eventually just completely overwhelm him. And this is what happens. You get the kills cleanly. And now you're not going to allow Vegas to get out of spawn for free. Estriel just kind of the front man here with a lot of support. But you can see on the minimap behind him, everyone is looking at a different lane. And there's just no way Vegas get through this without any contest. And yeah, it's 11 seconds on the clock. No one's going to see this B zone. One more attempt from Geo, but that seemed to be more of a lack of patience than anything else because Estriel is farming right now with Fame watching over the top of him. Yeah, that's just too easy right there for the gorillas to yeah. clean for that. The worst thing you can do in control in this game, on this that actually control in general, is just going for dead at the same exact time because now all of you guys are coming off spawn. You allow the map control to go in favor of the opposing team, and then they are watching every single lane crawl. Do not allow a single segment to go the opposite way. And now if you are Vegas Legion, you need to respond with a great defense the same way you just did. And that's not easy because the Gorillas are the best team at this map for a reason. They mm -hmm. average about four ticks every single time they play high rise. So you got to shut that down early. And it all starts with the start off. You can't allow fame to get this first kill to eventually earn that cruise as well. Lestrial will hit bottom blue, go down low, and fall. clean gunfight versus Nero, who looked like he anticipated the play from Estriel, to be fair. Shot Jesus! Oh my god! Goodness, Purge absolutely melted. And LAG's first two kills will also see them jump on with this focus towards not just B, but also getting a player through in the A zone. And Fame at least finds that kill to earn himself a cruise missile, but now all of his teammates shot besides Adam Assault. He's already pushed out towards the crack shack. And that's now two dead. They eliminate the player in the back of their spawn as well. So they have a free lane to push it towards this left street and stop that lane clock over towards B. But Fame, he's not trying to slow down. He's trying to play for a couple spawn kills, but it comes back to bite him. Now his teammates have to gun up, iron up, and towards his B point. Decent follow-up eliminations, though, from Legion. First tick halfway completed, but Vegas quick to complete the retake. And now it's just Diamond Con last one left. He needs to value his life here, and he needs to do it badly. Otherwise, Vegas will be in the spawn of LAG. And he does well. Finds a kill up top as well on top of that. Assault working with them. Vegas are hunting for these eliminations, but haven't been able to track down LAG at all. So now all of a sudden, the offense finding some success here. 1v1 with Assault. Nero will beat him to the punch, and Vegas will get us back to a 21 versus 21 with only 21 seconds left on the clock. And they don't allow a second as well. Whole lot of 20 yeah. runs right there to you, Allen. But you like only 20 seconds left. The kill's going in favor of Vegas Legion. That's already two. Make it three. Last player up is Assault. You take care of him, and now you just have to hold strong. We were asking for a response on the defense, not allowing any seconds exactly what you want to do, and now it's Nero's turn to potentially earn himself a cruise missile with one kill. Yeah, I was marinating on a Vegas 21 like blackjack joke, but <laughs> I wasn't feeling quick enough to make that happen, so just going to tell you about it instead very casually. Clean stuff, though, from Vegas. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing about it is you go back to that LAG moment where they get two players forward towards the Vegas spawn, 
and neither find kills. That was Fame and Assault who get eliminated quickly, and then that's just quick retake situations for Vegas across the map. Yeah, that was just on the back of Nero as well because he was that SMG through the bottom on the ground, and he jumps up into B, he finds two, and then continues on that spree to end the round on five. So every single time they had the numbers, Nero's was able to cut them down and make it even in those gunfights. They are able to tie the game up at one, and now... All tied up at segments as well. A fat donut for both of the squads, but all out pressure for Vegas Legion. Going towards this B Street. They're trying to at least get one segment done and also set up narrow for one kill. Gets the 1v1 with Estrio, ah. but first couple of the shots just a bit off. So the cruise missile will be taken out of the picture. Vegas still working down Elevator Alley. Attached able to kind of do the exact same here. Now he's on five. Nades from all over the place start to hit him up, but... Attach does stay alive off the regen. Just comes down to the anticipate this gunfight with Diamond Con. Shots are decent, but can't finish it off. So everything stays pretty neutral. 50 seconds to play. Yeah, they just need to have left side control. They just have to fight for mid map as well. They finally able to stop that game clock, but the teammate who came off spawn in Geo does get cut down through the middle of the map. Now it's all left up to Attach. He's been trying to play for a kill so long to earn this cruise missile, but does get cut down by Diamond Con. Potentially the first segment is going to be complete. Yes, Purge here with the SMG gets the first one done, but now the rest of his teammates come and all spawn. Gorillas have the opportunity to put them in the headlock again. Yeah, and the 1v1 on the point was part of the equation, but Assault deep over towards the Vegas spawn forced them on that top right corner, which is not where you want to be spawning as an offensive player. Astriel just through the bottom of the helipad, gets a little bit of damage into Purge, but both players will stay healthy through it. Follow-up gunfight will be one over towards the A zone. So once again, LAG defensively looking really calm. Back towards the B zone. The focus comes, though, for Vegas, who they've already converted the first tick. Second on the way. Fame is really kind of here by himself. So this may be an extra 60 pending the kills come through here for Vegas. Yeah, that's already the second segment complete. And Purge at least stays alive long enough. Walks away with a fight and allows his last two teammates on the point to win those next two gunfights. So that's going to be B done and dusted. Time extended by a minute. Basically all tied up in lives. But now if you are the gorillas, this is where you got to slow it down. You cannot go forward in this situation. Allow yeah. them to get the point, get in your spawn, and start putting you in that trap. Yeah, Vegas with this high ground position over towards Hilo, just trying to do what they can to build up a life lead and maybe keep the map in their favor. But a good quick follow-up from Estriel. He finds two up top. So just like that, in the blink of an eye, now all of a sudden it's LAG who owned the high ground around the map. Only player who snuck through quite literally is attached. Avoids touching the zone for a moment, but I think his pinky toe stepped in and all of LAG snapped around to find them. Kill comes through, and the LAG defense reaffirms their control. Staff players in a greater position. What else can never get done from bottom blue? At least takes down the first, but doesn't commit to the second gunfight. He has to wait for his teammates to make a valuable push coming in. With only 25 seconds left, this is basically going to be the last hurrah. Yeah. You go four dead, you're getting put in a swan trap in. Gorillas are in budget. They are sending up across. Look where everyone is. Outskirts, yeah. outskirts, underground back spawn. They are <laughs> waiting for this push to come in. Hey, put the onus on the offense. You got to step into the zone. Thing is, Attach and Geo have made a long route uh -oh. up and now Diamond Con is kind of on an island by himself with a whole world of Vegas players in front of him. Does step over, finds the first Nero with the trade. Keeps the clock stopped at 7.1. Fame feeling the pressure, calls in the immediate cruise missile. Does it find a kill? Yes, it takes near out of the point, but quickly to jump right back in is attached. 5.4 seconds on the clock. First tick is locked in. Kills continue to still come through. Second tick on the way, but it's Astral around the back to once again clear. Three seconds on the clock. Geo, the next man in. He finds himself two, but not the third. It's just one by one they My come. God. Vegas still in the point. Nine plays six. Nero now for sure the last one left. He's been stunned. He's been naded. And the clock will expire on this Vegas offense. Vegas had an opportunity, man. They had an opportunity right there to potentially close out that eight point. But once Attach finds only one kill in towards the spawn, Diamond Kill at least stays alive long enough, even when his teammates drop a three, to take that one player off of A. So now it's a 3v3 with the players coming off spawn. You use your attacks. You use your gunner. You set up the crossfires to eventually break your way back on in. But it was an all-out mix fest in through bottom blue. Gunfight after gunfight, <laughs> trade after trade. But with the Gorillas having the better spawn on that side, also investing the cruise missile as well. They secure mm. the defense, but they give up four segments. So that's got to be in the back of their mind on this attacking ground. Yeah, it feels like it was a necessary call, though, I think, if you're LAG, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So two on the count. Attach first blood. Fame trying to work his way through mid-map. I believe he did see Nero through the window. Doesn't matter. He's already been taken care of. Follow-up kill good. Fame now on four. 
And he does step in towards the zone. Follow up help here for LAG as they kind of just assess the new situation and the kills come through cleanly. LAG working with some heat here on offense. And Fame is already in another five streak and he reads this play beautifully wow. on an attach. Earns himself that cruise missile. He used one last round, but he said, all right, I'm going to get one next run as well. So it doesn't even matter. He allows his teammates to get on that B point. A couple players from Vegas Legion coming all spawn, so they have to take their time through your attacks, make sure everything is hitting. But now that trophy system does get invested, the first segment is about to be complete. And Fame has played the deep agent here, now on seven in a row. He's going to be forcing Vegas to spawn at this back elevator position. This, again, is oh. not where you want to be. It's just yeah. so much good spawn manipulation coming out of Fame. Follow-ups, again, all individual. They're just trying to lock him down, and finally kills come through. And to be fair, as much of that was a nuisance, Nero and Purge do a nice job of getting the kills, and they don't really yeah. allow much offensive success to happen on the zones. I would have loved to see the gorillas right there with Fame in the back of the spawn behind enemy lines. Let's just exactly. complete one of the points. Yeah. Exactly. Not 2-2 two, two split, and at least complete one towards both. Because now you're three, make it all four dead in the back of your spawn, and now Fame is in a situation where he potentially has to use a cruise missile to try to work his way out if they want to close out here but with only 25 seconds left they're currently down by two segments it's a conga line through the underground yeah the only bit of good news here for lag is the fact that they did confirm those two ticks of progress but vegas making life absolutely miserable for lag off this spawn this will likely come to a bit of a close if attach can find this cruise missile before the next round that would be pivotal for vegas Kills continue to look good, and it looks like Attach will be a bit too far away from anyone from Gorilla's the Chow. So we'll go into a round five with Attach one off a cruise, but big bounce back for Vegas considering the circumstances. Oh, yeah, and that's due to the misplay from the Gorillas. You got someone behind enemy lines. Your 2 2 split already have full map control. Let's just stack one of the points so we can extend time by a minute, not go for a segment at each point, because then all it takes is Vegas Legion to hit a couple needs, get that one player down, and then put their sole focus on the other guy, and that's exactly what they. They did found a four dead at the right time once they eliminate fame from the behind enemy lines mm. even though he earns a cruise missile it still was great work from vegas legion only giving up two segments now they guarantee themselves defense in round number five and they're happy as hell about that because they suck at, f at offenses so <laughs> you got defense versus team in lag everything is set up for you to win this especially if attach finds that one kill for the crews see how it goes vegas coming out of spawn it's just the normal default setup where lag on their offense, have a lot of focus towards the B side of the map. Fame already up top. Clean shots keeps Purge undercover. So a chance now for LAG to kind of use that as maybe an opportunity to know, okay, no AR over the top of the B site. Maybe we can find our way in. And they'll just walk right on in to start working on the first dick progress. Yeah, they're just right into B. Purge, unfortunately, with a team kill into Geo. That pro Prey tank has a crazy radius. Wow. Blow up teammates, but that's already the first segment done. The second segment about to be complete, but at least attached. Finds that one kill to earn himself that cruise missile. He's not done yet. We're jumping right back on in. That's already three dead. And now they're starting to get aggressive on the map. LAG, this is a crucial moment. You have to win these next fights so you don't get trapped. Dude, attack oh! everywhere on the map. Oh my goodness. Huge double from attach. Levels out the life count. Of course, the cruise missile in the process had been earned and Vegas off spawn now dominate the B zone. LAG left reeling, 42 seconds on the clock, and Fame is gonna call the trigger on the cruise missile to see if he can open something up. Yeah, Fame's gotta call that cruise. He knows how crucial this moment right here in the game is. Astro finds the first kill onto Geo. Nothing's gonna connect with the missile. Cause they're all playing in towards bottom blue, but you gotta keep in mind, Attach has one of his own. When does he decide to call that in? Probably when his teammates are able to find a couple kills around the map. No, he's just gonna invest it now. Even though that B point does get yeah. completed. They invest that cruise. They got all the info. That's three down. Now you just got to take down this last player in the, in the elevator. And you have them in the trap. Yeah, Assault has to make a play here. Yeah, and he has not had a great map to this point, but the rest of his team is getting spawn trapped. He needs to create some space. First kill is good towards elevator alley. Can he get a second? Has to. He absolutely needs to find more than this. Shots to attach decent, but still Vegas making life really, really tough off spawn. And with the kills looking the way they do, it's a seven life gap, 55 seconds of the clock for LAG to make their move. Yeah, they gotta get out, man. You gotta get out. Just right now, the team fires, the crossfires from Vegas Legion are just too strong. Oh. That's three, make it all four dead in the feed. Attached to the guy, 30 and 15. Double positive, 2.0 KD. One off of Earth that cruise missile has read this player beautifully. <laughs> takes down Estriel. Now he has a cruise missile to work with. Only 30 seconds left, and the Gorillas only have seven lives remaining. May as well just call it in right here. Nail, meet coffin. 
LAG worked their way out of the spawn trap, but we're on final lives. Five playing 17, 18 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Geo gunning at range. Oh, it just gets that much nicer for Vegas. Diamond Con, the last one left. He'll be taken out of the picture and Vegas looking clean with it in their two respawns in the series. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I promise you, LAG were not expecting this either. We're talking about <laughs> what, two maps, two respawn maps that we beat this team previously on and they made a roster change. So we had the heavy advantage. We're going into a high rise control. We're 3-0 undefeated. One of the best teams in the game. But when you're not finding success the way that you usually are in your attacking rounds, Vegas Legion definitely prefer that defensive side. And they clutch up at the very end with great AR work from Attach. Gia holding down the power positions, but all those, also the SMGs just finessing the way that they were. Nero goes only positive one. Purge goes negative three, but you can see the damage out of both of those guys. 4K for both of them. Just yeah. putting down those shots across the map, setting up their teammates for success. But attach MVP, man. 5,200 damage, 32 of 17. 29 <laughs> non traded. Oh, that's missing to do yeah. it all right there. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. The 29 non traded. And it's in the fashion of where he was denying the trades. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of the special moments were happening for attach. And I think if you're looking on the other side, you know, Fame, great map out of him, but the salt was just not a presence whatsoever. Which I, I won't say is, you know, one thing or the other, but he had a great map one, played pretty solid in the search. It's just unfortunate that you had attach popping off on one side and assault really not a factor on the other. And I also think like it was the teamwork aspect for the gorilla. Agreed. You go back to that attacking round, like you're getting all the kills. You got a clean three dead. All of Vegas leads, you know exactly where they're spawning because you currently have fame in their spawn, trying to put them in the spawn trap, but they just go for the split. So the game plan wasn't really the best. They outslayed him in this map number three but they still lost the game. Like, yeah, that just yeah. doesn't make sense if you are the Gorillas. Teamwork yeah. has to be better, and unfortunately it's not. Now they find themselves with their backs against the wall, down 2-1. Wow. That was, I mean, we've had some very entertaining maps. That may yeah. be one of the most entertaining high-rise controls that we've seen in, in a minute, if uh, maybe at all at this point. Just individual pop-offs, again, spawn trap turning into spawn trap. It's just, it almost feels like Fortress at some points, but it's just in the fashion of which LAG found success early. Yeah. Vegas turn around, do the same thing to them. Wow. Captivating stuff. And now we go to a real hard point. Neither team has had a rep on the map yet. And I think the thing we look at here is kind of on both sides, how are the SMGs are going to play exactly. through the first two days of this qualifier weekend, Jay? It really has been a conversation on this map mode combo all about what happens with rival nines when they're in hand. Yeah, the SMGs are very impactful on a map like Rio. We even see Toronto Ultra pull out a third in Scrap, who usually dominates yeah. with the AR, but that's what it takes on a map like Rio. A lot of close up and personal gunfights, a lot of routes that need to be hit, and also a lot of timings that need to be going your way on a map like Rio. So I'm really expecting Purge, obviously, the new SMG for Vegas Legion, to play the same way he has. You know, he's just hitting that early rotation, popping a two-piece, putting himself in a great position to block spawns. Yep. But this is where I'm really thinking Nero has the opportunity to drop like a kill record here he has that ability to once he gets hot with that smg he has that takeover and then on the opposite side we're definitely looking at fame that guy he's just the playmaker for this gorilla's roster estriel he does the dirty work for fame he mm. is the main slayer when they talk about the smg but there's only two smgs per team i'm really curious for both rosters who's gonna pull out that third smg yeah, for a couple of all. these hills yeah if at all yeah, i think it's definitely a lot of pressure I won't, uh, pressure's not the right word. It, it's just, when you think about Fame's history, he's been on some teams where he's kind of been forced to have to run an AR. Yeah. And I feel like that really, really limits his potential. If you can get to a position here where you're LAG and you say, hey, Fame, just go black out and do what you want to do. Just run routes, get kills, run this sub all over the map. Let us handle the rotational work. I think this could be a really successful map for LAG. But the thing about that conversation, it doesn't just start and end with fame. You need Assault to be playing well as an anchor. Exactly. You need Estriel yeah. to be, like you mentioned, being good on finesse time. And then Diamond Con kind of has to, again, be running fast with this second MCW unless he pulls out that third rival. It's definitely an interesting situation when you look at the roster versus how teams have provided early conversations on Rio to this point. Yeah, because I feel like with SMGs on a map like Rio, 
they're going to be leading in everything. Where you're talking about the comms and how they want to attack certain hills. Yeah. But the crazy thing is, you don't want to be too aggressive in certain aspects. Because if you push out the wrong way, and you tell your teammates, all right, I'm going for a deep flank, going for a deep flank, and it doesn't work out for your teammates on the opposing end, then you flip the spawns and everything flips on its head. So that's not the good thing. You have to make sure everything is coordinated as a unit and already starting off into this P1. It's all out nades over the top. So we have yeah, to make sir. sure the attacks are hitting point. Attach is working his way up through bridge side, but he's also going to be playing this slow. So all out battle. Here comes Nero. LG first ones in. Nades will mostly be expired. And woo, nice shots from Nero. A little finesse around the outside. Tough gunfight versus assault to follow up. And with that, LAG will reaffirm their control. Attach trying to make things messy. Oh, 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 oh. Just pick it up where he left off. Trophy system now earned and down. Vegas with numbers just looking for the final kills. That's a quick flip of this first hard point. Yeah, that's already great right, right there from Vegas. Legion trades are bound back and forth. But Attach with the bridge side plays it nice and slow. And he's able to walk away with this final 20. You did have Domicon trying to go for a route. But Vegas Legion, they were winning the gunfights. They know where the pressure's coming in from. To potentially put themselves in a great position to set up for that P2 as they Bro. already have two players off the rotation. The way ay, ay, ay. staying patient with the rival on these gunfights. He's looking for an early cruise missile. The finesse game next level. Lots of damage, but again, patient, not over -chilling. And this is the same setup that we kind of saw from Vegas where one of your SMGs is going to make life hard on the exit while the other's already rotated. Unreal start from Purge and the rest of Vegas as they get a lot of one and to get the rotational setup to two. And now exactly, Vegas Legion know exactly where the pressure's coming in from the Gorillas. They want to flip those spawns. They don't want to try to attack this from bottom ramp. But they're doing a great job of at least trading efficiently to not allow all this time to go in favor of the Gorillas. But Soul Man here is now attached. He does get stunned out. So the break is going to be in for the Gorillas. But with only 25 seconds left, this is your last push for Vegas Legion. It's already been a great job. And now you're going to start yeah. sending a couple players off towards the next hill. Assault, ooh, a little caught on the staircase. Couldn't quite finish off the kill, but... Damage dealt. Assault eventually able to get himself a assist, but still, this is important scrap time for Vegas. Fame only able to find one on the exit, so LAG will rotate very swiftly over towards that front lobby Esky's position. Vegas working towards the truck side of the map, and not a lot of focus towards mid map. This is all about trying to hit this quick pinch on elbow. Yeah, this is very, very quick, and you see the setup right now from LAG. It's kind of open. Even though they're watching every single lane, it's just Estriel onto the point. But when they Wait. find a couple kills, it's time for everyone to collapse. That's now three dead. The last play they got to focus on is Nero, who's behind enemy lines. He's just waiting for his teammates to apply pressure through the front, but they're not finding any kills. So Nero's going to have to try to do it himself. He ah. gets cut down. LAG holds strong. Yeah, huge hard point here for LAG. Nero will actually spawn towards old, so he will actually use that as an opportunity to work with Geo to hit this scrap time. This is more than just scrap. This is almost half the hard point here. LAG, I think we're sitting there coming. All right, we got it. We did it. The hard point's ours, and all of a sudden, Vegas are right there in their back line. Moments of correction for LAG will get them what looks to be the majority of the scrap time. We'll have an even game because of it. Good pickup. It's great work right there from the Gorillas. Great response towards the bottom of Esky's Hill, and now they're winning their rotation over towards P4 by Garage. Even though a couple split spawns coming in from Vegas Legion. Looks like they're in a position to read them. Just got to take down this one player and purge behind enemy lines. But taking too long to find him. It sets up Gia from the front end. That's now three dead Vegas Legion with the instant break to now take the lead right on back. Play through Garage will allow LAG to get themselves to set up for their break. 40 seconds to play for Vegas. Still trying to get their setup fully reinvested as there's a long route from Estriel on the map. And the success with the front for LAG. Oh, this is about to get nasty. Geo completely caught off guard. Purge last one left alive. No chance to take a gunfight. And that long route for Estriel, the difference maker, is LAG find their break. Yeah, LAG find their break. And a much needed one at that because they're going to be late off the rotation over towards Bridge. Narrow with the big first kill onto Fame. It's going to allow them to set up properly around that hill. The final 15 is going to go in favor of the Gorillas. And you've paid attention to your mini-map, Diamond Con. Going on the route. All the way behind enemy lines and assaults here to assist them. They're going to flip these spawns on its head. And now they put themselves on a preferred side to contest it. Yeah. Two players already in, though, for Vegas. And you've got Geo playing over towards P1. He nearly gets the better of Estriel as well. Kills, though, good as LAG make their move now for the hard point. Nero staying alive, staying strong up top towards bridge and just decides to value his life while he waits for the rest of his teammates to come off spawn. Good pickup, though. Nero turns and snaps. Not able to find the second cleanly. And with that, LAG will get full control here at the final hard point. And they drive through the chaos. Come out on top and those fights. And now they're gaining some much-needed time over towards the bridge hill. 
Trophies are down. Trades are there. <laughs> Make it three dead in the feed. Nero's now forced to try to take top mid control. Does take down Diamond Con while the rest of his team is spawning all the way behind him. Gonna try to contest this the way that they can, but right now the Gorillas are growing themselves a nice little lead, and they're running that rotation over towards next. Gotta shut down Fame. One off of that cruise. Test out from Purge. Whoa, Fame. How about that as a sixth and final kill to earn himself the cruise missile? LV looking to play through the old time rotating over towards one, but it's Gorillas in the lead and a chance to set up another break as we take a listen in with LAG. Yeah, yeah, one guy top six steps, one guy six, bridge, six, me. one guy uh, Esky side of time, down Esky, okay, down Esky. Okay, down Esky. Okay, 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 apple, video. Apple, weak, Nemo, uh, Red Fox, Red Fox. Purge is gonna be Apple steps. It's not close. Mating. Go flat. I'm gonna play through deep left here. I'm right. right. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Left, left, left. Nice. 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 Make everyone deep left. We're on deep. We're on deep. We're on deep. Nero's gonna be deep on us. I'm gonna apple. One bullet nice. on us. Nice. I'm gonna apple. Yeah, I'm gonna apple. 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 Oh, he's yeah. apple. Big, big. In the apple. Okay, got him. Coming up. I'm coming up. Deep tiny. I'm deep tiny. Those two just one out. Those two just one out. I'm gonna try. Apple. He's one blue. Maybe. He reached out to you. Maybe we're back. I'm saying that. Also made it. He's one Nero. One shot blue Nero. We've left. We've left. He's on the ramp. I'm going for Apple. 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 I'm Vegas now essentially having a little bit of a trap here over towards this top platform. Yeah, this is perfect if you are Vegas Legion. You don't have the preferred side, but you're holding it from the front end, and you walk away with about 35 seconds. Also, a team kill from Fame. Now leaves all this chunk time up to assault with only 10 seconds left. His teams are, his teammates are now off the back foot, off the rotation. Vegas Legion have got themselves right back into this game. Four-point game. They're fully set up for Eskies. They already made the adjustment because last time, this is all gorillas. This yep. time, it's all them. How long yeah. can they hold for? And the buffer around the hard point is very far forward, but LAG pick it apart perfectly. First two kills are good. Down here comes the flood. Two from one side, two from the other. Geo attach. Find the first couple of nations. The follow-up though from LAG looks pretty darn clean. Vegas not able to reinforce those members inside the hard point. So the break for now is in. The contest at least looking good, but attach turns the tides. And with that, Vegas are able to get back into the hill. Yeah, they stay back in the hell. They're just trading efficiently even when it turned into a two-on-two. They waited for the player to come on the pinch through Box's alley. And now you continuously spawning all of the gorillas through top mid. Final 20 is going to go in favor of Vegas. And now it's all about this rotation. 5v1. Attach versus Assault. Assault's going to be the player over towards Cop Car, but Attach is in a great position already. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to find him here. We also got Estriel on the off spawn who could pinch this hard point up. Kills are not here cleanly. And once again, LAG finding success from the front. And then it's Estriel in fame to finalize the last kills needed for again. Big I don't win. know if we'll call that a rotational win or not. Geo nearly gets the better of Estriel, but it will eventually be a nade to neutralize the hard point. So we have a 50-50 battle over the top of the hill. Vegas Legion are actually able to get on in, but crossfire right there from Domicon. Too strong through mid boxes. Wow. He also finds a second as well. So this is where it can get here if you are Vegas Legion. I know you're trying to contest this, but the nades are going to be pure. No trophy system to shut those down. Even takes down a teammate. But they are still here contesting, trying the best of their abilities. They find the first two kills. Now they're going to start pushing out towards Garage. Make it all four dead. This is a good 25 to walk away with. And Gio's really starting to kind of step up in this rotation. It's been hard pressed with him running this third sub. Maybe moments where you think he's not as comfortable as you'd like to see, but he's definitely allowing and been a reason why Vegas are finding themselves back into this game. Over towards rotation, though, a key hard point. Bottom side bridge, LAG first couple of kills will have them rotating very early with the setup that they prefer. Just got to have the same setup you had last time around. Just no one give up their life for free. Continuously hold top bit of control. And don't allow that pitch to come on in. Great shots from Attach to take down that trophy. Now you take down the player from top bridge. Now it's time to contest the guy onto the point. But they uh, cannot find that kill. It's still the Gorillas holding on. 
Three members in. Trophy system, like you mentioned, not here. So nades will be landing for Vegas on this follow-up attempt. Last we were here, Vegas committed everything to working through old on their way to P1. And they seem to have the same intentions here, but Diamond Con up top, a big double from him. Purge, though, able to follow up. It's a nade from Nero that eventually takes him out. But again, not bad news here for Vegas. They neutralize the time, and now they can kind of make the decision of how much we want to commit to playing towards old versus actually setting ourselves up on one. And they already have a couple players off that rotation. Nero knows that he has the timing on him. So he's going to go for that pitch to eliminate him off of that junk time. But 204 to 207. Can potentially end oh. here at P1. Attach up a close and personal with the Renetti. Takes down Assault. And now it's all about the mix fest. Who can come out on top in these fights through mid? Attach good help over the top. Purge. Make sure that Geo at low HP stays alive. First three kills are good. Now it's up to the LAG who have been kind of categorized in their hard point by being a successful break team. Can they do that here to try to extend this at least another hard point? First couple of kills good from Assault. Geo trying to finesse, can't find anyone to shoot at. So it left with Purge and the break is clean. Only dropping one in the process. LAG extend the map another hill. And that all comes down to Assault, man. He went to up close and personal gunfights with that MCW through the bridge side. Eventually leads to the break for the Gorillas. Now, if you are Vegas Legion, you are forced to give up this time. You don't want to be manned down off the rotation. They're trying to put themselves in the perfect scenario to try to close it out over towards P2 Hot Dog Stand. And here comes the pressure from the Gorillas again through the back end. You have the players going for the long route. Players going for the short routes. But Vegas Legion have read it perfectly. Purge finds two. And now they're going to be able to set up properly off of the the next. Spawns are still in for those two members that fell from Vegas just as the hard point opens. 230 to 236, and LAG are split focused on this break attempt. Two around the back, two from the front. No one's nearby at the moment. Purge catches one by surprise. Does he get a read of it? There's a second one still on the way. May not make much of a difference because attack from the front is finding the kills that he needs. And oh my goodness, the roll swap seems to be working out like magic for Vegas as they will find both hard point wins. This one with three subs in hand and Attach lets everyone know what he has to think about that. Oh, man, he's probably talking to the people that didn't really believe in this roster change, but he messed them know this is what we wanted to do, and it was on full display in all of the respawns. We're talking about a Karachi HP. They haven't found a W. A high-rise control where they were playing one of the best teams in the game on it. They find a W. And then on a map in Rio that they haven't played. They had a slow start. Gio wasn't really turning up with that SMG, but just were ahead of the game plan when it came down to what they needed to do to walk away with the W. Stay ahead in rotations. Make sure we're playing cheeky corners to make it very, very difficult for them to open up with those kills. But you can see that at the very end of that game, it all came down to the timings of the SMG. Every time Purge is going from backside to the middle cut, he was timing it perfectly to find those initial two mm. kills for the players on the Gorillas who were trying to set up that pitch. Vegas Legion, just a well, well-polished team so far in the respawns on full display in this first series. And they walk away with a 3-1 victory over the Gorillas. Get their revenge, because this is the squad who sent them home at the first major. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the game flow, I I again, when you get to that second rotation at P2, 141 up to 207, Gio is one of the guys that was making that happen for him. Yeah. I mean, not the greatest stat line in the world going into that set, but hey, the thing about it was he was making those plays happen when they needed to most, whether it was on rotation or finessing. And then in particular, you look at kind of, again, the question mark around Purge, who I would say at best you may label as a flex from last year. He looked yeah. great in both hard points. Oh, yeah. Sub the entire time. So call me a believer. Vegas looking clean. You take that, bro. You take that. From 0.4 purge to a solid 1 point, probably a <laughs> 0.9 SMG. But the impactful plays that he was making with that SMG in hand. We started off the game with it. Finessing around P1 ends on a 5 streak. Finds multiple kills every single time. It was just a way better claim game plan for Vegas Legion today. Wow. Unreal stuff, man. A lot of excitement throughout all four maps that we had. But with that, Vegas stun everybody in the predictions yeah. with a huge win here, sending LAG into a position of maybe some second guessing after the maybe inconvincing results for the major. And then this here, not going to feel good whatsoever. But that'll do it for us here on our first game of the day as we head back to the desk so they can break it down. Awesome way to start the Sunday as we have our first upset in from Attach and the Boys from Vegas. Now, none of us saw this coming. All of us picked the Gladiator, sorry, the grill is coming into this one. 
How did Vegas find an edge? I mean, listen, this is why I kind of like the Vegas move in the roster change, and this is, I, I guess, what they were hoping for. Gio, you join the team, you win your ones, you play a little bit slower. Purge, you pull out a sub, and you fly in front of me. I'm attached. I'm going to fry. This is a better team composition for this roster, and you saw it through and through, even in their tight setups, like the P2 here on Rio. They had a tight setup both times, making things happen, able to play together and communicate effectively and get those trades like everybody is in the right position at the right time this team looks so much better and much improved especially in the control game mode oh yeah especially control they finally did it right this is a Vegas lesion thing that has followed them since last year of not being able to win those game number threes and now Geo's first game with the squad they end up taking map number three and both the hard points which is really truly surprising to me on the flip side of things I do want to talk about LAG I feel like I learned a lot about this squad and the fact that they just don't do well in the mix and that's what Vegas lesion is this is a poor matchup oh. for them because purge and Nero are just constantly trying to pop those twos to out trade the LAG but we saw one glimmer of hope for LAG that very final P1 where they slowed it down instead of throwing bodies at the hill like maniacs and they counted down and collapsed together and got the break unfortunately it didn't pull out in the end to win map number four but maybe something to work on moving forward do you call a cop car hot dog I'm hearing all kinds of call outs <laughs> but that was the one hill that it just looked like LAG had no Couldn't idea break. how to hold yeah they, they just couldn't break that hill. I mean, they tried to do like a 2-2 split at Estrio on the back, another player trying to hit through over the hop wall, but nobody was getting kills from the white van. So it's just like you have to take your time and really get a pick there. Maybe send somebody through lobby. Their thesis, it just wasn't working on how to break. I'm multiple hills on the map, mind you. Right. There was uh, one moment, though, in this game that made my prediction, well, I knew it was null and void. It was going to be totally wrong. Attached took over. It's your scuff play of the game. Here he is, round five of control, the streak that put his team in the position to take home a much needed match victory and 10 more points. Yeah, he was slamming. Like, he jumps up here, he finds a couple of kills, he then pushes up towards the windows. And I love this heads up play. So a lot of the times, like, you're trying to put a team in the blender, but you have to catch that last guy that gets out. So he actually takes the timing risk, turns around, kills the guy elevators, then does a 180 and slams the guy in the window for the highlight play, then picks up a cruise, which then, Rounds over. Double positive. The old man still looks good on the six as he gets a win for Vegas Legion. Before we go, let's give an overall grade for Gio. I know we didn't see enough from him. What was your early impression? I think it was just solid. You know, it was just what he needed to get done to get the series done. If anything, I really liked what we saw out of Purge more so. All right. Well, it's time for everyone to sync your calendars. If you haven't done it yet, do it right now and find out when Vegas is playing next. They're done for week number one, but they're back in action next weekend. All you got to do, scan that QR code and follow your favorite team all year long. We got to go to a quick break. When we come back, it's the second battle of the day between a team that just finished top four. Minnesota taking on the champs from Boston after this. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Slayers, when you have the talent there, it's all about putting it together. Abuza. Now, right back over to Illy. He takes his fight as well, trying to keep this 100% at 100. And looking good so far. 2v1 now. Dashy last up. Full health, though. Chance to make a play. Next guy drops. Dashy, 1v1. Versilli, former teammate. Ah! 
I just gunned to sleep. There's more than just the game on the line. It's like, you know, a lot more bragging rights. I think the, the very first map is the most important map. Uh, if you go down that first map to Optic, chances are you're not gonna win the series. I think they have like an over 90% win rate after they win the first map, so it just really comes down to that first map, I think. When you go up 2-0, it's really hard to come back, and we're really good at sealing the deal and just closing the... We've been practicing pretty hard and, you know, watching a lot of film and stuff like that, so I'm just fully confident we're gonna walk away with the W. All just on the outside. But Nate Doc King was in six. Going big here, finding one. Tapa gonna try to take down Watch Waldo, but falls. The trade from Nate Doc, it comes through. Ten eliminations. Look who's last alive. It's Huskers in a final 1v1. They eliminated each other. Who wins the gunfight? Huskers pushing the fight. Zoning off with the grenades, finding it. Swings around the corner. No place but chows it anyway. Nate Dog gets the better of Huskers for the win. Nate Dog with 11. We gotta find him, we gotta find him. You guys get smokes if you give if you're a little weak. Run the outside, he's running the outside. Let's go, baby! Come the on! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Share your life. They actually went for the challenges and gave us an opportunity, which is it's something I hate seeing. And oh, what the hell was that? Then he just got That's the best gun bro. in the game. <laughs> that is the best gun in the game. That's they have time, though. They have time. Who's lurking, though? Who is lurking? Oh, they, it's about. Hello? That's a, hello? Oh, 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 wow. Oh, he just gave him a little kiss on the, the cheek. What was that? This. I have no idea. Joe shots. He's on five in a row, and Empire will win the round. I love when Between two top five seeds coming up as our number one seeded Toronto Ultra take on number five Minnesota. Before that, though, we got to get to our monster winner spotlight. We got Dylan, aka Attach, on the line, and he's joining us live. We got to talk about this series, my guy. At the end of it, you stand up, you're shouting at the camera. I was running back to the studio. So, what were you saying to everyone hating on you in the chat? I was just trying to say our team is number one with our new roster. So, nah, I'm just kidding. But honestly, I got uh, flashbacks till after the major. The LED knocked us out. They reverse swept us. And then just like hearing the interview, walking off the stage, then also looking over the team that did the choke symbol. I kind of got flashbacks like PTSD. And I don't know if something took over me. But uh, I apologize to everyone if um, me holding up the number one sign offended you. Don't ever stop. Don't ever 
never change, my guy. <laughs> Too wholesome. And that, why the role change uh, with Purge instead of Geo when you brought him into the roster? Um, well, Geo, he's just been like a, a dominant AR. And the way we've seen with Purge, like throughout this game, it kind of seems like he was more naturally an SMG player with the way he would play. Like he's not someone that would just like post up, like he'll get a kill and just run away. Like, you know, when you're an AR, you need to like get a couple kills, lock down lanes for your teams. But he's always likes to move and make plays. So I think the role's like fitting him a little bit better. Oh. Uh, Dylan, it seemed like, uh, you know, you benefited a lot from this change in terms of individual play. Uh, what was the thought process behind releasing such a individually, individually talented player as Standy and bringing in Geo? I mean, it's always tough because Eli or Standy is, is one of my best friends in the community and he's obviously extremely talented. We all know it. Uh, it had nothing to do with like skill or anything like that. Yeah. It was just like the team chemistry, team cohesion in game and outside of it. So that's really just what it came down to. But I mean, Danny deserves another opportunity. He's a really good player, and I think everyone knows that, but that was just what we tried for now, and uh, it's looking good, but we have a long way to go. Attach, what I love about our show is we now have CDL TV between breaks, and you have been featured in a, quite a few of them going all the way back to <laughs> AW. One of the things we most recently saw in the chat was arguing about it. Is Optic from 2017 the greatest Call of Duty team of all time, or is it Complexity from 2013 oh and 2014? God. It's a hot spot. Oh, okay, you're gonna put me on the spot. Um, I think I would say it's like, that's like kind of two answers in a way, but I think you would have to probably give it to the Optic Dynasty just because I think the competition was a little bit more elevated. But when it comes to like dominance throughout a season, it's Cole. But for years and years and years, uh, Optic was doing that. Um, that's, so good, yeah. that's my president right there. <laughs> Vote for Attach 2028. We got to send him to his team right now as we get ready for the next match. Thank you, Attach. Thank you. What a political answer. I mean, that, that fence that, is that just, good. that's a great fence. Phenomenal sit job. All right, let's take a look at the battle coming up because it is the number one seed, Toronto, versus the number side, Minnesota. And Toronto, they look nearly flawless in Boston. They took down everybody. Their toughest competition is arguably Atlanta phase, and even that series wasn't close with a 4-1. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is a banger match. I mean, two of the respawns in that series were extremely close. Uh, and when we get to the maps and modes, I'd like to get into it a little bit. Because with Toronto, you know, people are calling them like a dominant search team. We don't know that just yet because, you know, they do have a good win-loss record in that game mode. But they're 8-1 and one across two maps combined. Skid Row is now out of the rotation. And in this match in particular, like, Minnesota are cool with squaring up on Karachi S&D. The two good teams there. And then when it comes to the invasion, Toronto is 1-1. One one. So their win condition in this series is winning both those S and D's, and then also I'd like to say in Karachi Control, these are the two best Karachi Control teams as well. So they have a ton of opportunity. Here. Ali, I want you to have a lot of time to speak here, so I'm just going to make this fast and furious. And our scuff pick them. I'm going to lock in the number one seed, 11 and one. How can you root against that Toronto <laughs> yeah. Ultra? No, I mean I, there's not a lot for me to say on this matchup. Obviously, I think Minnesota did what they needed to do on land. Unfortunately, online though, they haven't proved themselves to me just yet, and the stats just lean a little too heavily towards the number one seed. I'm going Toronto. It's going to be a Banger, I think. At least I hope so, man. I'm tired of 3 1, 3 0s, but I got Toronto in this series. I think we go the distance. Fans? All right, they're also going Toronto. Everyone's smart here on the desk, or are we all wrong for a second time? It's time to find out as we send it over to our casters. We got the beautiful Bryce with Mr. Chance. Thank you very much. Yes, this is a game that may have many people thinking it'll be one-sided, but upsets have happened. Ultra are the big bad of the CDL, but Rocker will be looking to take them down a peg or two. Chance, what do we think? I think the most optimistic look at this series, you like are paying attention to Rocker because Rocker really did struggle in the online stages throughout like that major one split, but then they show up to the major and they actually started to ball out. You get your top four placing. The biggest focal point for the team were both accuracy and awakening as AR players. Their stats were abysmal. They were not performing, but as soon as they jump in the mix of the major, they started popping off. And well, Bryce, speaking of popping off, Toronto definitely gonna be playing with better vibes today in in front of a live crowd. I think the way Cock Kids phrase it is uh, the dope is going to be good for the players on stage. I heard Scrap talking about it. So, yeah, they're ready to fry. Never sound older than that, Chance, but let's jump into this game, see how it goes. I do think, obviously, a lot of people keep an eyes on the Toronto Ultra at the moment. 
They are the team to beat, the team to take down. Confidence in abundance and an insight gunny to kick things off. Yeah, Jamie Craven always going to be on point. Whatever he's going to be doing on the map, almost certainly the correct thing for the main AR to be taking place. Of course, the rotational fights are kicking in super early. That is 30 seconds for Minnesota basically say, hey, look, we got bullied on P1. We have to chalk it up and rotate towards new. But of course, Ultra, happy for it. I mean, you just get to sit there and super soak this time. And of course, still get 15 seconds to work the map and try to find some kills. Yeah, there's a lot of time here. I mean, this is always going to be an early rotation P1 and P2 on this map. And you can see Rocker are set up deep. This is a difficult break at the best of times. But here they go. The first flurries of gunfights. going to fly in for them as well. Awakening will find one. And his teammate Scrap will get one back as well. But that's not enough to break it yet. And you do see one player. It is inside the table to get out towards P5. So one player right now from Ultra really put on the pressure. And it's enough to open across. Kleenex has made it through. But up on top of the hill, accuracy is still safe and sound. One more gunfight to beat, though. That's it for the P2 break. That is accuracy shutting that door on a four spree as well. Honestly, man, can go and get a cruise. <laughs> Think he's going to as well. So sitting here just with a little bit of patience. Now, his teammates have got this cross as much as he wants to chat it. It's just not a good idea. Soak up all of that time you've worked so hard for. He's peeking inside. It doesn't matter. Linz will get him in the end. This is all rotation now for Ultra. It's gone pretty much the way we thought. Ultra opening on the P1. Rocker get that rotation to P2. P3, though, anyone's game. And I love that we got like the accuracy view watching like the minions run from underneath and start to work the rotation. Envoy though, basically just breaks it down, picks up the big two piece up top and now it's gonna be a scattered push over towards new and maybe a bit of a square up as well. Insight versus Linz. Maybe just time for contest. Linz doesn't have the right gun for the job. You see Insight just waiting for the kill to come through. It's the nade that gets it done. And this is right now a beautiful setup for Toronto. A player deep in the back spawn, two players roaming up top and Insight collect in that time. Rocker, this is a slow roll for them. They're thinking about next point as well. I know it's 40 seconds away, but they're going to push this all through back out. He's to find the first. The second one tries to fly at him as well, and he will get taken out. Oh boy, here for the trade. Finds one, finds two. That's a clean up. That's a clean hill and hold. And for Rocker, it might just be rotation time. Yeah, and that is the beauty of the setup and the beauty of the coordination for Toronto, right? Kleenex, not only does he get the first kill and the damage, but he stays alive just long enough for Envoy to swoop in and get the easy two piece. So the perfect set up on the hill toronto executed as well and now on the rotation the question is how effective are they at counting to four vivid is behind enemy lines trying to sort of make that hero play for the team and i think you might have envoy sort of hunting him down and maybe not i don't know if he was ready for the gunfight but fries him anyway that's a four spree and back spawns secured Gonna be careful accuracy and composition here to at least challenge the point. They're gonna know it now as well. Scraps gonna get caught, but Clemson will clean it up. But it has opened the door just a little bit. Rocker trying now to capitalize. You can see them swarming towards this point. They're getting the trades. Inside will hold the stairs, but there's nobody here to help him as his teammates trying to flood through tunnel to get there. And that is a huge kill to break this. And it's still for 30 seconds. This is good time for either team. So Ultra squaring up, trying to take it from them. It is the slammage inside of the point and the awareness for Scrap of where to check out for Awakening. Doing enough damage that his teammates are there for the cleanup kills. So that's the 30 seconds Ultra we're looking for. Not only do they get that, it's still a 50-50 battle on this rotation. ARs already posted in the back, but you see Minnesota. They strike first and they strike hard. Every single player except for inside getting wiped out and that'd be P5 control. Minnesota looking for this full 60. It's just been hold to hold. We had a little bit of a mixy one that last time. Connects with the first gunning. So we're going to have to win more than one trade to get through this. Awakening playing his life as well. Ultra, again, a hard break for them. Pushing through tickets, looking for an opportunity. Yeah, no opportunities really on the map though, right? If you're dealing with the crate gunfights, working through ticket, incredibly difficult. And Vivid right now getting tagged up heavy. That's going to open the door to try to cross through ticket, but it is accuracy and awakening. Guns up, ready for the cross. Linz is in the mix as well, and this is just beautiful. It's perfection coming out of Minnesota Rocker. You win the big gunfights to secure the rotation of P5, and they deliver on securing that hill time. So right back into the game, Bryce. We got a good one on our hands. Going to be all tied up as we go into new. Well, set phases for fun as we go into the second set of rotations. It's basically even Stevens. These two teams going for it. It will be Ultra here on this one first. The difference might be, Chance, is that when P2 comes a little bit closer than this, they may commit earlier than they did last time. 
still though for the break on p1 before we even get there this is like sort of what dictates what you're gonna do try to break through the door the trades are coming through but more so from ultra vivid last man standing doesn't stand for long and now ultra have the opportunity to maybe jump on this or maybe they don't even want to not even focus on the rotation over towards p2 they're just gonna take the full 60 here or at least look for it so you got a, a four-man stack around this hill Again, a full 60 on P1 is as good as a full 60 on P2. So Ultra right now in prime position. Well, Homeboy now is going to go for it. They've just got out of the point here. 23 seconds left to go. It will be a late rotation by anybody's numbers. But can they break your chance? That is the question. Oh, well, Ultra, if we want to see if they can break it, we got to listen to how they try to get it done. Let's go to an Astro listening with Toronto Ultra. Time is weak. Time is weak. Can I be check? Can I be check? All right. I need to see if it costs you, let's really cross. Yeah, I think garage. I'm going with you guys. Low new! Low new, really weak! Up new, really weak! I need it. One team closer to the sky. Now coming in. Yeah, nice. nice. I'm going down there. Dark. I'm sorry. Tough time. I've got your time. Tough time, weak. Lamar. I'm one shot. Old tunnel, old tunnel. I'm one shot by the way. Low! Nice, tunnel. Tough time, tough time. Two front, two front. Stay alive, though. No. One front. One low tunnel. Down the front. Really weak front. No work. No it crossed. Nice, nice. Stay alive, stay alive. We're here, we're here. It's not weak. One tunnel again. Oh, there. Oh, no, 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 Top of me. He's uh, going. Uh, the stairs. Stairs. Top of the stairs. Top of the stairs. Last two. Last two subs. Last two subs. Yeah. Yeah. Last two subs. They're going to play top mid. Watch out top mid. Mid stairs or mid door. I don't know why this one is around. Watch out. Watch out. Go on hell. Take it. Take it. Don't top mid. He's going to be double door. I see him. Top. Tip him down. Dead. Dead. Nice. Nice. Go on board. Yeah. Off. Kimmy. Absolute business as usual for Toronto Ultra. You got scrap going on sprees. You get Ultra making the big breaks and winning rotations. They are doing everything right in their hard point win streak. Bryce, by the looks of it, is going to continue. Yeah, no stopping them now. Continuing to put the hurt on in every step of this game. And they have looked rock solid onto this one. Envoy going to be holding the door. Actually, we'll take him down. They're trying to get bodies onto this point. Trying to find something going into this game. But not only do they have to continue to put the pressure on here, they've got to be wary of the rotation. And they've got to be more wary of Scrap as he goes to work. That two-piece may have ended it. Yeah, that's going to call game right there. Minnesota, they got to get the old time. And they cannot rotate over towards new. That is now 14 hard point wins in a row for Toronto Ultra. They already have the record and they continue to run it up. They may never lose again. <laughs> it may happen. Who knows? The team is dominant. I will give credit though. Minnesota Rocker looked pretty good. The rotations when they had them, they held them well. They put some pressure on, but Ultra's class as the number one team in the game just picked them over the edge in that one. Yeah, it, it also seemed like sort of a map where you can really tell that it's like almost a comms diff at times to where like their communication is so effective that sort of those mixy plays where maybe there's the opportunity, like especially from the alley hill over towards Barbershop. A few different players from Minnesota found themselves behind enemy lines, a weird opportunity to find like a cheeky kill, go for the pinch on Barber. But like as close as Minnesota was, they could never quite execute. So if you're on the back foot against Ultra, they're just so consistent about making the right plays at the right time and uh, really just no open avenues. So all things considered for Rocker, it really wasn't the worst played game. They weren't making mistakes. They got the P5s that they needed. It was just blenders like this where Kleenex does so much damage that Envoy's getting free too. You're turning the alley hill into full 60s. So I don't know, Minnesota played well. Ultra, just the best hard point team in the game. Yeah, I, I, realistically, yeah, just going back to one of those plays, like the P1 hold, by the way, going, yeah, we're going to get a full 60 on P1, because even if we don't get P2, we've still tied it up. But if we break P2, it's huge for us. And maybe we see some more of that. I feel like a lot of people kind of overemphasize those money hills when you can get good time other places. But yeah, Rocker, they relied on the rotation. They didn't lock it down the way they needed to, and the game got out of hand very, very quickly.
Yeah, and as you pointed out for like the P1, P2 thing, it was also like a conscious decision by Ultra to not even send anybody over to tunnel. Like Ultra knows that they're going to be wrapping over to P2, but instead of making it mixy and fighting for it, as you said, just made sure they were going for perfection. Lock it down, keep it secure. Let the other team make those mistakes because like they're not going to go sit there and four stack the P2 hill. Still one or two players are going to paw at the idea of like trying to find the cheeky kills, maybe squeaking in some extra time and whatnot. So it's almost just uh, creating the opportunity, letting the other team make the mistake and just playing for that guarantee. But Ultra is the guarantee. After that first set of rotations came through, I mean, they just simply never looked back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of the opposite of what we sometimes see. That hero play from players, it's wonderful. We shout about it. It gets talked about and clipped when they make the huge plays. But I just said, hey, we can just have four players hit something at once, and it may work out better for us than one player trying to kind of sneak through and get something amazing. And yeah, that completely turned the game on its head. But hard point, undefeated, 14 in a row. Now onto the S&D. Yeah, and of course, uh, you know, you heard the desk talk about it as well. This is the opportunity for Rocker to win this series. Almost that 2-3-5 sort of situation. Obviously, it is like, you know, two of the best Karachi control teams in the game. It's going to be an interesting one, though, because, you know, if you're looking at the map records, Ultra hadn't been the strongest at Search and Destroy until the Major, where they were perfect and didn't drop a single map. So I'm very excited to see if that, like, they can continue to level up the game. I know Insight had basically every single clutch you would ever want him to have. The first Bloods were on point. So uh, Ultra simply terrifying. So you can see him toe-to-toe -to -toe again on Karachi. Uh, certainly a map the Rocker happy to play as well. The pick-heavy style accuracy, he does live for it. He certainly does, but it's always going to be a bit of a dogfight between these two. Realistically, Ultra super confident, just really not taking many L's. If anything, that kind of shows more down that Boston game, at last major. People are like, is this something that we can expect from them? But since then, just absolutely cruising. On the other side, Rocker, a mountain to climb. Yeah, and well, the start of that mountain, I mean, you could just go down the line. Kleenex, if that's the first guy you have to deal with on the map, that's going to be an absolute nightmare for you. And it really does just to continue to get worse as you go down. There is pointed out the 14 hard point map win streak, CDL record. And again, they've already broken it. They're just continuing that streak and running it up. And frankly, the SD map streak, they're like, you know, creeping up on it. Atlanta Phase has it from last year. So I know they have maybe five or six more maps to go, but like, the conversations there like ultra at the two most important game modes have been flawless as of late nine series in a row uh, and i know you heard players talk about it of you know they win the tournament scraps popping off he's going crazy turns and look at insight and insight's just like eh, i don't know that's kind of easy like we're not worried about major one we're thinking about the entire year so these guys already in a situation where they can think long term because they have just been that good they have. They really have. They are the monsters to be defeated. We're going to see whether or not. But here's Minnesota's Rocker Monster Energy pre-game. They need to get better at converting. They only have a 71.9% S&D conversion rate, but they are below 70% on three maps. And they are going against this man, the S&D League leader. Number one in KD. Number one in attacking KD. Number one in defensive KT. And he's won four 1v2s chance. I mean, it was ridiculous. I, I can't remember who the other player was, but prior to the major, I think he was either tied for most clutches in the league or was like behind by one. And then he basically doubled the number of clutches he had at the major alone. But here's the opportunity for Minnesota Rocker. They get the first blood. You just talked about the conversion rate. This is where they have to execute with that man advantage. A fire on Vore right now. That farm is looking to go down as well. Ultra are not here. They've given up complete control with that first blood as well. Can they find this? Linz will find inside as well. So now a two versus four. Toronto Ultra looking for something, but Envoy will find accuracy. Scrap It's just picking this throw. He's fine as well. Down to a two versus one, though. Scrap's still alive, but it is weak. And the time is against him. And this is also the most difficult bomb site to retake, so he's going to have to fly in. Players not to make the mistake. I think Vivid and Awakening uh, almost certainly have already done enough and backing down in the right moment as well. Rocker have to execute with the man advantage. They do exactly that. And they kill Scrap in the end. No, you know, long-term cruise missiles coming through, at least not in that moment. Efficient work out of Minnesota. And shout out to Linz. I mean, right now, one of the top candidates for rookie of the year. Top two, I'd say, in the rookie class. Gets the first blood. Obviously, it's just well-coordinated nades. But shutting down Insight on the flank after that. Linz really sealing the deal for the team. 
And the crazy thing there is I think Scrap was shooting very well. They really oh, didn't yeah. want to take those gunfights. Almost took out both of them, but great conversion there from Minnesota Rocker. That is exactly what they need in this moment. First point on the board. Baroltra, it's their turn to attack. Oh, you see Trophy's getting tossed out from both sides, so the opening nades only going to be chopping away at the Trophy's accuracy, able to make it to the bridge and... Ultra, I don't think we're able to spot them on the cross, but that just means they have to be aware. And you see two arrows right now in Ultra. They're looking this direction, so they're prepared for action to be here. The nades connect. They at least have the intel. Question is, can they hunt them down? That's going to be their play call. Scrap getting into a forward position, trying to get it inside. Look at the first accuracy, though. Hold down. Phoenix will get him, and they just go to work, opening up this bomb site. Lin's down to one versus two. He's the other side of the map. They're going to know this as well. Can he find anything? He's going to find Scraps in the street. Chooses not to fire and Scraps yeah. is thank you for the little breath and just rips his head off. Yeah, that is hyper aggression out of Ultra. Nothing, again, that's the most difficult bomb site in the game to retake. And especially if you're a rival nine player, you need a lot to go your way. You need a lot of luck, but Scrap just slamming that door in his face. And again, Ultra, systematic. They knew accuracy was going out towards the bridge. They get the information with the tax and the nades, and they make the play call to jump on top of them. And as soon as the move gets hit, Scrap flew over to top AC to get those like initial shots. And then every other player in Minnesota gets baited out and Scrap just flies at Awakening. Takes down all the key players and I mean, hey, they'll take that round. Minnesota, of course, back in the mix. Straight towards B, they go again. And from Ultra, no one's over towards the bridge, but Rock are still concerned about some power positions. Linz, uh, first blood, huge. They converted it last time. Can they do it again? Linz already repositioning, getting out of there. And for Ultra, even with the comms, they're not going to figure out where he's gone. Bomb down, gets out with his life. Again, most difficult bomb site to retake. Ultra are the best team at it, but I think Linz is already making the play. Just gonna be difficult. Kleenex trying to take a long range fight. Already been tagged up. It might be a distracted Vivid's gonna take down Envoy. A two versus four, but a two versus four too far as inside goes down and Ultra are wiped out. Conversions on the first blood here for Minnesota Rocker. Yeah, absolutely perfect. And again, both those offensive rounds, Linz is basically the player that is deciding what is going to happen. He gets the first blood and again, a 4v3, nice advantage. If you get the bomb down, even better. But Linz, not only does he get out with his life, finds the timing to actually work the flank. So Linz is going above and beyond and his teammates off the back of it, executing perfectly as well. Again, Rocker, certainly a team that stepped up their game going into the major. They want to keep those strides going. So far, so good on Karachi. Let's see. Can Ultra get back onto this? Nades flying out. Coordinated nades. They're trying to hit somebody. Not enough onto the same point, though. Clinton's going to go down as well. First blood for Minnesota. And that's not what they wanted to happen. That bomb has dropped in no man's land. Yeah, there's going to be a chaos round, too. Yep, weird timings and weird gunfights. But I'm going to be able to find out and get the odds back to even. But Linz responds again. Linz around this red area. He has been a menace. Once again, hands his team the advantage, but Ultra, plenty of time to work with. Scrap and Insight, obviously incredibly capable of the clutch, and Insight is just so far back. He might be loud, but they can't hear him just yet. He finds the freebie. All right, we got a 2v2. 2v2, and they've actually just completely swapped the entire map around. For Ultra, they've got to figure out how to get this bomb out of there and towards a bomb site. Scrap and Insight are not near each other at all. And they are running out of time, so they're going to have to converge. And that is unfortunate timing. Linz doesn't see him. Linz doesn't see him. And Scrap gets the kill. Got a 2v1. This might be a clutch. And they are going to get it. Nice little cheeky 2v3 rolling through there from Ultra. First blood doesn't matter. And again, that is sort of a round that just descends into chaos. It is atypical. It gets weird. You have insight of all players in your back spawn out of nowhere tricky to deal with and really just unfortunate on the timing that lens doesn't spot scrap down low but ultra they'll take the luck i'll take the round tied up 2-2 i feel like everything ultra did there was not 
correct, but somehow it worked out. They dropped the bomb down into the middle of the map. The players weren't near each other for a trade. Still got the clutch out in the end, though, and it, it all works out beautifully as they tie it up, but Rocker are probably wondering if they could have got a little bit of a trade that would have been magnificent for them. Linzo, very aggressive down middle. Awakening will get the first one. They are heading towards A with bodies. Yeah, Scrab just full sent off a top AC, maybe into three different players. Accuracy follows up with the next kill on the flank. He might get traded out, but 3v2 with bomb down this is a, a round rocker feeling much more comfortable to try to secure trying to find this first pick surely ultra cannot do this again looking for another hero set next gonna check the corners checks that one doesn't get it gets away looking for the kill they've got it for it as well bodies are here for the trade if he's going to take down Kleenex, though, Envoy still hasn't got his health back. If he sees a player behind him, he is going to fall. Just not enough magic in the pipe there for Ultra. Rocker convert another round. Yeah, nice win there from Vivid towards the end as well. Envoy and Kleenex, as much as you can in the 2v3, working very well together. But Vivid able to just isolate out one gunfight while Envoy was just tagged up one shot, had to back down. So Vivid jumping on the ball and really just good positioning out of Rocker. They find the freebie first blood. Scrap just kind of YOLOs it there for the moment. And they don't waste any time. They don't panic. Get the bomb planted. Accuracy's got the flank. Someone push out the other side. Again, the game plan right now from Rocker. Executing it very well. Still, they've got to be particular about those first bloods. Yeah. That's been the issue for them so far. This time, it looks like a bit of an A push here from Ultra, but they've got to get positioning first. Kleenex and Insight, basically a SWAT team through these doors. They are cleaning out red. They are looking for somebody lurking in this area. And now this is all about information and timing. Yeah, and I think the lurker is typically Lin. So if he has the gunfight against Scrap, you know, you've pushed him back. Good reads out of Scrap as well. First blood, and that should be bombed down. You know, Lin's was around the diner. Everybody else is going to be wrapping in for B. That means man advantage and time now very much on Ultra's side. Insight just waiting. Accuracy. About to go up here and look for him, but Insight has just got that one locked in as well. Envoy trying to get a bit mixy around the bus. You can see Flash looking for him as well, and it goes through. Scrap's going to get it. Envoy will get the trade as well, and it's clinical whenever Ultra do something like that. Uh, you were exactly right. And make a mistake. Rocker's playing well uh, at the exact same time. That is just quite literally the case of that first blood just kind of seals the fate. Uh, and that's not an easy read for Scrap to make, but he certainly makes it look easy with that first kill on Awakening. But uh, again, just two teams that are not wasting any time. They know exactly what the game plan is. As soon, even before the kill came through, they were going for the bomb plant. So they just, as you pointed out, like a SWAT team, systematically clear out the site. Go about their business. And this has also been a ton of offensive round wins. Rocker got to keep it up. Envoy getting the bridge this time. Going deep, and you can see Rocker have committed to this. Dead Silence already popped for Envoy. He's expecting a bit of an aggressive push, probably because his teammates aren't there quite yet. But Rocker, when do they push this trigger? Right now for Envoy, he does actually have both his AR players looking over this direction. Scrap maybe now rotating back over towards A, but... He's going to get some communication, and you'd expect Inside or Scrap to get a couple tags in players if they try to jump on Envoy. Smoke's out. Vivid. Is the bomb going to actually go down? He does get it down. Doesn't get out with his life, but a small opportunity here for Rocker. Awakening going to have to back down for it as well. Clancy will find the player on the flank, and that nade will get Awakening. Last ball oh, left wow. and Envoy. Good that is God. a retake wipe. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, you can, like, hold this site in a 3v4. It's not easy, but you can get it done. Uh, they just collapsed immediately. I mean, just the patience there out of Ultra. Kleenex just hanging out in red, waiting for somebody to, like, wrap back and roll through. Uh, I think that might be G or just be a moment of panic, I'd say, out of Rocker. Because as soon as the bomb got planted, yeah, we got confirmation price. That was a 10-second retake. Everybody swung into action. Obviously, we can see the player in that smoke a little bit easier than the players can. So he was waiting and holding his fire. Not easy to do when that smoke goes down, but as soon as it did, he backed down Awakening, put the nail onto his forehead as well, and everybody else was there ready to clean up. Ultra, 4-3. Yeah, mixing things up too, right? Last time it was a four-man hit over towards A. Now they're going back for the more traditional route. Hyper aggressive on defense though is Rocker. Vivid's already gotten in position. They got somebody out on the bridge as well. It's gonna be accuracy. So they got a nice little crossfire set up for the guarantee and 
As far as 2-2 two -two split goes, you're feeling great about it. Accuracy able to strike for the first blood as well. And if you're in sight, you don't want to get baited into the crossfire. This is going to be very difficult to break down. Just checking, but hasn't said accuracy. But accuracy has seen him and completely rips him apart. Two versus four now for them. No positioning. And we will find one. Actually going to get this bomb down as well. It does give him a little bit more of an advantage. He has been stunned. Clear. He's going to go for it. Oh, boy. He's just going to end up dying on the cross. Awakening with two. And it's all tied up again, Chance. Yeah, not good reads from Awakening there towards the end when he was on the top ACs. I'm very confident he could see Kleenex in the corner top red and eventually just jumps out, gets the freebie kill. And, oh, the bomb got planted. I'll look that direction and collects the second freebie as well. So accuracy really just opens up the round. It's the first two kills. Awakening falls up on the flip side of the map. So they bounce back. Rocker, they got the defensive round they needed to respond to what Ultra brought to the table. And we do have a, a true SND shootout right now between these two teams. Who breaks first? Who loses the ice? For Rocker, this is a massive opportunity. Ultra have not been defeated in the last eight SNDs. They could fall here, but first blood for them now! And Kleenex jumps to the window. He's going to go down. Already bodies flying out as well. Scrap has seen that player go towards the back. This is a huge gunfight, and Linz will win it! That is huge. Nino Soto Rocker, they now smell the blood in the water. It's down to a two versus two. Yeah, Rival versus MCW right there in that moment. Rival comes out on top. But again, in terms of, like, hesitation, they don't go for the instant bomb plant. They're a little bit concerned. But obviously, Rocker, they have plenty of time to work with. 47 seconds left on the game clock. And, I mean, Ultra haven't made a move. Ultra almost certainly just playing for the rat back towards B. So, for Rocker, you don't have any information. You're not playing with a great deal of confidence of where the pressure is going to be coming from. But you do have time to get whatever setup you go for. They're going to plant on the back side of A, stack up on the same side of the map, and ultra pressure. It's going to be coming in from the other side. Time burning. The candle is not that long, and they've got to check so many corners and get this to fuse. Then towards the back, he's got to see Envoy. Envoy does get a few out of it here. The smoke's going to go down. That will make Rock up move. They're going to have to try and check this bomb a few times. It's up by the first, but it's all down now to Vivid. Can they find him? Can they get him? He's going to be seen there. He gets the first, but not quick enough. And that'll be the defuse ultra. Get it in just a second. God, that is insane, dude. That That is the difference maker between two teams like this where Rocker do so many things right. And literally with 0.2 seconds, I think, left on the round, Envoy ends up getting the clutch there from Ultra. That's a nail biter too, because Rock were making good plays. Not only did they push out like the back dumpster side, Linz just takes a massive route and clears out so much of the spawn that Vivid knows what direction they have to look. They get the early information, but I think it was honestly not just Envoy making the play towards the end, but that smoke grenade blocking the vision of Linz when he was top red might have been just enough to prevent Linz from getting those early kills. So that is a nail biter round, Ultra steal it away and i'll go back to working that a site there they go ultra they want to end this here they're going through with the bodies the doors slam open found a waking up top though oh, hello it hello wins all the way to the back that's two already flying out the third will fall down from awakening and kleenex is left alone and Good lynch God. will get his third unbelievable there was a gap and it was exploited to the fullest dude it, that was exploited instantaneously good trigger discipline as well the route on point i'm not kidding even the round before Linz is straight up making plays he has been single-handedly winning so many rounds but there you see the timing just straight in through the window and slams him next to the wall right there for two and of course the follow-up after the fact Linz might just be a uh, top five play of the week that is huge. Bring it to 5-5. Five, five. Rocker have seeded the potential for a victory here in this round 11. Can and they push it over the line? Yeah, default call from Ultra 2. Smokes out, going straight back over towards B. Slight difference in the setup, but accuracy. Two players already right next to him, hunting him down. He's 40 HP, running for his life, and can't get it done. Envoy, first blood. Such a huge first buzz open up. Clinics are going to be in a great position as well. All they want now, Ultra, is this bomb down. They are desperate for it, but not losing a member. Envoy commits. 
You can see here Vivid is the closest player. The rest are on the flank. And look at this flank fight too. Doesn't check the corner. Insight puts himself in the deepest corner imaginable. And now Awakening in between a few different players. But Awakening might just want to wait for Insight. In the meantime, that bomb, that time is just ticking. 27 seconds. Rocker got to fly. Envoy might be caught here. The timing, I think it's just gone wrong for him. And he is going to go down. Two versus two. 19 seconds left on the clock. Kleenex going to have to check this bomb for a second. Finds him. Guns him. Vivid's going to go down at one versus one. He will not check this bomb till 7.5. Awakening has to commit. That's all he can do as Kleenex will fly out the window. Sees him. Guns him. And it's done. The streak continues. Nine for Toronto Ultra. And it's all about that first play. Accuracy just got mobbed. Yeah, and not even that though, like accuracy might fall for the first blood, but like you had two players on the flank right there, able to isolate insight and insight just follows up and makes the better play. He goes to the trenches of his spawn. And that's a situation where whatever play for Rocker, if they check the other corner and catch insight, you got a 3v3, you got pressure on the flank. The opportunity to clutch that round is absolutely there, but they got the first blood, they got the bomb down and insight always making those heads up plays. So that is one of the better S and Ds. I think almost certainly we have seen this year, both teams making those high level plays, but I think ultra literally just two different rounds where they were just ever so slightly coming out on front. Not just the round 11, but again, that 2v2. I think it was Envoy and Scrap, it might have been, that clutched up around the A site completely on point. And it really was. I'm going to give a, kind of a shout out to Scrap as well, putting the damage down. I saw him every time, was frying with a laser. Just didn't have the kills to go for it, but 2,700 damage is nothing to be sniffed at. Ultra continue their win. Not dominant, but at least enough for the W. We're going to find out how the rest of this series goes, though. Do Rocker have it in them to do what many would think impossible? Can they bring it back into this game, get a potential reverse sweep? Or is it still the rampaging ultra to continue their dominance in the CDL so far this season? We'll find out all those answers and more right after this. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We are live and back once again with Minnesota Rocker versus Toronto Ultra. So far, Ultra have blown Rocker out of the water on the hard points, but a very close round 11 also went their way. Iced up from Ultra, but Rocker, can they do what many people now think is impossible and take Ultra down? Well, I mean, in a reverse league fashion, that would certainly be a spectacle. I mean, gotta say, Rocker have been playing some very good Call of Duty on the day, just a little bit behind Ultra. Again, best team in the world right now. They won champs, or not champs, rather, the major one <laughs> championship. There you go. He's giving no, no, no. Hey, no, I didn't write it this year. I, I got it was two <laughs> years ago. It's on rotation, Bryce. Oh, fair enough. Well, when we get a copy of that, we'll let you know. But right now, it's all about this man, Scrap. KD through the roof, damage everywhere. And he's looking to do this again. Let's find out just how strong Ultra really are as they go against Rocker in the control. Hey, do you want to see gunfights? you want to see a lot of damage you get? This is the man to watch. There, no secrets about it. Constantly going to be in the mix. And well, obviously, Ego, Chow, or just get red. Accuracy, playing for the distant, deep angle. Able to get those first few kills. And Rocker, as far as opening breaks go, that's what you want. Clean shots the way out of Envoy. Trying to keep the map under control, but trades out and about for both of these squads. Ultra just now stepping on that A zone. Lex just cleaning up the street as well, and I think he might make a little bit of a move here. It's a very common tactic for most of these teams. Get some time on to wait. Maybe start working the B a little bit. Ultra actually aren't moving, though. Nah, I mean, Ultra just have the setup that they want. They know a lot of pressure's coming through on the flank. Kleenex is making sure his teammate doesn't get shot in the side from up top while he's capturing the zone. So they're trying to read the pressure, but Linz is the pressure. He's able to pick up two and even work in the flank. Linz is frying in this moment. Hell of a way to start this Karachi. Oh boy, he's actually just giving them a gap to escape, though. I think they were trying to lock that one in. Phoenix will get Linz taking him out. You are right, Linz is really playing out of his skin, but is it going to be enough? Inside 0 and 2 so far, looking for Vivid. The pistol isn't going to work out for him. He's going to go down as well. Rocker doing a great job here to hold them off. Yeah, they're everywhere for the moment. Top three controls, the one thing they don't have, but they might at least be able to take it away from Ultra. Nice gunfight wins coming through over from the red section of the map. And I mean, 25 seconds left. If you're Rocker, you don't want to necessarily overcommit any of these fights. Might have the chalk up day, but certainly want to keep the pressure up and keep these kills flowing. Ultra feeling the pressure really out of their spawn. They're constantly dealing with more players. You even got Vivid again, sort of that like factory line system. Someone always from Rocker going to be over towards Junk, blocking these spawns, pushing him further away. And that's a sort of a long term investment. You actually see on the minimap, Envoy just wraps so far back to clear him out. So now those closer spawns from Ultra are going to be open. They can start making moves. Oh, he's fine one as well. Trying to get out of there. No, he's going to be traded as well. Scrap gets him. That's a couple of kills going down. Ultra have an opportunity. Accuracy trying to hold them off here. Clint is already going to be in the backfield. Looking for them. And actually does so much work there that he was in a great position. Holds it off. And now it's just the, the mixing his time right around the zone. Kleenex has been alive for such a long time. Regens on regens. Can't get number two. It looks like his teammates, again, not even entirely getting those close junk spawns. That's something about this map that I have no understanding of, of why they're still spawning Coop from Ultra, even when they've cleared out the junk side. I would love if a coach or someone could explain that to me, because I simply do not know. But Rocker taking full advantage right now. Only three players from Ultra up working this B hit. Here comes the headbutt. Rocker just going to hold this off. That's all they've got to do. Envoy going to try and get through into this, but the trades have not been in their favor. And now he's weak. One last roll of the dice. Everyone from Ultra, everyone from Rocker. Into the point, into the fire, into the fury. But it's all Rocker in the kill feed. Phoenix will get in and stop this for a second, but he can't do too much more. And down he falls as they drip feed through, but it's all Minnesota. And that is a great setup out of Minnesota as well. That's a very tight setup around Diner. Like all four players within touching distance of the zone. And I mean, that's just well orchestrated, reading the pressure of like, hey, no one's going to be going on these full flanks. They don't have enough time. We know everybody's off spawn. Stick together and make sure we get these trades. And again, nice job by Minnesota. No overcommitments. No one you go chowling and dying at an inopportune time. And Linz has still been on point as well. That kid can shoot. Yeah. Just crazy accuracy. Also, just playing a wonderful role, holding them off completely. 
but here we go. It's not about that first round. It's about the second one. If Rocket can get it, he'll be in a fantastic position for this control. That really is a question for the first blood. Or maybe not the first blood, rather, but the first kill. Accuracy from the power position as well. Talk about a gunfight. Does Envoy go for the cruise missile guy or the guy in time? Gets the guy in time, reads accuracy, and no oh. cruise for him. No <laughs> trades to be found. Envoy, yep, doing a, a little bit of overtime right now. So I just kill everybody looking for Awakening! <laughs> as well. Unbelievable shooting there in the end. And pressure now mounting onto Minnesota, trying to get out of that spawn. They are spawning them all the way into market. Envoy, I think, has known that this is what has happened. Looking for the players. The player is going to be a bridge already. He's going to be caught out by accuracy. For Rocker, a great recovery. Getting players in the positions they need to to break back open A. Yeah, and Ultra, by the way, falling for the same question that I don't have answered. I don't know how to tell you when a team is going to spawn all the way in the back or when they're going to actually spawn out towards Coop. It's incredibly difficult to read. Ultra miss it in that moment. So Minnesota get a bit of a deeper spawn, able to work up towards the A zone and get it captured. So certainly a pain point of a moment, but now they have stabilized right back to the 50-50 moments. And great news, they're finally trading out on Boy. They've got him and they've managed to get some control here. Kleenex is behind them. I think they're looking for him as well. And Vivid, yeah, they're going to work. Linz and Vivid are going to go clear the back lines. They've done exactly that. Moving up, that's another trade going forward. Rocker in a great place. Inside an envoy, though. Hold them off. Devastating to their push. Yeah, again, the, the step one was nice, but then they get moved a little bit too fast. They got the right kills, but then instead of working together for the next set, Players end up just solo challing and dying. So an opportunity gets quelled. And now Ultra, a tight setup of their own. It's going to be Scrap watching the flank. Everybody else pushed up in red, but accuracy does strike first. Scrap just got to wait this. This is all patience for him. And with that spawn come through, the cod timing wow. for Linz is godlike. Unbelievable. The split second. He breaks through. He stops the clock. He causes the issues for Ultra. And now Rocker have an opportunity. And he's just buying his time or his team so much time to get in position. He has two players nearby him for the moment. Kleenex might be the first guy in action, but he's by himself for the moment. Ultra might only have one good chance at this break. Awakening oh, just holding them off here. They've got a couple, but it's still ticking through. That second take is in. They're looking for the third. Kleenex will find one. Linz flying out the hero from before, looking for Envoy, dancing around. He's been stunned. He's still alive. They've got to get bodies onto him to take him down. That's a great retake, though. You do get two ticks over towards B, but Ultra, again, putting in that overtime work to stop that push. And now, again, you're just dancing around the hill. Kleenex has to be getting spotted through these windows, somehow still out with his life, and he somehow turns it into a kill in the chaos. Kleenex like to reign supreme. Awakening now that last man standing, but the close spawns are coming through for Minnesota, so it's an 8v7 on the life count. You can win this one of two ways. Insight, now gonna try and fire a dozen different directions. They're trying to get over the wall. Clinics here towards the back. They're into the point, the lights have stopped. Clinics will clean it up as well though. Just dancing around, frying every way he can aim. One last body in here, accuracy again for the clog stop. Will fall, and now Lin's outnumbered. Finds the first, not the second. And it's close for Rocker, but not enough. Two ticks is the silver lining. Yeah, a little too fast for their britches, I think, in that round. There's not a lot of opportunities you can get uh, to win these offenses on Karachi. And they came close a few different times, but I think just a few moments where they were a little too fast. Ultra a little bit more patient and just delivered towards the end. But again, that's a nail-biter of a round. A similar story to the search and destroy on Karachi. These are two teams that are absolutely getting after it and really forcing each other to be at their best. Well, for Rocket, an advantage technically as we go into this round. What can they do? Ultra will want to win this, want to take that advantage as far away as possible, but we will see. Straight into eight. Pretty standard setup for them. Nothing too elaborate. That opening salvo, that's a big gunfight win there from Vivid. Trades, though, rolling all the way through. Looks like Vivid might be... No, he got dropped as well. One more player underneath. That's number two accuracy. And well, he actually gets the two-piece as well. So Rocker can keep the pressure up towards A. Keep playing for these kills. Keep going for the power positions. You get top third. You get pressure over towards red. Ultra might have to regroup and maybe even go for a B hit when they're getting these close spawns. Scrap on his way out. And his teammates are getting a few of these kills, but he's getting tagged up along the way. Rocker certainly know where the pressure is going to be. 
Scrap's gonna have to shoot too many different directions. This is too much timing for him. Doesn't really have anybody with him, but finds the first. Surely not the second. Pistol banging to the door as his teammates come flying in to save his life. They know he's gonna be in here awakening. He'll get that kill on board for the trade. And all teams just throwing bodies at the point. And Ultra, they're silver lining here as they got underway and got some timing down. Yeah, Scrap out there doing just that extra damage to buy his team the time. But again, those B uh, hits are never going to be easy. So Ultra does regroup, but at least bought themselves pressure to capture A, should be able to get it done. Envoy seals the deal with that final gunfight. Now you at least have that control, and maybe more importantly for Ultra, they're getting those closer junk side spawns, but accuracy with one HP, trying to take it from them, being very annoying. The kills flowing through, accuracy up top, gets the big two. 22 and 16, by the way, so old man still got it. Over <laughs> by Junkyard, pushing him back. It's not just the quantity he killed, it's the quality. He's been doing so much work for them. Look at him. Just will not fall, will not go down. Just throwing bullets like a lead hail at the players in the spawn. Eventually he'll get scrap. Nobody left on that side of the map for him now, but reads it correctly. Envoy, hello. Dude, that is so clean. I mean, that is the, the veteran style awareness as well. The comms are right now for the team are on point and you at least get the trade on Envoy. You know, nobody's working through drunk. Everybody's spawning up in the back spawn. It is mid and coop that you're dealing with. And I mean, Awakening able to call out two have gotten through. Scrap makes it through, but he gets caught as well. Rocker super heads up right now on this defensive round. And they're looking for the player in the spawn. They've got them all the way towards the back. This game rests on these next few trades. Rocket know they have players in the back. They know they have players off spawn. Awakening is waiting for them. Envoy will find him with a little bit of timing. Still a player towards the back here. Envoy might try to get into this point to drag some of these players away because Rocker are putting Ultra in the blender. Yeah, but Envoy's just by himself. And again, it's those coop side spawns coming through. So Vivid might be the player that has to be aware to actually wrap back and help his teammate out and Awakening might need the help so yeah envoy wins the gunfight and envoy is dragging so many players back this direction but uh, he might have bought you a little bit of pressure you just simply do not have the lives that is a blender of a round that rocker execute to perfection and by the way that final kill from top red there for accuracy that was number seven in a row he's got a cruise makes sense he is shooting not a pull up missed not an opportunity wasted. Rocker, I'm going to say this at this point, are looking like the better control team. I'm not going to say that. That's all you, Bryce, but they are playing very well. <laughs> uh, you got to tip the cap again. Basically, this entire series, maybe a little bit less so in the hard point, but Rocker have been playing super clean Call of Duty. Uh, they absolutely pushed Ultra in the search and destroy, just barely came out behind, and um, they are pushing them once again. You have a cruise missile on control on a map like this. It could be devastating. Rocker, the opportunity is absolutely here. But love the clean X, but Linz gets it straight back as well. Accuracy will find another one into the kill feed already on 27. And they're into this eight point. Accuracy just overwatch insight was waiting for him. And now it all goes down to a bit of a stalemate. Ultra, they don't want to commit too heavily to this, but they are slowly but surely making the kills go through. They fling them off eight. Do they activate the blender? Uh, yeah, I was about to say, you just have to do anything you can to get out of this spawn trap and accuracy doing exactly that, taking a bit of a longer route, making sure you at least alleviate that top third pressure, but you also have Envoy that's in chunk. The top third pressure is back and gone again. Lynn's keeping under control. Envoy, though, has almost been handling these players right now, doing so much damage, slowing the pace down so much, but great news for Rocker. They're getting kills on the flip side, so Envoy is only a nuisance. He has been dealt with. The third tick on A, nearly gone. I think Kleenex not going to be able to make that hero play, or maybe only the two-piece does the damage, but A zone is secure. And there's still so much to play here for Rocker. I think they have the advantage in ticks. Maybe if they get one more, it'll be guaranteed. But Linz doing everything he can. He doesn't want to do this. He wants to go all the way to the end. He's going to just kill oh, here everybody. We go. They threw the point on Void, last alive. Two now into this as well. Bullets thrown into Linz, but he isn't going to go down. Envoy on the flank is going to fall as well. They're going to have to jump over the wall. It's a horrible place, but somehow they make the kills. Awakening now has to back up his teammate. That is a ridiculous retake. 
And then again, those are one of those moments where, well, actually, a team kill comes through. So maybe Rocker could just keep up the pressure. No time to break anything down. They have made it back to the point already. Great nades out of lens, but too many directions to look in Ultra in this tight setup. So far, holding it down. Great deal of damage on the outset, but Scrap wins a big one. Ultra clinging on for dear life. Looking for an accuracy though, in here with the rival knight. Still stopping the clock, still keeping the pressure up, still making Ultra dance to their beat of the drum. There are players everywhere. Accuracy says thank you very much, I'll watch for. They've got bodies all over it. Looking for these next kills, and that might be it for Rocker. They've oh, got this is, three, oh they've cleaned God. house, and it is done. The Minnesota Rocker out here playing with their chest. Not, you don't even need to call the crews. You're just bullying them out towards the end and applying the pressure. That is insanely good call of duty. And again, the Des did highlight it. Two of the best teams on Karachi uh, control, at least in the game, and showing off the goods there. Minnesota Rocker keeping this series alive. And again, they are absolutely fighting as well. The Search and Destroy in control, uh, two of the better maps we have seen so far this year. And you got to tip the cap to accuracy. 30 bomb on their heads, 5,500 damage as well. And um, you see what's happened on the flip side there. Insight struggling just a little bit. Scrap and him both go negative. So right there, Minnesota Rocker really able to apply that pressure. And I said it, they just looked like the better control team. At that point, they were finding more important kills over and over again even wizard stuff like we see here from envoy was not enough and it really is just going to be a highlight reel of what i mean it feels like there were so many different situations where envoy was almost on an island doing everything he can fighting for his life to buy his teammates the time to get back in the mix so uh, envoy did play outstandingly well but I mean, Rocker, again, just a little bit too much towards the end. And even for the one round that Minnesota Rocker lost, they were still creating some very strong opportunities to actually win one of their offensive rounds just a, a little bit too far behind. So I would say, I mean, Minnesota Rocker, by the looks of it, have continued to level up their game. It was a very slow start for them, but come major time, they looked a lot better. And so far in this series, playing a super clean game. Wow. With the end of the control, beckons in hard point though. 14 wins in a row for Ultra. What does that spell for Rocker Chance? Uh, well, that spells bad news, but maybe good news <laughs> is it's the brand new map. It's Rio hard point. It is an absolute mix fest on this map. And we already know Ultra a bit of a known quantity. They've rocked the three sub setup. We've seen Scrap use it the entire time when they played against Miami Heretics. They did look good. So I think we know and we expect Ultra, not only best hard point team in the game, but new maps. They're happy to expand that pool. Plan for the long game, Minnesota Rocker. It is a question mark. How successful are they going to be? And I would imagine it's going to be a big wake on that third sub. Or maybe they go for the 2-2 setup. Rocker might have a different idea entirely about how they want to play it. That's why the new map is going to be exciting, just to see what the new teams can do. Yeah, I agree. Realistically, Rio coming in the rotation. I am not going to say breath of fresh air, but certainly an octane-fueled yes. map. It is headbutting the entire way through, and it has up the pace. I do think that the teams are going to commit to at least a three-rival setup all the way through, though. It's basically been the meta for everybody so far, and that's why we see the interactions go the way they do. Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, it is... Uh, it is Personally, my favorite map by a mile. I love Rio Hardpoint. I'm incredibly excited to see it in Rio Search. Also, as you pointed out, breath of fresh air. So I'm loving the new maps we have in the CDL. And again, ultra known quantity, best hardpoint team in the game. They've already had success on Rio. Uh, it's going to be a question on the flip side. But I mean, ultra, obviously, as you pointed out, I really don't know where it stops or like who's going to be that first team to finally take him down in hard point because again they've already secured that hard point record they're already starting to bump that number up just a little bit and I mean, whether you're talking about the team or individuals everything is out of control i mean scrap stats as pointed out basically as often as we can are completely bonkers they really are a little bit quiet in that last one but in hard point just a monster because about 10 minutes that's 24 damage for 10 minutes four and 1815 he has been the man to watch for many in this not just because of how good he is with a gun but also that mouth uh, well <laughs> <laughs> no. all righty real hard point let's get into it 
Uh, by the way, Bryce, I don't know if you caught it, but uh, Scrap is the leader in all four of those statistical categories that we just showed. And I'd say one of the most impressive things for Ultra, the assist. Scrap might be number one with the 10.4 assists per hard point. But there is one time where Ultra, like all four players, were in the top 10. So again, their teamwork is insane on top of the fact that they have that individual talent. Obviously, a map like Rio, you already know the trades and teamwork need to be out of control because there's a lot that's going to be happening. Well, into the fight. It is going to be P1 between these two, and it's going to be interesting to see the square up. Everybody choosing to play this realistically from the pros at the moment. And it's flown into the rotation, and everybody wants to go for it. Baraka feeling good as they get that first bit of time. Yeah, and there you see Demon Joe on that third SMG as well. So that's that first question answered. And keep in mind for the players in Minnesota Rocker, Vivid has not only been like the most accurate player in the league for the past few years, but he is an engagement warlord. So this is the type of map that Vivid is just going to love, try to feast on and maybe get four, make it five in a row. Again, this might just be Vivid at his absolute best. Now going to work over and over and over again. This P2 will be telling for Ultra a chance to stop the bleeding. Vivid's actually going to be calling the crew straight away. Not expecting this off the first hill, but he's got it. And this completely breaks down the setup. They now all have to run. They are losing perfect. kills. That is three down. Rocker go back to back on the points. That is absolutely perfect. That is getting everybody quiet in the comms. Call out where the players are going to be. Easy gunfight wins. And then the third one, just the cherry on top. Nice little corner there from Lins, getting some errant kills, looking for some trades as well. Last man standing from Ultra, gonna be Scrap. I want to take his time and wait for the teammates, but I'm just kidding. It's Scrap. He's challenged, and he's gonna get that time. I need to get this back as well. Starting to get some points onto it. The trophy's doing a lot of work into this overtime, and you can see pressure coming through. Scrap having to be a bit quiet. Just stay still, stay down. He will fall eventually, and that means there's nobody on the point now for Ultra. It's a big moment too, just to try to get that little bit of extra scrap. I think Rocker happy to strip away maybe an extra 10 to 15 seconds and make sure you kick that lead up because we are going into, at least in my opinion, the closest thing you're going to get to a money hill on Rio. Ultra right now spawning on the right side. If they start losing these opening gunfights, they are going to spawn across the map. It can be devastating, but little moments like that from scrap by your team. So much pressure. Ultra now flooding through the top. Look at all the bodies just fly through, but Rocker... They find it. Wow. Put a stop to it. Lens accuracy and Vivid all combining to shut them down completely. Get to the other side of the map. Get to the respawn and try again. And that's what I'm saying. It is such a distant spawn and Vivid's already gotten you the information. Only one player through the left. They're going to just be so far away from the chows. Everything else through mid. Got to make sure you get these trades and it is set up and easy there from Rocker. Closest thing to a money hill. You get a four man white. You turn it into maybe not a full 60, but still maybe 45 or 50 seconds of time to collect that is a beautiful hill for minnesota and honestly trying to keep that pressure going hill still flowing their way vivid 10 and 4 by the way hasn't really slowed down since the opening break but you do see ultra and feisty they don't want to give away even the final 10 seconds they'll fight for that scrap as we finally break over towards new we kind of put this as the underdog of minnesota rocker but they have looked very good throughout this series and they are looking great once again Oh, Scrap just made the play. Sorry, not to cut you off. Scrap, I think, just let maybe one player run past him that he got the eyes on. So he's going on the flank. Shooting player number one in the back. Shooting player number two in the back. He can't quite get it. Rocker actually end up dealing with the chaos. So high IQ play out of Scrap, but it does get stuff. Rocker still holding on. Clinix trying to find everything he can here as they fall further behind. And they eventually will get on this point. It has been mixing so far, and it's not working out from Ultra. They've got to hit a new level of pace to try to keep up with what Rocker are doing. I mean, yeah, it's just a gauntlet of the map, right? Even when you're making like these flank style plays, it's just one player can burst in, make a two piece and just turn any given hill on its head. So pop off potential always going to be there. But now on that rotation, scrap for the moment, the lone man trying to hold it down. His teammates have some pressure over towards the middle of the map, but they're going to lose the stairs. And if you don't have stairs in mid control, it makes getting that time that much more difficult. Envoy up top, again, just going to be a thorn in their side. Something Rocker constantly have to deal with, waiting for these players to jump over. They're going to know he's here as well. Goes for the commit, he finds one, looks for the second, not going to get it. Accuracy just holding his lane as he needs to. Inside coming in with the AR as well. Both teams headbutting. This is huge for Ultra. They can turn this game around if they continue to put this kind of pressure on. Yes, absolutely a hill where you can get, maybe not a money hill, but a decent chunk of time if you get the setup, which Ultra currently do have. 
flying out towards the front. Scrap two, maybe not so easy ones for him, but they weren't shooting back, so gets it in the end. Final 20 seconds on this hill. You are getting absolutely nothing. Scrap just simply pushing you too far away. And what an insane map we have so far. Rocker have played so many hills so well, but one good one like that and Ultra are right back in the game. That's scrap time. Just going to go away from them there, but doesn't matter. Back to P1, a 20-point game. It was running away from Ultra, but Rocker still have the leaders next to the rotations and they have the hill, but they got so much time last time. And still trying to keep these players pinned back. Ultra certainly want this break. Kleenex sort of getting that entry killed. Nades rolling through as well. And boom, four-man wipe. Ultra do it perfectly. And the question is, can you read these spawns? You just got two on both sides, but I think Rocker might be heads up for it. Scrap at least dealing with the first two. And Envoy ready for the other set. So even when some chaos splits come through, Ultra always handling their business. That was disgusting from Envoy. Just slapped them both down. Now we go over the P2. They're still putting the pressure on. They are going to take the lead here on P1. Oh, yeah. And with this P2 rotation, Rocker have not got a lot of points in a lot of time. I mean, that's like the map flipping on its head in that moment. Not just to get the four-man wipe on P1, but to read the split spawns coming in after that might be the moment of the game. Effectively tied up going in over towards new. Ultra, they're going to be in control of the hill first. Rocker putting so much pressure on the flank, though. It's going to be two players trying to work on by while Accuracy tries to work through the front. And Ultra still have this setup. You see the nades rolling through to get these kills, and they clear out the flank. All guns forward. Uh, big push there coming through as well. Rocker. Now going to be fighting from all one direction. Nades going to be flowing like water. Scrap flies away. Saves the life with his life as well. They can't deal with him. Someone's going to go for the chow eventually. But bullets just flying down for this hill as well. It's always mixing onto this one. But Ultra have the hold. And there's so many of these hills where there's like conditions. Like you can get a good chunk of time if you do certain things right until accuracy does the better thing and just drops three of you. Picks up a big three-piece. Rocker back in control of the hill. And even on the rotation, Awakening is already pushed out like over towards Catwalk. Again, setting up around the P3. I mean, it was a hill last go around where Minnesota Rocker, maybe not quite the full 60, but put themselves in prime position. And Bryce, they are here once again. Well, Minnesota Rocker are locked in. So let's lock in with them for Minnesota Rocker. Listen in. Make a push, make a push, make a push. One more week, we can't we I'm um, boys weak. Shoot, shoot, shoot They're back, both shoot there. Back. All three there. Yeah. One's gonna be mid. No, no, no. One back here. We're good. Give me boxes. Boxes, 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 He's uh, going to, um, in the front door. Lay down in the door. Like the okay, okay, okay. Your side time. Go. I'm gonna try using it. Nice, nice. Go, go, go. I'm, I'm gonna try cross boxes. I'm gonna try cross. Easy garage ready. Easy garage ready. We're not finished already. Yeah. I'm using garage. Oh, hit me, hit me, bridge, hit me, bridge. I'll pop up. Dead. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna use boxes. I'm gonna throw my tanks at the sky boxes, bro. Or fucking garage. I didn't. Yo, I'm they're just saying. They're double. They're double now. They're double now. One boxes. No, boxes. he's on the forklift. On the forklift on blade. Banana, banana, banana. Banana, banana forklift. Banana. Drop. Boxes weak, boxes weak. Nice. One was forklift. Nice. Forklift in hill, forklift in hill for sure. Let's achieve. Let's achieve. Behind you, Joe. Behind you, Joe. I'm gonna come box with you. You shoot out, Tom. Yeah. Dead, dead. It's our boy, our boy. Our boy's in rush. Gabba, that's in him. Gabba, that's in him. I sent him, I sent him. I sent him. I sent him. I'm pushing him. Ram, 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 ram. Dead. Grunt. Nice. Nice job. Banana, banana. I'm playing side. I'm playing side. Quick banana. Banana, so banana, so. He's on the jeep. On the jeep. I'm playing side. Ram, 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 ram. Rocker, perfect comms, perfect callouts, perfect everything so far. They are winning this game. Toronto Ultra might lose this. Yeah, this is an absolute bang out of a map too. Accuracy again, by the way, getting nearly streaked out. He has been a force with the MCW on this map. And in the meantime, it is rotation over towards the catwalk. This is one of the few hills where Ultra had the most success. And now they're getting the first two entry kills. Lens though, talk about a route and a half to go deep on the flank, but it does get snipped out in sight, trying to close that door. But it's a two front war. You got pressure on both sides. So Ultra, only three guns up, two directions to look. They might might not be able to get it done because it looks like the pressure from Rocker enough to at least overwhelm to get them off the time until they slam you, get the four down, and take it right back. 
<laughs> against most teams, they crumble, but not against Ultra. Still holding on, still trying to get every bit of point from this. Envoy about to hit the flank, finds Linz as well. That's caused issues for Rock Up. They now have to go back and find him before they can make this push. Yeah, and Envoy's telling his team, hey, everyone look forward. I've got mid. They were looking forward, and they just simply lost the gunfights. Awakening scorches through, picks up two, 10 seconds away. Rocker win this game. Here we go. This might be it. This might be it completely over. Now the bodies are falling. Ultra are falling. Scrap finds one, but it's not going to be enough. The bodies are going, and the streak is eliminated. It will be Rocker taking this to a Mac 5. They took down the Titans of hard points, and now they have to get one more map for that sweet win. But they have done so much work already. Dude, they broke the streak. That is tippable, and dude, Accuracy genuinely might be like the most criticized player in the league. Maybe there's a scaling thing here. I'm sure it's like optic players typically, but outside of that, everybody's always on accuracy's back. For years, it's been like this. He has been balling out as of recently. Like some of the maps he was having at the major were incredible. And now look at him, 27 kills, main slayer in the lobby, most damage done. That is double digit assists for every single player on Minnesota Rocker. The listening was clean. It was very clear. They knew where the spawns were going to be. They knew where the players were laying down. That is efficient, well-oiled gameplay. And again, that main AR lighting up the kill feed like that. Accuracy feasting with the MCW. Just having a great time there in the end. And he has had an incredible series. But let's face it, the series has been incredible the entire way through. Rocker have looked good against the number one team in the CDL and now have an opportunity to take them down completely. I mean, that's it. That's your setup right there. Like it is absolutely feasible for these guys to get it done. And we obviously saw in that first uh, S and D a nail bite around 11. Both teams playing incredibly well, but we're almost to like the endurance section of like, you have to keep the comms on point. Everybody's got to be gunned up for the map five. And I mean, I know ultra playing in front of the home crowd. If they were to get reverse sweeps, it would be devastating Bryce. It certainly will. Well, we'll have to find out if this is how fairy tales are made. Rocker, underdogs no more. They can take this with one more map. The last S&D was close. This one may be magical. But don't go anywhere. We'll see you right after this for more Call of Duty League action after the break. up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store upgrade your game with the scuff the official controller of the call of duty league
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. There is a wonderful production team doing everything they can to keep this running smooth and excellent, while also smelling like roses and looking like superstars. But speaking of superstars, we have the game underway for you. Chance, stop laughing at everything I say. You're just a funny guy, Bryce. I don't know what to tell you. Smelling like roses. I love how you can tell that thing. But yes, wonderful people. Uh, everyone putting in the absolute overtime work for these moments. Because as you pointed out, we do have a game five. Minnesota Rocker stocks right now at an all-time high. Well, let's see. They do this. It'll certainly be something to talk about already. The stock has risen. They've looked good everywhere so far. And on the road to Miami, that's what you want. For Ultra, they don't want to drop another one. They've been so confident recently. They want to keep riding that momentum. And look, make no mistake, this would be what, the fourth or maybe fifth reverse sweep that we have seen this entire year. And typically the teams that have been getting reverse sweeped, uh, we sort of dagger and talk about how they're not looking good. This is Toronto Ultra we're talking about back against the wall. But good news is Insight, when his back against the wall, you can see the number of clutches he has in the 1v2s. His 1v1s are also out of control. Uh, so he is the man to deal with in the clutch because in Search and Destroy, there is no question. There is no real debate. I don't think he's been the best search player in the game. His performance in Major 1 was beyond outstanding. So uh, certainly a nice weapon to have on your roster for a Game 5 when you're trying to kill that reverse sweep potential. But I got to say on the flip side, accuracy has been shooting. I mean, maps 3 and map 4, maybe not complete takeover performances, but he was outstanding. So inside accuracy might be having a, uh, a bit of a battle here on Invasion. A ton of long range fights gonna ring out. Well, let's see. Rocker have an opportunity to just kick off an incredible storyline for them on the run to Miami, all on the back of accuracy. And he is grading game five's chance. This is what they need. The absolute ice, ready to take down Ultra. Yeah, I mean, just super solid, super consistent, like the 1.18 KD. You see what the KD number actually is. If you're wondering about the kills per round, 0.77, it's like roughly the league average per round. So again, very consistent player. He's a man that on invasion, he's going to have his spot. You know where he's going to be. You know how to deal with him. But of course, on the flip side, for his teammates, you also know where he's going to be. So it makes everything easier for you. You get a level of consistency from that main AR where you're always knowing at any given situation what he's going to be watching, what he has for you, and what the types of plays and routes that you can take and make are going to be. So again, very well orchestrated team get to test their game five ice and i mean we didn't even like set it up this way but this is revenge against ultra from major one ultra took him down in a 3-0 fashion so i know there's been a lot of revenge early on so far throughout this like qualifying stage just take a look at the last time they played again 3-0 fashion but fairly close game and i mean it's been nearly the exact same story just with more minnesota rocker wins nail biters the whole way through wow Rocker have a chance to put them down. They've only lost one so far this season, Ultra. Could this be the second? The hard point record has already fallen. The S&D one was just building. Does it end before it begins? It looks like some furious team talk going in there in the Ultra camp. Yeah, I mean, apparently by the looks of it, something to do with the audio of Scrap by the sounds of it. He's touching his headset, so it seems like a, a fairly easy guess, but they are obviously diligently working on it as quickly as they can to get the map five loaded up and ready to go. And maybe just time to ice things over for Minnesota Rocker to make sure, again, got to keep the focus. This has been a, uh, a pretty extended series, one of the longer ones we've had in the CDL. Game fives have been not they never happen, but some one of a rarity that we have had a ton of 3-0 so far this year. Maybe only again, four reverse sweeps that we have had a potential for another one now, but not easy for either of the teams to deal with. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people had a potential reverse sweep by Rocker against Ultra on the cards. Uh, Going to give a credit to Nameless though before we go to a quick break. He did say this would go the distance and so far it has. But join us after this for map five where we get this audio issue sorted out. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in just a few minutes. behind a few players so there's a freebie kill for him and he touches the ground all players everywhere close left 
slammed! Absolutely slammed! 1v2 and the ace is what's going to be the requirement. Fame at the very least going to oh spot him God. on the cross or give away the freebie. 1v1. Call of Duty timing at its finest. The 1v2 in ace for Linz. He finds two! Abizi somehow finds two! Can someone make it here in 10 seconds? Selim, there's one. The second. Slams in sight. Guns are there. The last man. Face somehow pull out a win there. Faze with a couple of key eliminations. Here comes Selium from the front. Can he? Oh! So maybe the last time. With 32 left on the clock, it's scrapped. It's it. He's trying to pierce it. He can't get it done. Ultra or your champions. Toronto Ultra. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. If you are just joining us, because maybe your friend has told you that there's a game going on, well, they'd be right. Ultra and Rocker are going the distance all the way through to our map number five. Rocker have just taken away the streak on Hardpoint that Ultra had held for quite some time. But can they push it one further chance? I mean, honestly, I do believe in them. I think they can because they've been playing outstanding Call of Duty. Again, the stocks for Minnesota right now have to be at an all-time high. They just got a top four placing, but I think the maybe common perception was like, okay, maybe overperforming because they did not show off that level of play throughout stage one. I think they're just answering the question of like, not only did they truly get better, but maybe have continued that stretch as well. These guys have been making plays. I mean, Linz right now might be the top candidate for rookie of the year. He has been a constant playmaker on the map on top of the fact that he does have some of those electric performances where he can have those takeover moments. So you get a playmaker SMG, you're gonna have an absolute field day and not just Linz the rookie, but I know for this team primarily, you were looking for the AR players to step up and accuracy has done exactly that. Like Awakening 2, don't get me wrong, but accuracy has simply been on another level but that's all for the setup that is only for the reverse sweep potential toronto ultra a team that is going to be you know killers when it comes to the game five to not let this happen they don't want that embarrassment in front of that little home crowd here we go all down to this ice in abundance for both teams but the pressure is now on almost feels like a grand final with the setup for these have been putting in but we will have to find out it was close on SD last time small differences make big points but here we go ultra on the attack to begin with rocker defending yeah and this is not a map by the way that either team has a great number of repetitions on but something you'll learn very quickly no trophies at the start of round number one that van does explode and rocker expose it immediately and you already have, I mean, Linz is just so far back in the map. Scrap is turning for the flank, but I don't know if they recognize just how much map control Rocker actually have. They're dominating 80% of it. Ultra are trapped in a tiny little section, and they're going to push this into some very difficult gunfights. Oh, he's going to find an accuracy. Throwing bullets down, but didn't get the kill. The problem now for Ultra, like you said, is no map control. They basically have to go for this, or they are going to lose members rotating around the map. Already, time has been burned. Accuracy is holding the door. And again, as soon as Accuracy feels that pressure, which with the smoke out, he might be making the call. That's when guys like Linz need to start getting active on the mini-map. So Ultra in a 3v4, running out of time, have to read the pressure on the flank and have to go for that bomb. There's just nowhere to go. 20 seconds and Ultra have a move inside. Taking bullets as well. Linz has been found and he will be taken down. But a three versus three with no time. Awakening coiled like a viper. He has everything here they go for. He looks for either side and doesn't get him. Gets taken down as well. How has this happened? The bomb is being planted and they are running for their lives. It has gone down as well. Ultra somehow staying in this game when all hope was lost. Oh, the flag for scrap. And they find a miracle on this map. That is a scam and a half Minnesota rocker. Not the ice you are looking for. That is unfortunate. Awakening, he just drops the ball. He panics a little bit, shoots just a little bit too soon without standing up. And 
I mean, you talk about a moment with no time left on the clock at all in ultra. Somehow get it done. Scrap for three in that round. Him and Insight making plays and Minnesota Rocker. That is a painful way to kick off game five. And here's your top five things that should not happen. 20 seconds on the clock, no map control, and they pull it out of the bag. Wow, what a way to start this one, Chance. Let's see what Rocker can do. And, you know, that's like a one percent or two of like, as soon as the first blood comes through, there's like a 10% chance of Ultra to win that round. By the time the clock is ticking down, it's it's one percent. There is only a very specific way for it to be possible. And, well, the dominoes fell or the cards fell into place. There's some metaphor here, but yeah, that is problematic. Now Rocker, not exactly feeling confident, spread the map, playing for picks. We already know Ultra is not the team to make mistakes. And this may come down to a bit of timing. Scrap has been found. The information is going to be there. They may put some bullets on him. They are getting everything going forward, but Scrap is not backing down from it. Eventually, will have to remove himself from the equation. And that's what? Two stuns and a grenade or two and some gunfights to try to deal with Scrap, and he still ends up getting the first blood. A technical trade, though, on the flip side of the map, so you do got a 3v3 time ticking down. Ultra still completely have eight under control, though, sliding out into easy gunfights. Not even making them work for it. Good news is you shut down Scrap. There is no cruise missile. Bad news, you have no momentum, and you're down 2-0. Well, Scrap is feeling very, very confident. And that is something that for every team in the CDL doesn't want to hear. And Rocker even more so. 2-0 to the good now, Toronto Ultra. And it's just the amount of confidence in waves. He was being pushed. Nades were flying at Scrap, and he still went for a challenge. And eventually did get out, but kept himself alive. Found more kills as well, Chance. I mean, yeah, he's playing on the tank with no trophy, and they couldn't even figure out a, a way to not even isolate him. Like, three different players getting the damage out. So, uh, you are exactly right. Scrap making the big plays. Again, no cruise missile, but he is still shooting. Go back to the opening salvo. No first bloods just yet. Accuracy as is tradition. Down by that tank over towards B. Insight looking to square up with him. Just keeping accuracy busy. Not a lot of work here for Ultra on the rest of it, but Insight now has Dark. So he's Awakening Cross. That will be called out to see if they can get him off the tank. Awakening goes back, but not a lot of movement. And this might be the call. You might hear some nades start to fall through potentially. Yeah, Envoy with the smoke, but they know where Awakening's gonna be. It doesn't mean he's easy to deal with. He's still dancing with his lifetime, still ticking down. The play, absolutely gonna be on this A site. Lins, nice little corner, but maybe obvious. And now he's got two directions to look. Awakening's gonna fall. Lin's gonna be in a pinch. Does his best work to try to get the second kill. Trying to stay alive. Can he bait this into extra kills for his teammates? Maybe eventually, or maybe not. Ultra, the coverage is still there. That is disgusting. Just difficult kills. Ultra somehow staying alive. You saw two players crawling along the deck trying to get out of it. Kleenex, slowest rolling ever, but insight to the rescue. Finds the first to save Kleenex's life and then finds the second. 3-0 and oh so far. And that's hilarious, too, because you saw Linz was doing the exact same thing, just laying down, desperate for his teammates to get in the mix, and they were doing the right thing in the moment, but Ultra just doing it a little bit better. I mean, that's been the story of the search and destroy, but I know Awakening definitely feeling the pain for the moment. 0-3, painful moment in round number one, got first blooded in the previous one as well. You want Big Wake to step it up. Got to shake it off that round one. Get back into this. They need him now more than ever. Rocket just throwing a few bullets down towards B. I think he come off worse than that engagement. We're going to try it again. Unfortunately, not going to have a good time. Yeah, and Accuracy definitely has the information on Insight playing over towards B, but I don't know if they've gotten the intel on Envoy as well. So if they end up spotting Insight on a different section of the map, it might be a little bit tricky to read where the pressure is going to be. Linz, though, has found himself in a nice spot, and he's got the information on Kleenex as well. Lin strikes for the first blood. Insight gets back down. Uh, look on the minimap. Envoy is somehow going to find Accuracy. Don't know how that happened. I thought Accuracy had the positioning on the minimap, but... Now they move forward, they're going to find Scrap as well. Scrap is going to fall. Advantage to Rocker in this round. And yeah, Gifford is awakening, has to get that bomb plant as well. Vivid half health, but Insight just going to reposition rather than fly at them. Him and Envoy working together for this 2v3. 
down. So he's going to see him again. Vivid, super weak. Stay down. Envoy's going to get one as well, though. Vivid now into the smoke. Envoy firing bullets, but the smoke's going to work against him. A two versus two with 29 seconds left. Inside, looking for Linz, but Linz wins the gunfight. Envoy at a one versus two. Time against him. Position against him. Surely there isn't a win here. Uh, you just want the kills. I think if you get the kills, you'll take the win in that regard. That's number five in a row. Maybe he can win the round because it's Envoy. Of course he can. World champ for the 1v2. Squeezing water out of a rock. And that is Ultra up 4-0 in devastation after devastation in all of these rounds. The Ice Factor. The Battle of the North. Ultra reigns supreme. We are witnessing a breakdown of epic proportions. What is going on? Shouldn't have won. Scrap knows it as well. I mean, this is genuinely like the third round out of four that they have had where their odds of winning are just straight up. They're just low, like less than 10%. They have to pull out some magic to make it happen. And I mean, honestly, it was the same thing in the first search and destroy of like, they're just some nail biter rounds, but ultra. I mean, just the clutch kings. I don't understand what I'm saying, and I apologize if I broke anyone's eardrums in that one, but Chance is right. This shouldn't happen. It shouldn't keep happening. Rock up. There is no ice. It is all melted. Envoy calling this in now. Information in Oh, no. For, I was going to say, Lenz was playing outside. He's forced indoors, awakening, nowhere to run. That's a freebie round. I mean, Rocker, we get a test there, 2v4, clutch potential, but I think we already know how this one's going to go. Well, maybe Vivid could be the hero they need. Into the smoke. They got away from him. Vivid for the chow, not going to happen. 5 0. Oh. Rocker has come to life in this map five and said hey maybe you're forgetting you're the number one ranked team for a reason yeah and look on the reverse sweep front like there's some teams where the reverse sweep kicks off you feel the pressure you start to break down a little bit nope all smiles on ultra again killer mentality when they're going into this map five absolutely no sweat on their brows it has just been a painful map and Rocker, I mean, such a long way to go if you want to even think about winning this series at this point. Six rounds in a row is going to be required. Near impossible. And Scrap just squaring up in the middle of the map. Happy to take the chow. Well, Rocker. Oh, easy reads too, I think. Yeah, freebie first blood. Hey, it's not over. Rocker, for this reverse week, we'll also need a full sail. The crazier things have happened. They are man down in this round, however. So I might get caught. Well, no, gets out of dodge. I was going to say one sort of spicy moment turns into bait just for Linz to go a little bit too far. Accuracy and awakening going to be the final two players to fall. An awakening, the last alive, trying for a one versus four. This has already been written into the stars. This has already been called. And down he falls in the end. An ultra flawless in map five. A bodying, a breakdown, a bullying, and a massacre. Rocker didn't even turn up. I mean, this is going to be the type of series, by the way, that might just dominate the top five plays. The number of clutches and ridiculous moments we had, not only in this map, but throughout the series, both teams were getting after it, but Matt Five, there is one story and one story only, and that is the clutch capability of Toronto Ultra. Insight has gotten a ton of that gas, and for good reason, but I mean, this map, round number one, Scrap was picking up three, the 1v2 Envoy had uh, in round four or five, whatever it was, that just icing on the cake for Envoy. Nine and two performance, gets the clutch, plays out of control, just the perfection with the cruise missile as well. Toronto simply in that final map could do absolutely no wrong. It just seemed, I don't know, maybe, I can't even explain it. I really can't. That was ridiculous in every step of the way. Things shouldn't happen. Things did. And now that'll be one of the ones that people talk about that Rocker could have just done better on realistically, Chance. What a game.
What a game indeed, but I think that's enough from me and you there, Bryce. I think we got the desk. Puck it. How you doing after that game? The prediction's on point. I'm doing so good, Chance. Still in first place. Feels great here on the desk. Um, 6-0 in a game five, but don't let that change your thoughts on this matchup here because Minnesota, they proved that they played Toronto better than anyone in Boston, anyone we've seen in recent qualifiers, the only team to take them to a game five in the last like seven matches. What is going on with this squad right now? Because Minnesota looked like a real threat up until invasion. Well, they break that they break that hard point streak, right? So Minnesota, not Minnesota, excuse me, Toronto Ultra goes on a 14 hard point win spree. That's pretty and good. Minnesota Rocker are able to take the Rio off of them. I don't know if that's a case of Toronto might be struggling on the new map or Minnesota might be able to add it to their map pool. Bryce said that the ice in Minnesota was melting. How'd it go down there? I mean, I think, uh, you know, matchup wise, these guys, if they continue to play each other, like, it's going to be similar to this. I just think the map pool that Minnesota has, I mean, it's, it's really good up against the Toronto Ultra. There's a lot of maps that they really like playing each other on, and now Rio being added to the mix. Minnesota looked very good on that map, but this just speaks, like, to the level that Toronto Ultra is at, especially in Search and Destroy. You could tell they really focused on that game mode, yeah. going up against another strong Karachi SD team. Just Things you can't emulate unless you have a championship caliber squad. I mean, you're clutching rounds, 2v2s with 0.2 seconds left on the clock. They were to get that defuse on Karachi SD, then 5-5 five, five situation. Like, you take it slow, you know exactly, exactly where accuracy likes to play, and you pick him apart. And then we get to this game five on Invasion, Surge, and Destroy. A map neither one of these teams have a ton of reps on. Look at how prepared Ultra was for if and when this map got into the map set. Perfectly executed every single round. You know what's kind of hilarious? Yeah. Using your missile on round five. Why not? I'm already on a six yeah, streak. I'm like, expecting to not? double up here. Yeah, no, why not? I'm, it was absolutely taking over. I mean, there were two situations specifically that there was just no reason Toronto Ultra Show won it. It was that round number one that really set the pace. I mean, Scrap just slammed three of them. He had absolutely no business. And then Envoy in the 1v2 diffuse. I remember looking at that and be like, oh, dang, like he only has 20 seconds. There's not much he can do here. And Pucka just yells, no, he clutches it. And then we just watch like the most insane clutch my envoy I've ever seen. You want to watch an it? Another clutch? Yeah. It's like, your scuff play of the game. Let's roll it up here. Round five. Check it out. Nameless, you were disgusted in the green room. So was the rock yeah. camp after this one. I mean, the damage is like done at this point in this map. It's like we're just laying it on even more and in this situation, right? Like this is, yeah, this, oh, this is round number one. Okay, so round number one, this is just an absolute breakdown. You're hoping Awakening can find some shots and take out the bomb carrier crossing over towards bomb. He misses, gets traded, and then they're in a situation where it's a two versus two. They just have no idea where Scrap is. The gap in dark is open. He hits it, find the kill. But that round, from Minnesota's perspective, you could tell the comms were just all over the place. They had no idea what Toronto was trying to do. All right, Wins had another great series. I think we should show some love to him. So are we are. worried about the chemistry? Because in the player cams, the players didn't look too happy at the end of the matchup. I mean, there's only so much you can talk about when you're down like 0 3 0 4 0 5 when it comes to search and destroy game number five. But I will say, if anything from Minnesota, like they're S and D, at least on map number two, like they were in a position to close it out. Like that round 11, they should have put more bodies onto the fire side of the map. I think they were just a little bit too one dimensional, but there's clearly some takeaways from this series. Top five seed looking more and more accurate for Minnesota, though, despite the loss. But it's Toronto now moving to 12 and one on the season. 13 matches, and the only loss was a beating by Boston in the Major One Qualifier. Scrap joins us live once again. And Scrap, apparently you're a very attractive man according to the chat. How you feeling after your dub? I mean, what can I say? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not attractive. Come on now. <laughs> it's skincare, bro. It's looking great on you. Exactly. Scrub, can you talk us through that round number one? Because that was a situation. Minnesota had everything going for them. What did you do in that round number one to give you that round to get those three people in the back? Uh, yeah, so obviously I think uh, Dylan got naded off the spawn. I'm pretty sure if I can remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think us was just like trying to work uh, Lamar on the bulldozer. You know, it's a pretty like godlike spot to be in. So, you know, we kind of took our time, uh, figured out the info. Um, and then obviously I turned around in DVD and saw Lin's pinching. Um, so I pretty much told Toby and uh, Jamie, you know, like stay alive. I can kill this kid. And then, you know, once we get to a 3 3, you know, it's 100 like we can probably win this. And, uh, you know, quick rotation to A. Them just, you know, a little fuck up from them, and yeah, it's a good round. To follow that up, uh, with Search and Strike for you guys, you take both of them in the series, you go to round 11, map number one. Was this just a lot of rod review, knowing how Minnesota Rocker plays, or was this you guys just, you know, showing your SD two dimensional? Yeah, um, I don't know, the Karachi 5 5, like, there's just so much you could do on the, you know, on the map. Um, and we played them so many times this year that, you know, we know what they do, they know what we do. So, you know, it's just kind of trying to find the gap that they don't know what we're going to do. 
Uh, but you know, it was a good uh, round five or round 11, whatever it was. Uh, Scrap, you know, after the championship, you come back and you're like, dude, we're just frying in everything. What is it that you guys are focusing on trying to improve? Because one would say, looking at the search, like Skid Row being taken out hurts you guys a little bit in terms of your map pool, but then Invasion pops up and it's a 6-0, so clearly some work has been done. Can you walk me through that? Yeah, um, you know, we put practice in every day, like most teams do, but, you know, I feel like what makes us different is, you know, sometimes, you know, this game can check you out mentally, um, but, you know, even though it can check you out mentally, you know, we don't let it, you know, we just keep going. You know, the game is the game, you can't really change it, and, you know, if you can, it's minimal, um, but, you know, it's pretty much just making sure we're on top of everything, make sure we're not getting complacent, and, uh, yeah, we're excited to come to Invader 2. Love it. Scrap, the chat is saying you look like a helicopter pilot. You make helicopter pilots look ugly, my guy. Tell me about the headset. Oh, no. Everyone's wondering, why do you have so many cords? Can you explain it to anyone who hasn't watched CDL before? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. So, um, this, these wire right here, you know, they're just earbuds in my ears right here. You know, obviously you see them. Um, but all this does is just help us with the mic, helps us with the crowd. Look, I'll even show you guys. I got the crowd here. You know what I mean? Like, rock sound canceling, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, we had a fun time today. That's what we wanted. Thank you so much, Scrap. He is the GOAT playing for Toronto Ultra, and he's only in his second year. I'm calling it now. Sorry, Crim6, you're driving cars. You can't keep beat with this kid no more. Appreciate it, thank you, have a good one. I can't hear you. It's too early to call him a go, but I really like that guy. He is definitely one of the best in the leagues and definitely one of the best personalities. Toronto, without a doubt, the best team in the league right now. What is putting them above the rest? It's just the fact that they don't have an obvious weakness right now. They have strengths in search and destroy. Their respawn is just literally disgusting, and their confidence looks like an all-time high. If you're looking for teams to try and catch up to Toronto, well, all, or sorry, Optic is on that short list, and we find out just how impressive they can play tonight as they face off against a brand new look from the LA Thieves. Stay tuned. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty Store in-game now. Congratulations, Chris Puckett, Esports Awards Lifetime Achievement Winner, Class of 2023. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's show. This weekend, we saw the top Call of Duty teams compete at the U.S. Championship held at Full Sail University. In a surprising turn of events, strictly business, the nine seed came out of nowhere to dominate the bracket, <laughs> defeating nine-time champions Complexity twice to secure the number one seed at the Call of Duty World Championship. Now 16 and 9, and forcing the issue on the flank. He's inside of their face, and that's going to be five in a row. How about six? It's six for Capital. He is woken up and erupting right now on the Subliners. Make it eight in a row. Boston feeding off the hype that this man can provide. 21 and 10. Big Cap. Welcome to the series, my friend. Moving just that, an early kill goes his way. Shotzi with a very, very fast flank. One, two, whoa! What the hell was that snap? Okay, son. What is this Nine and four. spot? What? Oh, that looks very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. No, it does, yeah. You're basically balancing your nipples on a metal pole. <laughs> For something that's a talent. Yeah?
obviously being one of those players might have a, a little dance with Santa here in a moment and has the free fire as well gets it done and gets out with his life possibly the best player in the world one clean break one set of kills there afro sneaks in and steals the victory it certainly makes the big play and now you run offense flanking you've taken the bomb straight through the middle of the map who he's Love everywhere it. you're getting oh flanked on defense but God. a bz gives him the ish and methods wins his one as well i don't care if he gets traded no. it's a 3v2 and a bz still alive that's a, a gg here come the thieves they cannot allow this to slip now and there is snaking going on octane and envoy have broken through Ten Ten. Five, five, five the second one City, you hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent hands down, vibes so unique. Optic Texas finally lived up to their potential in Boston, where they finished third place after getting knocked out by FaZe. But before that, they showed the potential of this new lineup. You brought in Pred, you surrounded Shotzi with the players he wants to play with, and they looked quite comfortable on land. How do they look today online against LA Thieves? They look the same. I mean, this was a team that was trying to push that top four spot and now trying to maybe take that top two spot over Atlanta phase, but they're about 50 CDL points behind, and the way they're going to do it today versus LA Thieves is definitely going to be in those respawns. We always talk about Toronto. They were on their 14th spree. They lost it in the series beforehand. Optic Texas, same deal. A very, very strong map, 1 and 14. Man, let's break it down for me. Is Kenny the IGL? Who's making the calls today against Dan Ghosty and the LA Thieves? Yeah, I think a lot of the crucial moments they're looking towards Kenny, but I, I think it's more like outside of the game. Like Kenny's the guy who's bringing the strategic mind, helping them get through tough scenarios. But I think this team in respawn has been absolutely fantastic. I really just think it's a search and destroy, and that really comes with the preparation, right? Like there's a lot of things that they need to work on, and it's the middle of the round adjustments. We're talking converting your first bloods into wins, post plant retakes. Those are the things that Optic needed to work on. We'll see today. You've got a controller player of the year, a rookie of the year, and of course, Shotzi, world champion from his empire days and if you're optic you want to see more from these three what do you want to see tonight if they're going to get it done easily definitely a lot more of the search and destroy their uh, bottom two when it comes to their defensive rounds and when it comes to that search and destroy in the entirety of the league so hopefully again they've had some weeks off now to work on that and then also they're the best breaking team in the CL so just keep it up in your hard point woes work on your fundamentals actually fun stat about this Dashy is number one in non-traded kill percentage so good 80% and he's the only player above 100 seconds in hill time per 10 minutes. Dashi has been meowing in hill. He's been getting the kills. He has changed as a player for this team, and I am only see nothing but success. Nameless, I've been watching your stream like crazy on twitch.tv slash Nameless, and I guys. see you backpacking Dashi. Yeah, right, that guy's hot. No, talk to me no about way. his gameplay. What is I most mean, impressive when you play alongside what, him? I think with the, this team, like, that's all that he needs to do for this roster, and they've been great. They're 14-6 in hardpoint. Like I said, it's just S&D. They okay. have to figure out their search. Just search. Even if you don't today, I think you should have the edge because of the first look of the new LA Thieves, and after seeing them bomb out of Boston, they went back to the drawing board, swap out the redhead and cami for another one from the uk and nasty a bright light from the royal ravens dim season last year yeah this is an unfortunate conversation to have when it comes to the led simply because they don't have a lot of strengths that we can touch on other than a lot of talent has been put into this lineup for the led to bring in nasty and crep and we said it earlier in the pre-show nasty's here to add some consistency in that ar role where on the flip side crep is now going to be that consistent explosive player for this team man 
Yeah, you know, with this team, they had some things that they were good at. Like defense and control, they were number one in the league, right? They're 10-0 on invasion defense, 4-1 in the other maps, so they're comfortable in that game mode. Search and Destroy was, like, solid, but their hard point, they were 1-12, hopeless in that game mode. That's just downright terrible. So they make a two-man change, sort of change the entire identity of this roster, and you're bringing in a guy like Krimp, who plays super fast, should make the game a lot easier for Afro, and then you bring in Nasty, a guy who can use any weapon. So when you get to a map like Rio, that's going to definitely be towards their advantage and then also he can use an AR and take over so I like the roster move in terms of hard point. And can yeah. we pause real quick I know we have our monster pregame points but do you even take these numbers with a grain of salt are you taking them face value how do you look at this situation because for me I'm like forget about all of our old stats yeah. we're 1-12 in, in hard point we're never going to win that with the previous team but we got a new lineup. That's the whole point right is for comparison right is to see where you started with and where you're going to be at now with changing half of your roster heading into this split. Well, LA Thieves have a lot of fans at their back today. As you can see, the party out there in Los Angeles. Shout out to everyone there at it's the Hopper Thieves there. facility. That's got to be a party, man. Shout out John Robinson. J-Rob, we love to see it, my guy. All right, LA Thieves, the underdogs, they're at the bottom of the leaderboard. But today, you can climb and knock Optic down a peg or at least stop their on street. Where is Nate shot? Nisha, I think he has a child, an infant. He's probably playing ranked <laughs> with them right next to him. You know, that's what I would be doing if I was an early dad. All right, let's get into the map some modes. It's five games. Don't you worry about Nate. He's still got his team. Rio, Karachi, Invasion, Karachi, Terminal. Do we get to a Terminal game five? I mean, I, I don't think so, but I, I think uh, something to note here in this map set is like for Optic, they're trying some things out. Like the Terminal SD map, they have been great at. They're playing that if it goes to the game five. And then also Karachi Hardpoint has been like an auto veto for them. So I think they're trying to test it out because they don't want to play Invasion anymore. It's been a map that hurts them versus the top teams. I think Optic has been waiting for this match. They've been waiting all weekend to play, and I think they're coming out with some hotness. I got this a 3-0 Optic closing it down quick. I want LA to show me something. I really, truly do. But as the numbers speak, I'm going to have to go with Optic Texas for now. Yeah, I'm going to go with Optic Texas as well. I just think the LA Thieves aren't ready yet. And so will the fans. We're all the same all day long. Are we right once again, or is it going to be like match number one? Study, shift, take it away. Cheers, friends. Yeah, I appreciate it. I think the, the desk hit it perfectly. I think there are a lot of interesting elements in this map series because yeah. Optic is trying out some newness. And I think, you know, in particular, going into a Rio, this is kind of like a map style that we would have figured this roster was like built for, right? Like you've yeah. got some real fast and furious subs. You would have to think Optic are foaming at the mouth ready to hit this map running. And I completely agree with you. I cannot wait for Shotzi to teach me a couple of spots that I can go forward <laughs> and rank later and use eventually, you know? Because Optic Texas, they have the perfect roster for a map like Rio. But on the opposite side, we got to put a lot of focus on LAT, man. They just had a two-man roster change. They're 1-12 in HP, currently on a 10-game losing streak, and already starting off on the better foot as they find all the kills with LAP one time. Coming out swinging early. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, when you take a look at this LA Thieves roster move, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's one of those situations that you're sitting there and saying, oh, this is going to be an immediate upgrade. But I think the thing about it is the alarm bells have been ringing, and more importantly, there is no better time to reset everything because you've got a new roster, essentially, with new spawns, new maps. I mean, everything is going to feel fresh and new. So if you're Thieves, you got to come out and just say, whatever happened in stage one is over and done with. Let's restart the season here. Yeah, especially if you're going 1-12 in and hard point you're not gonna win any damn series if yeah. you're losing all your hp so you, something had to change and i really like the change of this roster you're adding another duo in ghosty and Krimp. they used to play together back in the challenges and in nasty and afro those guys have been around each other for quite some time another duo so the comfortability is now here for lat as already into the p1 it was scrappy but optic walk away with the majority of that time but you could already see at p2 it's a fight for these spawns but Pratt with a big one-on-one -on -one gunfight versus afro should try to secure that for up yeah, these are, again, moments where you look to a player like Pred to really just dominate, take over as one of the best SMGs in potentially the league. Four in a row, four. And, five and okay, just prove my point for me, Pred. <laughs> really easy stuff going through backside gate. One more player in the way, that is Kremp. And I will say, again, talking about potential hot subs, Kremp has looked nasty with the rival nine, but he gets taken down and Ghosty finds both of his oh. forward teammates with a teammate. So not good news here for Thesis Optic will soak up the scrap. Yeah, it's an unfortunate play right there from LA. Double team Nate comes in from Ghost and when they had the numbers to find the break. And now you are forced to find another break in towards bottom Eskies, but at least you have a one-on-one -on -one gunfight across the map. Dashy, fortunately with some bad timing that does not spot Ghosty, but now his positioning is known to 2v4 on this side. What can Ghosty do? Can he play his life as long as he can for his teammates to get back into the play? 
Really well done by Dashi. Does take care of those couple of backsided members that will lock in spawns for Optic. Thieves looking to set themselves up, obviously, from the front. A lot of this is actually going to be coming from the outside angle, and a nade from Ghosty does land. Preemptive Semtex for Fred. Reads the one up close, and then he gets yeah. the second. Almost finds three. Finally finished off by the majority of the remaining Optic players, but, I mean, Fred is showing us that you put a rival in his hand on an SMG map, he's going to take over. Yeah, man. Like, that's just what he does. He does it on every map. It doesn't matter what kind of map it is. He's <laughs> always going to put in work with that SMG. Early cruise missile already invested. 10 and 4 start to this game. With only 20 seconds left at this P3 HP. Optic already a step ahead. They were able to flip those spawns. Now, when the rotation over next, I thought that they were going to be a good team at it, but they're looking picture perfect so far. Yeah, I'll say this is kind of, I think, for a lot of Optic fans, it looks kind of the same tempo that they would play a map like Skid Row at, right? It's yeah. just so quick to play both sides of the map, playing on the old time while also taking some good focus over towards new, and you're seeing that here, making a mess of the old time, and now already having two members ready to go over towards Garage. Shotzi will win ramp, and this is picture perfect for Optic to start off this hill. And you see the spawns from LA. It's going to take a, a whole lot to try to break their way back on it, especially pushing through that Garage side. We know that trophies are going to be down to check every single corner and even if you're not checking the corners the crossfires are too strong right now for optic texas as they find a couple kills but it's still a trade battle no one currently on the point as kenny's the sole man here just trying to keep him off until the team is able to reinforce but finally lat gaining some much needed time but for how long though yeah, just there's no trophy system down for Thieves, so all of these stuns are essentially locking LAT in place, making life very easy for the SMGs of Optic Texas to run through, and I mean run through the setup. 1, 10 to 28. Not the start <laughs> that teams are looking for, considering that 90% of that time has been earned on the first hard point. Yeah, not good news here. Yeah, they're looking to improve in this most specifically, and with this brand new roster, it's definitely not the way they wanted to start this HP, but they have an opportunity to potentially earn themselves back into this game. But here comes that cruise missile from Pred. Gonna be at least able to take one player down. No, actually connects on none. Looks like three Pratt's of a trophy was able to block it, but those trophy systems do not block those big missiles coming in from the sky. It's still LAT holding on strong towards the bridge HP. They're finding all the right kills and forcing all about the Texas to rethink strategy. Do we attack from the front or do we try to take from top mid? It looks like a conga line right through the front entrance. Oh, well done from Nasty and Kremp here. The new two new guys in for Thieves. Getting a lot of time from the front while also trying to hit that small pinch from Nasty's point of view. So it does allow some extra time here for the Thieves to be earned. Dashy looking to contest. Good nade placement again from Optic. Just down to can Thieves actually clean this up. Looking like they want to play for all this old time. Dashy making it difficult. Last player left alive. Not going to win the better of that. It's Nasty for a double. And in that moment, Thieves will also have a chance to get some numbers up at Thieves. Already off the rotation. Shots is going to be here. He takes down the first kill on the Afro. He knows that the second player is going to be towards side door. Tries to go for the chop because he knows his teammates still have somewhat positioning towards top mid. They just don't have bridge. So Shotzi knows the spawns are still on this side. Unfortunately, cannot find the second gunfight onto Afro. So ends in the contest. We go in towards B1. Now it's Dashy turn. What can he get done? Waiting for a little bit of help. Also is waiting for a little bit of health. Ghosty, Semtex lands. Dashy, goodness. Just two bullets. Cramp right there. That'll be enough to get him in for the contest. Thieves looking to flush them out. Well done. Good timing here. The hit is perfect to bounce out Optic. Okay. Full four man feed, and here we go. Nasty on five, and Thieves looking good for the back 20. And a new addition in Nasty starting to turn on up. One kill off of earning that cruise missile. You're now going to force Optic Texas to hit that early rotation, but they sniff out every single player trying to push out from that P1. Nasty does not earn that cruise missile, and now you're forcing all of LAT to hit the overextension to try to break a rotation over towards the next hill. But I they're fully ready for it. They know exactly yeah. where the pressure's coming in from at all times, and now they're fully set up for the next. Yeah, early attempts from Thieves to get into the back and foil up the spawns. Not fully successful. Second effort looking much more promising. Kenny just kind of jumping and peeking, but Afro takes him down. Good prediction on the second as well. That'll at least take Optic out of the hard point and also force the spawns to move around just a touch, but off spawn, Optic, well-placed nades. Once again, locking Thieves up. They can't find the full break. And it's like the perfect play right here if you are Optic Texas because there's only 30 seconds left. If you can hold them from the front, you have a free rotation over towards the next HP. Yeah. That's why I see LAT trying to find a way on in, trying to work their way through gate. And at least they find that open to kill onto Kenny. Now you're just waiting for the reinforcement because we know the crossfires are great from Optic Texas, but there's more bodies on the side of LA and they find three nasty trying to snap on for the fourth. But finally, a break does coming in the final 15, but you are Optic Texas, so you take that. You have to set up for the next hill.
Yeah, have to make a rotation happen here. Thieves looking good for the scrap, obviously, but it's just down to what can they find? Moving over towards front lobby. Perfect time to see how the new squad is vibing with the listen in. there's two P2, two P2 going in, last P2 going in. Okay, I'm going to go in there, 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 go in well, the energy seems like it's there for LAT. Problem is, it just doesn't really feel like they're looking at the map to a deeper level. A lot of this is just one-dimensional calls kind of playing it almost what's in front of them, not to be thinking ahead as much as you'd like to see compared to what Optic's doing right now, Jay. Yeah, yeah, Optic is just a step ahead right now. They were keeping it scrappy at the end of that P3, but then you can hear it in the listen for the Thieves. Shotzi one shot, Shotzi one shot. You don't find a trade on Shotzi. <laughs> now you're already losing that junk time and you're still getting those bad spawns. The only player who spawned out was Kremp early off the rotation, but without the gaining the junk time, they have multiple players off the rotation and they just got a full 60 at that garage hill to put them at 235 15 seconds to let call game yeah definitely feels like optic is just maybe a step ahead at the moment when it comes to again just thinking about all elements of the hard point at once last attempt here for la thieves first couple of the kills are decent he gets the hard point neutral for a time but kenny pred still working the kills together just need a couple more seconds dashy last one up He's got Pred right behind him who will step on in and Ghosty, his hand forced, will eventually be taken down. The, the last second gets tallied. It's a convincing win for Optic and I'm sure Green Wall fans are very happy to see this map in the pool based on what we just saw right there. Everybody's happy to see Rio, man. It's just an absolute mix fest. If you were bored throughout the day, tune into some Rio HP and I promise you your energy is going to go through the roof. But Optic Texas just came out swinging, man. We're talking about P1, P2, P3 chain right off the rip of the game. We also had Pred who earned the cruise missile even though it was not impactful over towards the bridge hill when you have such a hot start like that all you have to do is just stay ahead stay a step ahead of the next team that means winning your rotation staying on top in the trade fights and you can see everybody on the side of optic go positive kenny's sitting at 27 and 26 but he has the highest engagement so he's putting down shots at 5200 oh, yeah. damage optic, we were worried about like if optic were gonna be you know one of those teams on this map, and with the beating that they just showed, I know they're playing up against LA2 or not the best hardpoint team, but sure. this is a new roster. They shut down a young rookie in Kremp, who's usually a really aggressive SMG player, finds a lot of kills on the map, but they were just equalizing those guys, rotating yeah. early, playing as a team, and they dominated map number one. Yeah, and I think it's not just the fact that everyone goes positive, but you kind of touch on it. Everyone had double-digit assists as yeah, well. Yeah, So Team it's just, you know... Point. Absolutely, and, and you love to, I think, see that not just for Optic, but I think for any team that's out there when you're dealing with a fast-paced map. I, mean, I think as a casting team, we've talked a lot about this map kind of feeling like Bacage in a way, dating back to Vanguard, where teams that are most successful at that map were the ones that were able to help each other out the most. It's not yeah. just being able to be individually great. You have to be able to work around your own life with your teammates, and Optic feel like they really have that locked in for this map in particular. On the other side, just because we had to give some you know homage to what teams have done, I, do you, anyone like in particular kind of standing out in terms of, you know, how they played in this respawn attempt as a first time roster? We saw a couple moments out of Nasty where he was popping off, went on a couple five streaks and not earned a cruise missile towards the very end. 
We know what you're going to get out of Ghost Seaver. We know what you're going to get out of Afro. But I yeah, feel like sure. Nazzy, he's a guy who can switch that, switch it quickly whenever he wants. You saw him go for a five streak. Unfortunately, he does get shut down. But he has that ability to slay with the best. Unfortunately, when you're playing from the back foot consistently, a lot of these gunfights are very difficult. You're forced to hit a couple long routes. And if those routes don't go your favor, then you're swanning all the way across the map again. And on a map like Rio, Optic just made them pay for it. So that now puts this LAD's roster on one in HP. The organization... Mm -hmm. 0 and 11 in their last 11 HPs, but they're on the brink of breaking that record that NYSL set back in <laughs> Vanguard. But it's a map one, and you're going up against an optic roster who are usually really good at this map and mode. So now you're going into a search and destroy, and this is another one where, as a new roster, you have to figure this stuff out quickly. And if you're yep. optic Texas, the only stuff that you had to work on during this little break was search and destroy. So I'm excited to see what optic changes that they have made in this SD. Yeah, and I think Namos is the one who brought it up in the desk. He made a really good point talking about how the Optic team has played a lot of Invasion, and it has not gone well against top teams. So you have yeah. to find something else to add into the mix uh, that isn't, you know, Terminal, which is their second most played Search and Destroy map. So I like the fact that they're going to give Karachi a go here. And I'd be really curious, I think, to see has maybe Rio with how many, well, you know, them running kind of a 2-2 setup in terms of ARs versus SMGs. Does that lead to maybe an idea of like, hey, wait a second, like we're starting to feel a little bit hotter with these subs. Maybe we can make some of that magic replicate here in Karachi as well because we often see the SMGs are the ones kind of leading the charge in a lot of ways when it comes to making plays. And as you take a look at these Karachi SD stats for both teams, one and one for LAT, but you look at all of that moves from that squad, keep in mind, this is a whole new team. On the opposite side yeah. for Optic Texas, two and one, nine and four in their attacking rounds, eight and seven on their defense. They usually tend to struggle when it comes to those retake situations. They've been a lot better as of recent, though. But then that opening dual win percentage, this is number one and number two going at it. On a map like Karachi SD, obviously completely different for the new LAD's roster, but at least if you're Optic Texas, you have that in your back pocket. We're great sure. at finding the first bloods. We just have to make sure we're consistently converting those into Ws. And on the other side, I mean, the same thing could be said for Thieves. Great at getting opening first duels, but importantly enough, on this map, they also convert 83% of those rounds to win. So this may be a map that very well could be determined by what happens in those first bloods. And in particular, you're looking for someone who gets a lot of them. You look no further than Pred, who has been kind of the uh, set, the tone setter for this optic search to destroy when it has found success. So that's where I think we can kind of take the spotlight as we jump on in. And we'll be optic starting off on offense first with Pred looking to make a little bit of noise over towards the A side of the map. The rest of the squad, though, heading over towards Market. Yeah, Pred just going to be the island player, roaming around red, trying to find any players, trying to go for that deep pinch, and he might have just played this beautifully because there's two players from LA Thieves running right underneath him. He finds the first blood. Does he read the second? No. The trade is there instantly from Afro. That gives all the information to his teammates now, though. We can get the bomb yeah. down because no one's on this bridge side. Yeah, it works. That's a 3v2 on this side of the map. So the bomb will be planted. Shotzi just going to lurk towards box backside of sandbags eventually able to find nasty make sure that every shot is perfect easy kill easy elimination now a 3v2 post plant setup thieves have kind of worked their way in towards market side though i mean afro would have to be the one to try to spoil this setup and as he does take down one he would need to find a total 1v3 tough to make his way back through arches shots he waiting for oh, him, whoa. Clean shots out of afro now on for the 1v3 and maybe the ace problem is he has absolutely no idea where dashy is and well he's the last place he looked over towards the back of market and dashy will secure the round i cannot believe afro just kills shots the way that he did for picks real. up that ar he's usually nice with the smg but mcw works in his hands as well makes it a 1v1 but with only 13 seconds left Position not known for where Dashy is playing. Easy round for Optic Texas to take the opening attack. Starts on the back of the first blood for Pred, gaining that early information. They know they have the 3v2 at that B bomb site. You get it down, you play your trades, you walk away with a round. Optic up 1 0. Now to the defensive side. And one thing that I really love about Optic's play on this map, specifically on defense, is that they're always super aggressive up towards B. We know how difficult it is to work towards A, but if you're shutting down this B push, you're basically shutting down the entire game. Wow. Pred gets red with a stun, still sticks through it, finds the first elimination. Kenny thought he had timing to finish off another, but Shotzi right behind him will confirm his trade. So a very early 3v2, and here is that aggression you very aptly called. Only problem is, I don't think they fully realize how far Ghosty was, but the <laughs> same can be said for Ghosty. Shotzi takes him by surprise. Top market building, leaving Nasty now by himself in a 1v3. He'll take down Shotzi for free, but everything else a little bit more tumultuous to try to ult, uh, ultimately finish. Yeah, 1v2 now. He's getting trapped. Optic Texas is too strong on that defensive setup. 
You get stunned, you get naded, does not matter. I'm still going for the child if you are Pred. Finds the first blood, Shotzi there for the trade in. Ghosty actually spots him as he jumps in towards Coop. He just took a really long time to commit towards the gunfight, and then by the time he does, he's thinking that he's going for a deep flank. Not wrapping back towards the top chicken coop building. Leads to Shotzi finding the second, and then Nasty yeah. in the 1v3. Even though he finds one, just not enough time to work with if Optic knew exactly his positioning. Now puts them up 2-0. So far, Stellar in that map number one, and then not missing a beat in this map number two. And I think the thing about it is how these first two rounds have gone. This is going to completely mess with the mindset of Thieves. You know, your opening defensive aggression gets ultimately shut down by Pred, and then the opposite happens look. to you on your first offense. And you can already see it here, Alan. Look, yeah. they just already make the adjustments. Three red yep. B off the rip. It was Pred at the island at red. Now they stack everyone over towards B, and now it's Optic pushing over towards A with Ghosty with his hands full. Does at least see the first. Oh, okay. wow. Played by Ghosty. Okay. Solid read turns into two kills. He also escapes the trade from Pred. So now off of the regen, he's now on the hunt for more. Shotzi does at least clear a little bit of space over towards the red side of the map, but Ghosty still waiting for sound cues. Here's the door and we'll find Pred eventually. That's three kills for Ghosty in the round. And now a Shotzi left in the 1v3. Bomb down over towards that soda alley. Eventually wow. he does get sniffed out, but... Would look to be a one-man army kind of a situation for Ghosty. He gets it done. Finds the initial two. Repositioned himself knowing that Shotzi was in towards the cafe. Finds that third kill. And then Nasty with the final. It so all falls into the hands of Ghosty, man. We got to take a look back at it. Great snap onto Dashy. And he stays alive long enough to find the third kill onto Pred. That's just a Huge. single man shutting it down by himself. Yeah, and there's so much trust that comes with that. Yeah. I don't think the, the obviously assumption would be that Ghosty, as kind of one of the young IGLs, probably made that call. Like, hey, let's just stack B off the rip. Trust me, I got A. And, well, that trust was absolutely earned. Here we go again, though. Optic, three-man stack through B. No one was surprised. Pred will make his way very rapidly over towards Bridge. Everyone else rotating back through the church, leaving now Kenny in a bit of a situation where he's got to kind of pull his own ghosty up. Smoke will come through. Bomb will be planted. Kenny may have an opportunity to make this difficult on the exit, but doesn't quite sound anyone at the moment. Yeah, Kenny's just in a situation where he can peek, potentially find a kill, but he doesn't want to peek and lose his life. Eventually takes oh, down Nasty man. and instantly in 3v2. You see both the players from LAT, they're out towards Junkside. You take down that player towards top red, we can instantly stick the defuse. That's all up to Ghosty now. He has to move through the single window. Nah, not going to happen. That is <sighs> too easy, I think, is probably yeah. worth <laughs> yeah, <too easy. laughs> the, the easiest way to point to. I, I mean, flat out, I think that the, the early plan is perfect. I mean, you've got yourself a 4v4 post plant, but then you just get immediately destroyed through office. It just doesn't feel like something you'd often see. It's just the mind games right there from Optic. The fact that Kenny opens that cafe door and LAT, once they break through bottom ticket, they realize there's someone on this side of the map. So let's just take control of what we already know we have. That's yeah. red. That's ticket. So we're going to back on up. We're not going to try to take cafe. But unfortunately, when they decide to back on up, that's when Kenny finds one. Shotzi finds the timing on the nasty. And then at that point, you have two players in junk, one towards top red. Optic have everything that they want to retake the site. Beautiful play right there from Kenny to make it happen. Quick hit right through mid for Shotzi. Met by Thieves, though. The opening nades tossed towards B. Saw all three members make their way back towards the middle of the map. And in the same breath, Ghosty is able to find Kenny as well, kind of in the same position. So now Bomb is down. Pred is forward. And it may be on Dashy to have to collect this Bomb and then hope he can rotate the Thieves through Pred's awaiting arms here at Hotel. And I love this setup right now from the Thieves. Just absolute buddy system. No one-on-one -on -one childs. If you get the information, it's going to be two players putting down shots. So in the 4v2, everyone's stacked in towards the fountain. They find that kill on Zapred. Now it's Dashy left in the 1v4. Bomb still down. He actually does not recover it. But a 1v4. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. very difficult. I agree. Okay. So now all of a sudden, the chess game kind of shifts just a touch. After the first two rounds were very convincingly won by Optic. A moment here where Thieves have something up their sleeves. And I think more importantly, they kind of stop Optic from getting away with absolute murder on the map. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe a moment here where we can kind of hit the brakes, hit a pause, and see if Thieves can actually get their game plan actually off the crown, because so far it really hasn't been the case. Yeah, they just shut down the playmaker and Shotzi. Once they take mid-map control, and especially when you're taking out one of the SMGs, you know that they're going to be a lot slower on their attacking rounds. You get the first kill and eventually you find the second as well. 4v2, bomb down towards the middle of the map. You don't have to do anything. They are forced to beat you on the round by planting the bomb and successfully waiting 45 seconds, and that's yeah. very difficult to do. So LAT walk away with two defenses so far on the map. 
But now to the attacking side they go. They're going to conga line right through the middle of the map. It looks like it's going to be all out pressure over towards a Kenny this time at the reposition. And I don't know if Dashi had seen any of this, but he does pop the doors over towards the old fourth hard point, and that will maybe alert Kenny that he is in trouble. Just the call comes maybe a touch too late. Kenny will drop bomb, gonna be planted immediately. And then look at Ghosty, he's just on the other side of the map saying, oh, come and get me. Like he's just killing time on the backside so we get a 3v3 post plan. But now this is a little bit different because now if you are the thieves, you have cafe control. You have back alley as well. You're forcing all of Optic Texas to retake from the opposing side. And it's already 15 seconds knocked off of the game clock. Shotzi also does not have a smoke grenade to make it a deco on towards the site. With only 20 seconds left, we got to get a move on it. Yeah, haven't found anyone yet, but Nasty gets collected quickly. Thieves, is this post plant dynamic enough? You've got Afro playing topside soda as Kremp drops. Now they know exactly where Afro is, so Dash is going to hop this. Not again. Not another post plant situation that should have been the perfect setup going wrong. Oh, you hate to see it. Yeah, you definitely hate to see it, Alan, because the crazy thing is, before this roster change, LAT, more specifically on a map like Karachi, they were number one in post-plant scenarios. But you can already tell, a lot of openings to their setups post-plants, and that is what Optic have been able to capitalize on. You take full red control, even with 20 seconds left, full out pressure, knowing that all the information is now gained. They have to plant towards Cafe. Shotzi starts it off with the first, Dashy with the second, and then just too far away from the site is Kremp running right through the middle alley to even put himself in an angle to get him off site. Optic Texas, take the round. Wow. I mean, that was, again, maybe labeled as a little too easy for Optic. Here we go. Full out engagement likely to happen here at B. Shotzi moving through. He's able to catch Afro. Does he get the expectation that cramps up top? No, but Kenny right behind him able to secure the trade. The read on Ghosty top hotel means that this bomb can get planted over on B. And it would be nasty that would have to essentially 1v2 over here for the time being, waiting for Ghosty to make the long wrap around the back. Yeah, Ghosty, he wraps his way in Pred. I love the play uh, out of him. He was going to commit towards the one-on-one, -on -one, but he said, screw that. I'm going to help my teammates secure the ISO onto Nasty. Now, Ghosty was on a deep flank. He's not left in a 1v3 scenario. With only 25 seconds left. As long as you don't choke this, this one's Optic. Optic are not making any mistakes. It's now two rounds in a row to not put them at game point. And it's just, you know, it's one of those things, again, where, you know, we're trying to sit here and evaluate the new roster that comes through here. And to be fair, like, Ghosty and Kremp, they play together, but it was way back in, like, Vanguard. Yeah. So it's been some time since they've had a chance to play with one another. And the same can be said for, like, Afro and Nasty. You know, yeah. they've had a lot of experience with one another. It's just kind of getting these two old-school duos to really gel together. And when you see those post plants go wrong, you see these individual moments kind of come through where essentially everyone's taking 1v2s, it feels like. You expect that those things will hopefully be corrected, but for the time being, Optic is looking really versatile on this search and destroy. Yeah, you can just sell it there, brand new team. Like, those are situations that don't really happen if you have more reps underneath your belt, but so yeah. a couple of openings that LAT have to focus on. It's time to get that first blood. Trying to work this bomb plan over towards me. You see this the setup right now from Optic is a little bit scattered, and Kenny tries okay. to go through the top secret chow. He falls instant 4v2, but Predator hit makes something happen. The bomb actually does not go down, so it's still a very run around for Optic Texas. Extremely. You have Dashy that, at least for the time being, is still playing up top towards Soda and that AC. Making his move over towards Red. Does not expect Cramp and Rubble. So now it's just down to Pred. Point. Looks like they're going to try to play for the kill. Afro taken down cleanly, but the follow up up top is just as clean as the initial was. So Thieves will keep themselves alive, but still a lot of work to be done here. Yeah, they got the first blood that round and then eventually snap out the second player in towards Kenny. And even when Pred finds that first kill, once they isolate dashing towards Red, you see it's everyone focused now onto Pred in the 3v1. We're not gonna pick the bomb up. We're not gonna rotate it. We're just gonna ice him and take him down with our gunny. As LAT keep themselves alive in the SD a little bit longer. Finally take their first attacking round of the map. Now they have to be able to read what Optic Texas are throwing them at offense. There's been so many different looks. Aggressive towards B, aggressive towards A, aggressive towards mid. Can they get a read on it in this round? Different look on both sides, though. Kind of a 2-2 split from both sides' perspectives. Pred taking a couple of extra steps towards the bottom side at red. Just making a little bit of extra noise, but Thieves looking pretty comfortable and confident in their setup. They're going to leave Nasty kind of by himself over towards B, but there should be an opportunity... Yeah, it's a move over pretty quickly here. Yeah, this is a perfect play right here from Optic Texas. You get Pred jumping towards top red, bust a couple doors open, get the rotation to come in from the Thieves players. Uh, but they're still not working this bomb plan. 
Kind of going to decide to wrap back over towards red, thinking that, all right, it's the mind games. You get them to rotate <laughs> over towards A. Now you waste a lot of time, so they're probably going to go back over towards B. But here comes the commitment. A bomb, we go. Wow. This is a bold commit. Kills looking decent, though. Wow. How do they break through that that cleanly? You think from someone playing bottom arches with someone else up at top red that Thieves would have been fine to lock things up, but the bomb gets planted swiftly. Kenny now playing bottom office. Long wrap from Pred. Dashy still kind of holding position top side at red. And he's going to get a freebie. What? Well, <laughs> wait, what? Okay. If he's looking for the beat down. Nasty. They have heard the elbow whip by his ears. Krep also take it down. And it's just the individual skill in those last couple of moments tilted the way of Optic as they take the 2 0 edge of the series. Yeah, Optic is just a step ahead in, in this S and D. You know, they yeah. definitely look like a team that's pinned together a lot longer than the op than the opposing roster. But LAT, they had opportunities to win it. We're talking about multiple bomb plans over towards A. The retakes were just way too easy for Optic Texas. The post plan setups were not the best. But that all comes with time. And now you find yourself down 0-2 in this series. This is going to be a very difficult one to win mm. because I know the old LAT roster on a map like Invasion Control that's coming up next. They were great. The number one defensive team that we have throughout the entire league. They have yet to lose a single defensive round on any controls that we'd have. 10 and no more specifically on a map like Invasion. But this is a whole new team, man. And the way that Optic are playing, they are not messing around. And I think the thing is, again, whole new team with a very different look that I, I don't, it's just, it's hard to take this match and walk away with it at the moment and kind of speak to, yes, these moves were worthwhile. Yeah, I think maybe more so right now. I, I imagine the conversation point that we're gonna hear a lot on the flank, and I'm sure what the YouTube chat's talking about is, were the right people moved? It's hard to evaluate, friends. We've had two yeah. maps of action against a very good optic squad, but hey, at least like you mentioned, there is some statistical history that may lead to some favor here for Thieves going into map number three, or at least so they hope. But we'll step away for a break and get you the full breakdown of as far as what's gonna happen on this control or will it mostly be just all sunshine and rainbows here for Optic? Clean to this point. See if they can keep that that way when we come back after the break. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty Store. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League.
start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Well, much like the Monster Energy matchup being all green, this series has also come up all green for Optic Texas 2-0 to this point, 251-22 the opener, followed by a very clean search on Karachi 6-3. And, and Jay, we kind of let everyone soak on this for a while. We talked about LA Thieves and their success, especially defensively on Invasion, but that was the brand new roster. And, yeah. and you kind of worried that maybe to a certain point that, hey, we have to live up to the expectations of the previous roster here just to show some signs of life. Yeah, that's the very difficult part about it is that, all right, you pick up two new players to get better at respawn, be better in heart, in general at HPs. You fall short in that one, but now you're going into a control where it used to be your bread and butter with the old team, undefeated on the defensive side, but now you are forcing the other two players who just on the roster to play the same exact way your last yeah, two yeah. teammates did, and that's usually a very difficult thing to do. Oh, no. As Optic Texas already starting off hot. Dash with two, Brad with the third, Brad with the fourth, already four dead. Players on both points, ah, not the best start for LA. Oh, brother. <laughs> That's about all you can say right now. You've got two players still at mid-map, and Thieves are looking to reclaim Yo. over towards A. Couple of eliminations. Okay, first tick of progress gets completely quelled and depleted, but at the same time, Shotzi has gotten a second tick and is looking to make another forward play through DVD. Able to catch Afro, at least the majority of them, and there we go. Follow-up kills are good, and this should be the B-Zone for Optic. Yeah, B-Zone's going to be done and dusted unless Krep has anything to say about it, but he's more focused on main maintaining the map control for his teammates not allow anyone to take over that a street control but it's gonna be time now extended by a minute optic trying to push their way up through broken side all of lat though sitting around dvd sitting around mid map and the beat down not strong enough as astro take down kenny at least for thieves they can hold and restrict this transition looking for a lot of exit kills and they have reduced the life lead back to just one so there's an opportunity here where Thieves have essentially kind of mitigated the entire opening. And yeah, okay, well done here. Okay, three straight kills. Thieves now able to turn that into some map pressure. And Kremp, meanwhile, after his first death, has now gone 6 and 0. Oh, so he's got himself a cruise to work with. This is perfect. This is perfect. He was the only man who stayed alive on this side of the map. And it comes to work out perfectly. So he earns himself that cruise whistle. But now Optic are able to take him off that position. And they still have yet to get out of the base spell. Just beautiful crossfires. Beautiful setup right now from LAT. Who are asking for if they can mimic exactly what the old team did, and so far they're doing a great job of doing so. Yeah. Already 40 seconds knocked off of that game clock, and he still have Optic in a headlock. Yeah, really well done from Afro and the rest of the squad to kind of playing forward, get a spawn kill, back up. It really just kind of keeps Optic guessing in terms of what this setup looks like for Thieves. Dashy caught over towards Water Stairs, but he's able to at least find one. Kenny Deeper has created an opportunity for Optic to get some sort of a setup, but Thieves will just kind of counter that by wrapping back towards mid, looking to get arrested through Courtyard. So yeah, this is working out great for Thieves. Oh, but that two-piece nade is exactly what Optic are looking for. If they can take care of this guy at s and D, ASD, that'll be even better. But Nasty plays his life long enough for Kremp to come in his system. So still, Optic Texas trapped in their spawn. Father's player pushed out is going to be dashy. He does take down one, but how long can he stay alive? Not for long. Only 30 seconds left, and now you're forcing all of Optic Texas to hit that overextension. Nasty in place, deep, getting a read on some of this, but can't confirm any eliminations. And okay, here we go. All four Optic members, an opportunity to kind of flood through the back. Spawns for Thieves will still be in a solid spot for them to help out on this A defense. Not a lot of time remaining. 12 seconds. Last attempt here for Optic. Afro holding the front line quite literally right down the middle of the street. Pred able to find one, but doesn't have the ability to stretch over towards the A zone. So the clock will expire. And with that, so will also the hopes of Optic trying to find their opening off. Offense. Yeah, you take that right there if you are LA. It didn't start off the best, but you were able to maintain it after that. Maintain the map control, get a cruise missile in the back pocket of Krimp. And also not allow Optic to get out of their base until the final 20 seconds. Just a great defensive setup. Great yeah. teamwork on full display right there from LA to take the first round. But now they're going to the attacks. Where on a map like Invasion, it's very, very difficult. We saw what it is. You, to get those segments done at A, you're going to be happy about it. But do they... Because they were the team that originally started that early A push. Yeah, and they yeah. trying to find success here again. And a lot of it was get an SMG in towards lobby, which yeah. Kremp, he's got. Oh, he's got an MCW, pardon me. But this is not the same breakoff where they try to work through the middle of the map. If they find the kills, then they go A. If not, 
they'll default back over towards B. Afro, top at tree house. Messy gunfight shots, he takes the win. And Thieves have found no success on either zone to this point. Still trying to work for kills through the middle of the map, which Cramp does at least open up some space for now Thieves to come off spawn and head towards B. Yeah, they're gonna try to head over towards the speed point. They have broken control. They're able to stop the game clock. They also have some trophy tips to work with, but don't get dash in his freebie. As Nasty plays his life beautifully, it's already the first segment about to be complete. But you see on your main, you have Optic Texas. They're just waiting for an opening to try to find a way in. You also have Shotzi going on a deep pinch to potentially put them in a spawn trap, but the kills are not going in their favor. The second tick is already in. It looks like time is about to be extended. Pred just watching over through dark. Kenny off spawn will make sure no one pushes through over towards blue. And like you mentioned, Shotzi just being the gatekeeper here, making sure no one moves over towards Water Street. So in terms of how you set up a perfect spawn trap for off to Texas, it's on the way. <laughs> I think yeah. that's the, the biggest part about it. So this is all about if Thieves can finally flush Shotzi out of position or maybe see if Afro can make a play around the back to try to pull this optic defense back towards the A zone. And this is where Shotzi just thrives, man. When you put him in a position like this where he could just be a nuisance for as long as he possibly can. He found a kill in towards Top Palace and he jumped on out. While the rest of it, while the rest of LA are trying to focus on where Shotzi is, Afro across the map is maneuvering his way up the middle. You take care of Shotzi. Now you can potentially work not only through the overextension, but through mid map, through that right yep. street. And Afro just continuously is finding timing after timing, but does not find the kill. You take that Afro. Now all you have to do is hold strong again. But here comes Nasty. Ah, doesn't expect the second in Kenny playing through laundry. Trade good from Ghosty. Only one defender towards Optic on the zone. And Ghosty obliterates Pred. Four in a row now for Ghosty. Kremp able to work his way onto the A zone. Stops the clock at 51 seconds. Optic, three men off spawn, moving through gas. Ghosty's just missed the timing on the rotation through, though. And now it's just down to see if Kremp can hold on to the zone. He bounces out, not able to fully confirm the first tick. And as Shotzi finds the kill, Optic will deplete. Yeah, that's just tough. You know, him and Ghosty were the only two players on that side of the map for LA. But once you take care of Ghosty, we know. Shotzi works his way through Cafe, catches the player pushing up through A Street, watching that cross. And he takes down that player to not allow the segment as well. But LAT is still right back on in it. You yeah. have meant mannequin control. You have meant map control. You step one player contesting through the front. Big one on one gunfight is abound, but Dash is able to take it. Now you just have to find the trade on Ghosty, but he's still staying alive. Still an opportunity for LA. Fred does eliminate the threat, so 15 seconds has Thieves relying on Nasty to get here. And he's playing through street side. He's not gonna have an opportunity just to run forward, you'd think. Dashy watching the cross, Pred on the interior. And as Nasty makes his move, he will step in, but into the waiting arms of Kenny and Pred who find the kill. And, and pretty much a one for one defense right there. Good A setups for both teams. Yeah, just great setups for both teams. I think it was a lot easier though for LAT because they were so far pushed up. They had Optic behind in their back of the small towards Palace. At least for LA's sake, they were able to maneuver their way up through Cafe, get in towards Mannequin. It just came down to those next set of fights that they ended up losing that allowed Optic to reinforce their dominance back in towards the point. So all tied up at three segments, defense one-to-one -one for both of these squads. It might just simply come down to whoever can get a segment over towards A. And I feel like if you are Optic Texas, you go for that 2-2 two -two split again. And this time, if you get a player on the A point, let's not fully commit towards that gunfight through the back end. Yeah, that's a phrase right there, Jay, that the COD community is not strangers to hearing. Whoever can get ticks at A. If it leaks that round five defense. Shotzi getting aggressive through the B zone. Will work his way to top treehouse. Pred mid map. Deals with Afro and is able to finesse to keep his life a little while longer. So first tick, make it two. Will be locked in very quickly here for Optic. Retake attempt through dark on the way for the thieves. And okay, clearance does come through. So that'll stop the third tick for now. Pred last one left. We'll have a chance to kind of finesse his life here. Maybe actually get the extra 60. Thieves did not really push through the eliminations they had. But finally, we'll start to make their defensive contest known. And as the kills come out from Afro, that'll be enough to deplete the third tick at B. Yeah, that's not all four dead as well. All of Optic Texas forced to play nice and slow. Through the backside of Ice Cream as Ghosty pushes himself up towards the spawn side tank. But Brad, great shots at that MCW. Guy just simply doesn't miss. He's got the beamer on him, but it's a good first kill to now maneuver your way out of the spawn a little bit. But they're still applying pressure over towards this B side. Nades are hitting, stuns are hitting, but none okay. of the gunfights are going their way. Nasty, it's your turn to hold down this mid tank. 18 and 14 from Nasty, quietly leading the lobby. 
Not quite able to get out from behind Dumpster, so he's eventually taken care of. 36 seconds on the clock, sees Optic taking a three-man hit right over towards Afro's waiting arms. Stuns are landing, no trophy system in place. Ghosty also affected, so that'll be enough for the lockdown to come through, and with that, likely the extra 60 seconds, unless Kremp finds some way to work through this, but no, no effort. It's all about setting up the A defense now for Thieves. Yeah, once those two kills went in favor of Optic, you saw Kremp, he was going to challenge through mid-dark, but he'd rather put himself in a position to make sure no one sneaks on by towards that A point. Gets the information on the shot. See, now you know all of Optic Texas all over towards that B Street. Currently up by six lives. You still have Kremp in his back pocket with the cruise missile. Yeah. But Optic Texas is just trying to find a different way now. Not wrap back through A Street. We're going to overextend. Let's just see how long they can try to play this out. Good kills from the Thieves. See them have a six. Make it seven life advantage on this defensive setup. Afro making sure nothing moves through the water bridge. So all of these guns for the Thieves should know that this is either coming through mid or probably coming through the old captured B zone. And that is exactly what the Thieves are set up to deal with. Now Afro looking to get aggressive. He'll make his way to top sandbags. And this will be a problem for Optic as he's just got everyone in front of him. How do oh. you want to shoot at? Pick your poison, friend. Gets two of the three ghosty finalizes the trade and an 18 v 7 with 30 seconds. This is looking really good from Thieves. Yeah, Optic just basically are making a decision to sit back in this spawn and chalk this one up. This is their last hoorah to try to make their way over towards this A point. The defense is just too strong right now from LA. Every single crossfire is set up, but wait. As three players now pushing up through the street. There's only two players left, but the oh. team kill comes in from Kenny. They're able to get onto the point and stop the game clock, but there's more players from LAT on this side of the map. They just have to win the fights, and that's three dead to one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it's a ghosty good for it. Full HP. He's now 22 and 13. Absolutely taking charge. One last attempt. Fred will get in with 2.1 on the clock, but the only help he has is Dashie, and Dashie's nowhere to be found near oh, yeah. this, so... The clearance will come through, and here's the important part about that round. Not only does Optic barely even get the B zone, but the life differential is significant off that last round. So if Thieves don't find this A tick that we often don't often see at all, they very well may have the life tie differential they need to hold that round five defense. Yeah, and they're happy as hell about that. That's now 12 and 0 on invasion defense. Even with a new roster, they are still mm -hmm. putting it together. Ghosty must have like the perfect game plan when it comes to defense on invasion because no one's slipping on by. And even when you think someone is, they are reading it per to perfection. And just keep in mind, this is a round where Kremp, if it comes down to it, where they need to close down this B point because they're already out slaying heavy, that cruise missile will pay dividend to make sure they huge. secure this B point. Absolutely huge. So here we go. B zone, the first bit of focus. First tick already locked. Again, you see that current tick counter. If they can get to six, you would assume the life differential right now is favoring that of Thieves, which we would use as a tiebreaker to determine who gets that round five defense. Optic on the reclaim of the B zone, though, looking good. I think they are very also aware of what they need to do here defensively to set themselves up. Hold on to this B zone. Don't let anything further get captured, and so far, so good for the green wall. Yeah, they hold it strong, and they know that the pressure has to be over towards B. This is where LA are going to put a lot of their plays on this side of the map just to secure that side of, the, of that objective. Yeah. But it's still Optic Texas holding down Cafe, holding down DVD. Already oh, puts up no. first big cut. LAT have not been able to find an opening as that's all three dead. Fall player pushed up is now Ghosty. And with only 40 seconds left, you have to go towards B. Yep. Too much time to rotate back towards A. Then you have to hold on to this tank position. You cannot yeah. allow Optics ARs to get into a position like this. They could just shred you at the main street. Can he tee off now on six in a row? He's got himself a cruise missile. And oh boy, he's not done. The rest of Optic also pushing forward. And it's just a master class. Thieves getting a little bit of cold oh, feet here at B. They can't make their way through either alley. They have to play this through mid. And it's just not going any better there. Pred not able to fully double up, but it is a significant life lead. Thieves will jump on with 1.9. Kenny looking for double digit streaks. Does he get it? Sure, oh. no, he does it. <laughs> Bit off more than I could chew there. And there is still a chance for Thieves to try to get this oh. capture, but Dashie's nade takes him off. And what a defensive masterclass from Optic. Mercy. That's exactly what they needed to do to secure defense in round number five. The absolute Kobe over the top side of blue <laughs> finds a two-piece, no trophy system in sight for LA. But you only gave up two segments at that B point. So Optic Texas now secure defensive round number five. Kenny was going off towards the B Street, so now he has a cruise missile in his back pocket.
And now if you are LAT, man, you got to figure it out on the attack or you're going down in three. Wow. I mean, just when you thought both teams were looking really good on their B offense, <laughs> Optics say, wait, wait a second, they have the kill lead, right? All right, let's just not let them get more than one ticket at B. That's unreal. So here we go again. Thieves off their break off offensively, making their moves over towards B. No one's stepping on at the moment, but there are a number of members here. So just when they do, there is a chance to potentially double stack this. Kremp is moving in and out of the zone. Fred looking for the pinch through dark and all clean. First gunfight win. Here come the rest of Optic. Trades though good, and it'll be a three for two exchange, allowing progress to be secured at B. Ooh, and that's a big gunfight win right there from Ghosty. Now you see, they can freely go over towards this eight point. Everyone yeah. is committing on that side, and now this is where Krepp is gonna invest it. He's the only player over towards B. He's gonna give all the information to his teammates on where the pressure's coming in. That's a double good stack. Ball. That's two segments already done at B. First one about to get completed at A. Really good call on the usage from the cruise missile. Second ticket progress, like you mentioned, nearly there. Dashi with the contest. Oh, plus Kenny assisting over the middle of the map. So yes, you do have to chalk up the B zone, but only a single ticket's confirmed on A. And look at the defensive setup for Optic. They've got full water side control. Yeah, they have full water side. So now you're forcing all of LA to overextend. Push through Treehouse, push through DVD, and they are ready for the fights. But how many can they get? Because there's multiple bodies here from LA. Shotzi with the stun. You're still able to sprint. He still finds the kill. Now the only player here is going to be Ghosty. You take care of him. Hit the reset button for LA. A minute and 50. A lot of time to work with. But keep in mind, just in case it gets a little hairy, Kenny has that cruise missile. Look at this setup. I mean, you've got Optic literally possessing 90% of the map. Kenny only able to find the first, but gets a lot of damage confirmed in Afro, so he can't make any further moves over towards A. And for Thieves, again, they're just trying to feel out where can we go? We've got no options through mid. There's people watching the OE at B. You got Dashy doing Dashy things on bridge. It just feels like an impossible situation. Without the cruise missile, this could lead to a very nasty spawn trap. I'm curious to see what their decision is. Do we decide to overextend push to B Street? Do we try to isolate Dashy over here towards the car side? Hey, do just that. Find a trade on him, so you have the opening up through A Street, but how long is this going to pay dividend? Because you already see Shotzi on a deep pinch, pushes up through the B Street, finds at least one, gets Afro one shot, not able to finish the kill as well. And they're also able to pause the game clock, so Kenny's yeah. going to invest it. Big one on one at a point, Dashy's able to win it, but with only 57 seconds left, Optic have exactly what they want. Full map control, all you have to do is win this next set of fights, and the game is basically yours. Moments here, though, for Thieves. No one for Optic. Able to contest through mid-map. Kenny has to forfeit this. Just play over towards Rugs. Lots of damage. Able to find Afro. Also knows, of course, that there's a second contestant nearby. A read on the Ghosty as well. And Kenny wants the gunfight. And he's going to take it. Oh, my goodness. Also slides away. Nasty isn't able to confirm the kill until maybe it's already too late. He's trying to finesse his own life back towards gas station. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Krim from the front does a decent job. It's just a mix fest all over around the A zone. Afro able to step on it. Krent deals with it. Optic still holding strong, but Thieves off spawn, still able to keep the game clock. Stop 7v9, and it's just down to how long Nasty can stay alive. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a one-on-one. And Stevens is just too far with only 12 seconds left. Crossfires are now here for Optic oh. Texas. They might have just been able to call a game. Unreal stuff. Six seconds left. This is going to take too long, and Pred reads it the entire way. Oh my goodness, that got saucy around A, but Optic went a couple of real key 1v1s to give him a slight edge, make things just a little bit too messy for Thieves. But boy, did LA give themselves a real chance there to extend this series, just the new roster not quite enough to dig through Optic, who are looking just as strong as they did at Boston. Yeah, Optic did miss a beat right there. Right in the opening hard point. Yeah, absolutely loving the Rio edition to the yeah. map set and you get into the Karachi yes, S&D just so many different looks every single attacking round there's one player on one side this time it's two players on one side this time we're going to take middle map just too yeah. much for LAT to think to think about with a brand new roster and then when you get to the control even though they were down to one they dominated on their defense they did exactly what they needed to do secure defense in that round number five and then even when it got a little bit scary Kenny gets it done with the cruise missile. Shotzi with multiple positioning plays. But Pred, I felt like he was the MVP of that final map because time. every single time a player from LA got in towards that eight point, it was a one-on-one -on -one versus Pred. He won that gunfight every single time. So that's got to be very difficult if you are LA. Just one kill away from potentially forcing a game number four with Optic Texas trying to make right their wrongs. Come out with a 3-0 to start off stage two.
And I think, again, the important thing about it is it's on a map set that I won't say is unfamiliar, but it is new and kind of yeah. fresh in a way. So I think that's good news for Optic. Uh, before we send things back to the break, or to the desk, rather, any kind of final thoughts from you as far as how Kremp and Nasty played? I think that's kind of where the desk is going to take a lot of their focus as well. I like Kremp on his positional plays. Like, you saw him some, some pop-off moments. And map number one, I would like to for him to be the guy more in the mix, but instead, he just has to pull out that AR. But, Des, you guys take it away. You guys break it down better today. All right. Thank you, Study. Thank you so much, Shift. He's so Enhancement glasses. Can we break down what we saw, though, from LA Thieves in their first run? You're going up against a top three seed. You know it's not going to be easy. I think the LA Thieves camp might have seen some life from their team on that invasion. Is there hope with this roster? I think there is. I know this series was a 3-0, and you can talk about it, you know, 250 to 122. You forget that Texas had, like, a 100-point lead at one point, and then slowly LA Thieves tried to crawl their way back, and it didn't come through. And then in that SND, the kills were really even across the board. Right. There was nobody on LA Thieves that was, like, completely costing. So I think maybe just working on their teamwork a little bit more. Again, they changed half their team. Nameless, a lot of people in chat are saying, Afro had a bad series. Series. He had bad numbers. When I was watching, it seems like he has to be the first one into the gunfights. Is he going to get more support? Does he stay in that role? How does this team evolve from here? Yeah, I think he stays in the role that he's currently in. Uh, you know, for LA Thieves, like, this is just a very tough matchup in your first go around with the new team. Like, they made the most roster changes already, right? Like, it's going to take a little bit of time. And for LA Thieves, they're going up against Optic Texas, who have been top two hardpoint team in the game so right. far. So you're already starting off a series down 0 1, and then you're going up against Optic, who has probably focused the most on search and destroy after the last event. And we saw on a lot of the defensive rounds that they had some great retakes coming in from Optic Texas, making plays on that Karachi. So uh, for LA Thieves, I think you just put your best foot forward. You take what you can for this match in terms of the BOD and, and you try to improve. For Optic Texas, though, massive improvements from the, from the major and from stage one we saw in this match. And even just like the intense focus in this control to like, you're up six to four in ticks, right? You have to make sure that they don't capture B. That's the easier point to capture on this map. On the defense, they played so hard for that spawn blender and they executed it perfectly to, to secure themselves defense in round five. Chat saying that was against the worst team in the league though. Yeah. Is it? I mean, it's hard because LED's got handed a really tough matchup. I think for Optic yes, Texas, this yeah, was literally just another day in the office for them, right? We're talking about a team that's trying to contend for that top four and even trying to fight top two right now when it comes to CL points. So for LED's, it's tough when you change half your roster to go up against a Titan like this that matches you so unwell when it comes to the respawn. We've got a lot of teams struggling at the bottom of that leaderboard. Thieves will be back in action a little bit later next week. For now, so though, scary. we have our scuff play of the game. Let's take a look at this one. Put them on the screen and walk me through this fight. It's round six, the retake was so quick. I mean, yeah, it's just the search destroy has been so much better for Optic, which I think is going to make them terrifying for the rest of this split. They keep playing the way they have. They've been playing much more objectively focused and much more around each other. You can see all three of these arrows are trying to work out this player in the back. They know he's in gas. They have 15 seconds on the clock. They get the kill, and then they have the overwatch. That was the second time they did it, too, Nameless. Yeah, they, they kept doing this, and I love how they played. Like, the, the most important thing about Optic and their search and destroy is, like, early rounds, they were good. It was about these types of situations, like playing off of the contact. When you have a guy like Shotzi who's able to get so much information and stay alive, you have to make plays while he's being that nuisance. And you saw Pred instantly closing the gap, as well as Dashi coming in to help for the, the trio squish there. You or saw the assist. It. Everyone the, the had 10 there. assists yeah. in the hard point. Search and destroy was a one-man army at times. And then you see the teamwork on the retake. Right now, though, we have the greatest player to ever come out of Australia joining us live via the microphone at the Optic Texas studio. Pred, you guys finished third. The only team to beat you has been Atlanta, and since, it looks like you guys continue to improve. What did you guys work on leading up to today? Um, honestly, we've just been screaming SMD a lot. Uh, I think that's something that we kind of lacked heading into the major. We just try to, you know, sort of just get more match reps and tournament reps with SMD, but we realized like we got to scrim it a lot more than we were. So I think that's something that we really focused on, and, you know, I'm kind of happy that a map like Rio got added. It's kind of, you know, good, because we have a, you know, me and Ann both like to run the sub, so oh, yeah. finally getting a map that we can actually run a sub on, so it just, you know, it feels good, the pacing's quicker, so that's something that we've been working on. Well, yeah, so, Pred, maybe I'm setting you up here. What is your favorite hardpoint map to spawn into right now during the split? Ah, uh, man, I think it's probably Invasion. Uh, oh. I think I like running the AR, so for me, Invasion hardpoint's probably my favorite. I think the spawns on that map are really good. Um, they make a lot of sense, and yeah, I just enjoy playing that map. You are capping. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, I want to ask you, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> about the search and destroy moments, uh, it seems like you guys focus a lot on your retakes, uh, especially your guys' defense. It's just something you guys are lacking. Like the early rounds are so good, that you guys would fall apart. We saw that at Major One. How did you guys talk through fixing that going into this stage? Uh, I think it's a big thing on the comms, you know, like like, you, like we said, like the info the info thing. I think we get a lot of info and sometimes we weren't like playing off that info. So I feel like when we, like we've been trying to retake more and just just playing a bit more like info orientated. I feel like we're kind of playing like blind counters a little bit. So I feel like once we started like playing off info and like working together and clearing out and isolating people, I think we've been a lot better. So. Do you think you needed to play like with Shotzi a little bit more? Because I feel like when I watched that Karachi, like he was making plays, you were always with him, like trying to make plays yeah. based off his contact. Yeah, that's something that we also spoke about, you know what I mean? And I feel like we work well off, off each other. I feel like he's a bit more like like fast, quick, and I kind of play off him as well. And then like we can alternate, which is um, yeah. really like important that we can use in search. So um, we've been definitely practicing that a lot. Brad, I know you've been getting in a lot of games, both with your team and with some old school legends on the rank scene. Uh, what does Nameless <laughs> bring to the table when you're running <laughs> alongside him and Dash? I'm carrying, bro. Nah, and you know what? And I, I tip, I tip, and because he has insane comms. I'll be honest, and has really good he, comms. He has, he, he, he's always keeping us accountable. He's like, yo, someone bump me, someone let him bump in. I let him sit in that <laughs> hill, and then I just run by him, and he's doing. <laughs> but um, now nah, playing the bandit rank is good, man. We've been, um, we've been killing it, except when we versus cheaters. Uh. I already needs a thousand SR tonight. Good luck in the run. Everybody <laughs> is going to be fighting for you in ranked all weekend long. We'll see you guys in action again next weekend in week two. Uh, peace out, guys. Have a good day. Thank you, Pred. Congratulations to Optic. The thrill we all expected came true as LA Thieves is still looking for answers, as are a number of teams still at the bottom of that leaderboard. Let's go all the way back to one answer that is found, and that's how to get attached back to the top Vegas. of his game. Put some pressure on his shoulders and he's going to come through. Yeah, I mean, Dylan was absolutely insane today in our first matchup of the day. LAG versus the Vegas Legion. And we were all wrong on the prediction board. LAG, unfortunately, was a very, very slow start in this series. They tried to crawl their way back in, but Vegas closes out the map. And they win a control, something we didn't think we were going to be saying as it came to this change. I feel, I fear that LAG might be crumbling. Honestly, uh, that, that match, I expected them to come. Like, every time you expect them to take a, a foot forward and become a much better team, maybe crack to that top six, yeah. they always disappoint you. And this was a massive opportunity. Like, you're playing a Vegas Legion squad who just made a roster change. They didn't look good at the last major. You just reverse swept them, and they still end up coming into the series and losing it. So for LAG, it might be time to get ahead of it. You know, I, I don't want to say blow uh -oh. it up instantly, but I will say a lot of these teams are grabbing these kids from challengers. Yeah. Yep. Making some moves and they're looking good. LAG consider. I think the LAG members on the cutting scene know what's coming up behind them. They got to stay ahead of it. Ultra staying ahead of the rest of the pack currently with 12 match wins, only one match loss, including a Boston championship. Today, though, Minnesota taking them to a game five. And I have to say, out of all the teams that took an L here on the opening week of qualifiers, Minnesota looked the best. Yeah, this was a banger of a matchup. Probably my favorite on the weekend that went to a game number five. Don't watch the actual game five, though, because no, it was kidding. a six though sweep. But the first four maps of this matchup were incredible. Minnesota ends that hard point streak, win streak for Toronto Ultra. Yeah, I thought that this was a banger of a matchup. Honestly, super entertaining. Exactly what we needed to cap off this weekend of like 3-0 and 3-1s. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Minnesota Rocker, they're legitimate. Uh, they went up against the world champions, or, or excuse me, the major one champions, right. and brought them to a game five. Now, they did collapse in that game five, but that round one, instantly everything's thrown out the window. It's just tough, right? And they're playing with a different level of energy. They have a crowd in front of them. So there's some things you can go back and watch if you're mini and be like, all right, guys, we're good. We made it to game five. We're still a top team. Well, I got to give a big shout out. Despite the loss, LA Thieves fans were out there supporting their team in LA. Big shout out to everyone up in Canada supporting the crowd at the Bell Center. Fantastic opening week of qualifiers. And we have four more weeks of qualifiers coming your way. We open things up Friday the 23rd with Boston back in. In action. They've already beaten the subliners once. Can they do it again? Texas takes on Rocker and That's Vegas takes on the Heretics to open things up. It all kicks off at 2.45 Eastern on the East Coast. Right around noon there on the West Coast. Set your alarm 15 minutes early. Right, Ellie? Yeah. Wow, that was a lot of numbers. Wait, and sync your calendars too, don't forget. And sync your calendars, yes, yeah, code. Just rewind, QR code it, and we'll see you next time. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next Friday. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Woo! 
Estoy cansado de lo falso si les puedo ser sincero Por eso mi enfoque es solamente en el dinero Ya no quiero más relajo, ya no más amigos Porque lo único que hicieron es desviarme del camino He retomado el control, tenía que tomar un receso Para averiguar lo que en verdad soy yo He retomado el control Family to think about, no I don't need no clout The game that y'all talking about I've been doing shit late night Just trying to look into something That'll get my kids paid Killing every verse I put my voice on The jokers come out here to play Guarantee y'all slept on me for too long I've been known to just rip shit Optimist in my prime Oh, Bron Bron in Miami I'm fired up bringing the heat It's time to show y'all the new vibe Show y'all this new wave This young cat This my vibe Estoy cansado de lo falso Si les puedo ser sincero Por eso mi enfoque es solamente en el dinero Ya no quiero más relajo ya no más amigos porque lo único que hicieron es desviarme del camino He retomado el control, tenía que tomar un receso para averiguar lo que en verdad soy yo He retomado el control, el rey ha llegado, esta es la nueva era de recordarles que he retomado el control I have reset Nice, good Marty Wong. Left, Marty left, Wong. Left, 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 left. Two front, I got one. Nice, one front, this all. And we for one. We for one still, yeah. yeah He's yeah. running me. Nice, good Nice, good Absolutely ran. Iron, 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 iron the f up. Don't scare. Her front, her front. I have your post. I have your push. I have your push. Let's go, boys. Let's go. 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 Let's Oh, bro, I just kept getting stunned and needed on time, bro. I'm the f***ing P4, bro.